Hi, everyone. What year is it? It's 2024. Oh, my God. When this goes out, it's 2023 when we're recording, but... Okay. I'm, uh, welcome to a podcast, podcast will save, save this, this relationship. relationship. Sarah, she, her. I'm Josh, she, him. I was almost going to do Josh, she, him, because the way that you did the intro the first three times was our names before the podcast, and it felt weird. You're right. <laughs> yeah. We should not do that. That could have screwed up this entire year. That was a, a, like psychological warfare to be able to do it first this time. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. We've, we're Pavlov dogging ourselves to make sure this podcast goes right. I'm Pavlov dogging you. I'm fine. I'm the arbiter oh, of okay. this. Okay. Yeah. Fair enough. Yeah. And on today's podcast, we <laughs> talked about the year. Yes, we did. And what we're hoping for for the new year, we started a new fan fiction. We did. God. And also, we did our <laughs> usual Reddit stories. Yeah. Uh, so don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and hit the gosh darn bell. Raise five stars on Apple Spotify podcast. Mm. Check us out on all our social medias down in the description and all mm. the timestamps. All the time. So if you don't want to hear us talk about the new year, yeah, you just go down in the description. For a long time. And it'll be all the way in the bottom. Yeah. You gotta scroll past the patron name. Sorry. Also, ABWSTR is very firmly free Palestine. If you want to educate yourself about Palestine, there are links, links down, down in the description, description as well. Links to co- call your congressman and demand a ceasefire now. That would be great. Yeah, exactly. Thank you. So enjoy the rest of the show. Yeah. It is December 30th when we record. December 2nd when this goes out. Happy New Year, everybody. Happy New Year, everybody. You Bye. said December 2nd. D- oh, January 2nd. Darn it. Darn it. All right, starting Rolling over. <laughs> no, uh, it's all good. Have a good one. See you yeah, guys. Bye. There. Bye. All right, podcast. I'm stealing this bit. This is a plagiarism I'm about no, to do. No, what? I'm what about, the this fuck? is a plagiarism I'm about to do right now. That's so fucked. <laughs> what the hell? This is all saying it. H bomber guy. <laughs> this is all saying it. H bomber guy, get but, in okay. here. All right, last week, two yeah. weeks ago, because not last week we did do podcasts. Last week we did yeah. two podcasts. So I'm going <laughs> to. Okay. Can we keep the monkey business to a minimum? <laughs> and I'm including myself when I say this. I'm talking to myself when I'm I say myself this. Talking to myself when I say this. We were listening. We were watching the community. The community. Uh, there, for those of you who don't, uh, you, uh, they did like a bunch of like little webisodes for like uh, showing off Greendale. For I think the DVD. Yeah. Like extra shit for the DVD. And then they have like this long bit of like outtakes from this fake like uh fake welcome school. to Greendale. Yeah. yeah. And then it's just Dan Harmon himself As like the dean. going yeah. slowly insane like I'm such a piece of shit. <laughs> it's really it's good. It's like one of the best pieces of like almost <laughs> improvisational comedy. But yeah, it's like it's just very meta. It's making fun of uh being on set, like being with someone who is like um, if you watch Community and you know the episode where the dean goes crazy trying to film it's basically a commercial, just that, yeah. But yeah, but I guess lower budget, lower budget, yeah. and like way more heroin and vein of comedy <laughs> of like, yeah, because <laughs> it it's Dan doing it, <laughs> Dan doing it, and he's gonna be very aggressive when he does it, yeah. of course. There's this one scene where it's fucking uh, him in like the hallway and he's just standing there, and then I got to move my mic away for this, where he yeah. just goes like. All of our classes. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah where it's like yeah, it's like he has like a full yeah. on mental breakdown almost. Yeah, it's very funny. It's very good. Yeah, but okay, welcome back to let's not record this in two tries. Let's not let's do what, let's get it right. Let's get it right time. once. Yeah, once. let's get it right once. The damn, uh, uh, damn. Damn, dude. Yeah, we had to take a week off. It's a new year. It's a new year. We're recording this on the 30th of December, so yeah. the pro- it's going to take a whole year. Oh, it's going to take a whole year to get this podcast <laughs> out. Put a bullet in my head if I said that unironically. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I can't wait for everything to be fixed. Yeah, just by the fact that it'll be a new year. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you fuck this year, right? Like, I think we can all agree <laughs> on that. I think it sucked so bad. It was so bad for everyone. Yeah, for all it people. Is everyone got fun. Yeah, I, I keep seeing posts where people are like, "My year was good," and I'm like, "No, Liar. it fucking wasn't." Liar. That's ridiculous of you to and say. It's hard for me to say that too because I know, like, uh, listen, this year was good for the podcast. I'm not gonna say it wasn't. That's, I don't yeah, have a it, job it anymore. Yeah. However, fuck this year. Everything leading up to me quitting my job. Yeah, <laughs> we both went through a lot of shit. Yeah, I mean, like, people are like, "Yeah, you get to do the podcast, you know, full time." Yes. Yes, that's, that's great. That's epic. It's awesome, yeah. Not because I get to do what I want to do. And what you're doing what you love, yeah. Not because of that, actually. It, because but, I don't have to deal with them. Know what I mean? Yeah, bosses, My job. your job, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
fucking uh, yeah, I feel that. That's, we, that's it. Yeah, we were we got we were talking about this today and also a little bit yesterday. But I, I realized that yeah, actually, I was in a really toxic workplace for the last year. Yeah, since October, I think I quit. Yeah, I was only there for a whole year. Yeah, and like literally, I if I had stayed there anymore, this podcast would not be where it is. Like genuinely, because yeah, like, we wouldn't have taken more breaks probably. And it's just, I don't mean the, the way you described it. Uh, to me has reminded me of every single entry level job I've worked at here in Orlando. Yeah, and I feel like yeah, it's a very specific like Orlando po- problem. Or or it's just everyone has shitty, you know, but entry think- level jobs. And I mean, I think probably a lot of people who watch us who are older probably think eh, everyone has shitty, but we're talking about like trauma, traumatic and also like, traumatic environments, hospitality. Yeah. For me specifically. Yeah. I think to you to an extent. I feel like any I'm customer service, your hospitality, and there's it's a just lot, there's a lot every of every single one is yeah. traumatic. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's not great. For me, it was either dealing with traumatic calls or dealing with people that are kind of shittily like I mean I wouldn't say like abusive, but like No, I wouldn't say that either. Like uh you had to deal with people saying slurs in your in your Yeah. Thing and... I forgot about that up until recently because I blocked it out because I was just like, I gotta go here, get my money, right. get out. And being ableist and stuff. Yeah, and that was, that was awesome because you know they they're being ADHD. ableist, <laughs> not you being ableist. Yeah. yeah, but they were also being ableist towards like me your by specific my, neuro like, neurodivergency. Yeah. Yeah. And like you know, talking about like autistic people and shit, and I I didn't I I like blocked it out, and like I just put my one year butt in because I was the only we were allowed to put music in. Yeah, and also yeah, very isolating. We saw that when we went out last weekend. We went out to Target. Oh yeah, we we went out to Target because I had to get some stuff before Christmas, and it was insane. We shouldn't have done that, but I you know what? Fuck it. Actually, we're adults. We could have done it. What the fuck? Wait, what? Like, like go out to Target? You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, we go, yeah. I mean, we told your mom, and she was like, guys, that's crazy. And I was like, it's not crazy. It's not wild, yeah. It's a thing that a lot of people apparently do. Oh, yeah, that's another, that's, yeah, that's yeah. a whole other can of worms to go into. Yeah. But yeah, we went to Barnes & Noble, and we were in the checkout line. Uh, and why, why, why? And this is true all the time. Every time I've ever been in a Barnes & Noble checkout line, Something fucking crazy happens. Yeah. And I mean, I'm being hyperbolic, but like, it's one of those situations where you're in public and like something weird happens and you're like, oh, okay. And then you think about it later and you're like, that was actually so insane that that happened. Yeah. Um, so we were in the fucking Barnes and Noble checkout line, right? Yeah. And um, this guy uh, comes up and he goes, hi, hi, hi to all the cashiers yeah um and he's obviously uh got something going on he's some some sort of neurodivergent yeah yeah I think. something it was like kind of everyone went quiet and they were like what the fuck because he was very loud but it was like he just didn't know you know what Social- level to be at socially or yeah. to wait in line or whatever he just didn't understand social cues it was just a little confusing if anything else it's not like we got to put everything down yeah yeah, and, and go crazy and freak out. No. Yeah, like I like, had a little moment where I was like, where I was like, oh, there's a guy next yelling. to me really quickly, you know? Yeah, and then I, think, I was like, oh, he's just saying hi and whatever. Yeah, just saying hi to the cashiers. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, it was no big deal. And so then he left, and after the cashiers were like, hi, and then I was like, I must be that he knows them. That's nice that he's saying yeah, hi like on it. Christmas. Yeah, you know? yeah, the, like the day before Christmas Eve, yeah. Yeah, and um, the couple in front of us. Oh, these two assholes, yeah. They were be- They were already weird before this guy showed up because uh, she, th- they were obviously a couple. She was like hanging on his, his, his whatever. They were doing a lot of PDA. Yeah, and I will say, I didn't hindsight, care like about main that. character energy almost, yeah. like they're the center of their own universe. I didn't like, even notice them at first, but when she was like hanging on his fucking neck and she kissed him on the cheek and the guy, I swear to God, goes, Wah! like that. And I heard that, and I was like, that was fucking weird. That was weird. But that I'll was... move on, right? Yeah, I'll move on. Yeah, you guys are doing weird stuff. I don't give a shit. I don't give a shit. I'm not going to remember this, as long as you don't do anything else, like, asshole You're not yeah. bothering me. I don't give a crap. Yeah. However, when you start making fun of other people, then you're that's, trying to bother me. Yeah. That's the thing, isn't it? So this guy shows up. He does the high. high. I was very sweet. And yeah, then he and then left. The, yeah, and like even like the cashiers were like just hi, you know, and then Yeah, one of them was like, Hi, honey, and I was like, it's just nice to see it's that nice. people know each other. Yeah, if that's what's happening. Yeah, like we just went through a series of stores. 
where everyone is rude and in front of each other and hitting yeah. each other. And oh, it sucked. Yeah, trying to get the last whatever for their. Gotta Christmas. get the last PlayStation. You gotta get the yeah. It was just very nice to see a human moment, and then yeah, the couple in front of us who had done that weird shit were obviously laughing and making fun of him yeah. and like trying to hide their laughter. And I just, I looked at them and I was like, oh, I couldn't stop myself from being like, oh my God. <laughs> yeah. Like, and I didn't realize it at the time, but like, you were like, I couldn't, I, I, I think you said, looked at them and said, really? Like, like what really? the fuck like, is wrong Jesus. with you? Yeah. yeah like, it was was, Jesus. Yeah. And then I was like, I don't know what's going on. What happened? Like, I was like, is everything okay? And then you were like, we'll talk about it later. I was like, we'll talk about it in the car. And then I was like, okay, how do I say, I just point at them and I'll know exactly what happened. Cause I know. <laughs> And so, but they saw me be like, Jesus Christ, what the fuck? And they were, because I had overheard them also that it was specifically about him. It wasn't like some joke. No, it was, yeah. They were was, like, how is he so fast? He's running around so fast, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And I'm like, Ugh. and I was like, Shh. are we in high school? Is this middle school yeah. even? Like, come on. And You're I'm in just, a Barnes and Noble line. And I'm a white woman. I got the audacity. You know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, you do have the audacity. That in you. is a, and it you is a use white it. privilege to sit there and be like, what the fuck is wrong with you in yeah. public? You know what I mean? <laughs> but yeah, I was like, Jesus. And they saw me la uh, be upset at them and they laughed even harder. And I was like, oh, oh you're going so to hell. Bad. Yeah. You're going Ooh. to hell for sure. I can't even contain my laughter <laughs> at other people that aren't neurotypical. Ha ha ha. Ha ha ha. And then they go to the fucking front. <laughs> I forgot. Yeah. No, wait. Yeah. Oh, God. Can I say this? Because yeah. I want to be the one. It's so funny. So these two virgins uh, <laughs> go up I mean, to the cashier and they buy all the Magic the Gathering, the gathering cards. cards. <laughs> like, how could you sit there and make fun of him? The guy that knows people. When you're out here like, no, not that Magic the Gathering deck. The I one to the right of one. it. So Please. Not, oh, come yeah, on. They like, were also rude to the lady. For getting well. the wrong Magic the <laughs> Gathering cards. <laughs> you fucking. It was such oh, a. God. Oh, man. It was such a thing where the guy went up to the counter and was like, I want that one. And it was an old short woman. Cashier. Who doesn't care about Magic the fucking She doesn't know. She, she doesn't, doesn't know what, what that Magic is. the Gathering is. I mean, maybe she does. Who knows? We're yeah, making knows? a yeah, lot of assumptions. We're making assumptions here. But also, she like... She goes and picks up one, and he goes, no, that one. And then she's like, oh, it's the same. And he goes, yeah, but that one. And she's like, what? And she asks... He had to ask for another cashier... In a big long line of Barnes yeah, and well, Noble. Yeah, because it's also, yeah, it's again the day before Christmas Eve. <laughs> yeah, and <laughs> fucking... And I, we just want to buy a couple fucking card games. Like, that's it. Yeah. We, and you're sticking <laughs> it up the whole goddamn line. That's it. We wanted to buy two items. Yeah, not even. Like, and fucking, yeah, and like, that was like the wildest part was watching them. Like, you're really I was like, good. you're judging him? And you're buying all the Magic you're, the Gathering you cards? You have a choice in what you're doing with life. And you're doing it like like you're gonna make some you're gonna fucking <laughs> like don't be ableist in front of me I will judge the shit out of you yeah if you're like all right able bodied motherfucker <laughs> let's party but this let's is what you party, choose then. to do with your abled body is buy all the Magic the Gathering cards yeah that's so crazy but you don't even run marathons come on fuck you like come on. What are you doing with your life? This is what you decide to do. Yeah, you decide to, to go fuck out to a bar. <laughs> Not even. Let's take out the able body shit because I feel like that's getting. I don't know. Maybe we're wrong about that. I'm able bodiedist. <laughs> I, <am. laughs> I mean, I don't know. I don't know. But, but like, no. I mean, like the. I don't know. It's like the like you decide to be you ableist. Choose to. You're, I, you decide to be judgy at the yeah. very least. You, you're a judgmental asshole, and this is what you decide to do: is go to Barnes and Noble. Be weird with your girlfriend in in line. Yeah. And then buy all the magic, the gathering cards, and make fun of other people. You're a loser. You should, yeah. The, you're a loser. You're the problem. Like, the problem with that is there's a lack of camaraderie with other people. Yeah. Like, it's kind of like the thing where it's like, you know, like, nerds are supposed to band together, I feel like. Like, it's like yeah. this weird. Yeah. And I don't, like, and this is like, I'm not, I want to state 
for the record. I'm not judging yeah. Magic the Gathering people. I think you guys are probably no. fine. You're probably rich. You're probably, yeah, <laughs> you're, you're fucking rich assholes. Yeah. But no, fucking. It. <laughs> it's like seeing someone in a Tesla, which we got another story too for oh, you guys. Oh, God. That. Yeah, that's from the same day. Yeah. Well, that That's like the nerd version of Tesla is a guy that buys all the Magic the Gathering cards. So no one else can have it. Yeah. And, yeah. And the same way that a Tesla owner puts on uh, the autopilot so he can run <laughs> over a bunch of children. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, oh, no, it's not. <laughs> the same at all <laughs> just want to state for the record in case we get a <laughs> comment 10 years from now that's like how is buying magic the gathering cards the same as running over children in your tesla i'm being and i'm gonna be like bollock i'm sorry what did we say but no yeah so uh yeah. but yeah so the, the tesla story real quick we had to go to the fucking mall millennia yeah uh to get uh candy <laughs> Uh, uh, specifically sees candy chocolate it's like oh, high yes. quality chocolate yeah yeah my grandma always liked sees candy and yeah they're always in the mall so if we i don't there. have a christmas gift to give people which christy if you're watching this don't listen don't, don't listen. listen to this next part don't listen to the next part you motherfucker all right you're gonna get spoiled on your present yeah if but i no, if yeah. i fuck up christmas gifts for the year and i don't actually buy them yeah uh, i can just go to sees candy and spend fifty dollars and give yeah exactly a but like fucking, uh, so we had to we had to go to there because that yeah. was the only in-person place. Yeah, and uh, of course it's the mall. It's yeah, the, it's like the only mall. There's like two malls in Orlando, and that's like the busiest one always. Yeah, it's the big, it's the big one. It's the big fancy one too, which that's also annoying. Malls have changed. Malls man. have changed a lot. Like every single store was like there designer fucking. There, there was no bookstore. No bookstore. Yeah, it was actually like it was just all clothing and that's accessories so crazy. and maybe electronics. Yeah. Uh, but okay, so we went there and we found we were gonna get a spot. However, this Tesla, this this lady in a Tesla, we got the spot. We got the because spot because this lady was a fucking idiot. Yes, so she was. Uh, she there was a guy backing out of the spot. Yeah, it's chaotic. Everyone's yeah. shopping. It's like the last day to buy anything. I'm trying to think about how to visualize. So it. okay, spots right here. Okay, spot here. We're like right here. Tesla's closer to the spot, and but also the spot's really close to the exit to, to like get back to the thing. Describe it like you know, like when you're in a parking lot with the two. You know, you're in a an aisle of the parking lot. And, uh, and it's not one direction; it's it's two way direction. Yeah. So one person on the left is backing out of their spot. Josh is coming up from the south, and, seeing them. Yeah, and then and someone's then at the north, north that is there's waiting there. A Tesla in the middle of the two lanes of the aisle that also is not backed away enough to let that person out. Yes. So if she even so, wanted the spot, she would not have been able to get him and let that guy out or whatever. She was obviously waiting for the spot. We show up, she's in the middle of the thing, so we can't even leave. But I'm able to back up to let the guy out because right. I assume guy she needs wanted us to back up so hard that, that they she could in move this way. in but and there then was we a could guy leave. behind me as well, so I yeah. couldn't back up that much. So she was yeah, like getting upset at us for not backing up so she could take the spot. So she backed but up. But literally we couldn't have left because she was taking up two lanes in her Tesla. Yeah, and when she backed up specifically, she turned towards our lane to exit, like almost on a diagonal. <laughs> yeah. So I'm like, I can't get past you. I would have gotten past you and just given up on the spot. Yeah, like you're forcing me to take your spot. Because you're not close enough to actually You're not giving get me it. an out. Yeah. Yeah. So we took it and she was like pissed at us. Because also, not gonna lie, really close to the mall entrance. Like mm -hmm. we got super lucky. It was a really good spot. It was a great spot. Because also like the only spots that were available were all the way in the back. Yeah, true. So like, yeah, we got very lucky with that. And I'm, I feel like an asshole because we got a lucky spot in that situation and she was mad at us. But also we were back there. In. Like, yeah, we had we no choice. Yeah, at that point, and the only way for any traffic to keep going would be for us to take the spot and get out of there. And we didn't like see that there was a spot available that she was going to take, and we were going to snipe her yeah, spot. We... we were just going up and down the aisle to find a spot. Yeah, yeah. And then we got into a bad situation because yeah. I got cornered in all directions. It was not great. Well, no, don't go out the day before Christmas Eve, guys, unless you don't have do to. that. I mean, do it. If you're in a fucking adult, uh, like, yeah, if we're, bind, yeah. we're, we weren't in fucking danger. You know what I nah, mean? No, we weren't. Yeah. Other than like, I will say, COVID. getting out of Target earlier on that day, we were in the Target parking lot for like an hour. Yeah, that to, was pretty crazy. Trying to leave. Yeah. Mm. But yeah, thank God we didn't do a podcast because I had to do that and then check TikTok yeah, comments. No, dude, that's oh not, god, that's ridiculous. I'm stuck at Target and everyone hates me. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck.
<laughs> shit. <laughs> Everyone in the world hates, hates me. Hates you, yeah. Yeah. God, but it was a good week off, at least, you know. Yeah. And Christmas was good. We had our own little Christmas. We did the Christmas stream. Mm. That was a disaster on my end, because I, I had all the audio in wrong places. What? Oh, because my, uh, my audio was, like, meter for, like, the first 15, 20 minutes. Oh, while shit, While I was fixing what? it. Yeah. Oh, damn, that's yeah. crazy, dude. But, yeah, no, that was fun, at least. Christmas the family was all right. We played the Rotten Tomatoes card game. That was really fun. That was surprisingly more fun than I thought it would be. Like, I was like, I don't know if it was going to be... Seems interesting. I, at first, I was like, this is Rotten Tomatoes score propaganda. Because, like, who cares about the Rotten Tomatoes critic score? But it's also more fascinating to, it's to a fa- try and, and guess, guess yeah, what so. they think is a good movie versus a bad movie. Yeah. But I don't know. It's been it's been a good time, and I feel like it's been good to reflect on the past year. Yeah. Um. I think, yeah, fucking... How, was your, how, how are you feeling about this upcoming 2024 <laughs> election it, year? It's okay. Well, I'm not talking about that. But <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, I'm, you're not talking about. It. I'm sorry. I'm, uh, sorry. <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm not talking okay, about yeah, the election. Okay, all right, good. I'm not doing that. Um, I think honestly, like everyone makes fun of people that think of the new year as like a new beginning and a way to restart themselves and everything, because they're like, you would have been what a New Year's resolution. You could have made the. It's called goals, bitch. You just have goals all throughout the fucking year, and then you blah, blah, blah. Time is a fucking a linear, you know, time is a flat circle. <laughs> and it's like, <laughs> dude, I, man, just let people have hope. Have something, yeah. This is from an atheist. <laughs> just let people have some goddamn yeah, hope you just in their to... lives. It's, yeah. it, it's very important. I've seen a lot of people on TikTok who are talking about, like, they use the new year to get sober. Yeah. And they've been reflecting on how they're one year sober now because it's coming up on the new year. Yeah. And uh, I think that shit is fucking epic. I think, yeah, it is a. The whole point of Christmas and New Year's is that we have to lift the hopes and spirits of each other. Especially in the worst time of the year. Yeah. Like that's why genuinely like yeah i've the more i've been thinking about the reason why there's only two podcasts this month is because this month sucked dick yeah mentally only mentally, yeah <laughs> like yeah, yeah like uh, yeah like it's, it's weird because like everything else is like fine you know like i think we had a great fucking like i, I love doing the collab i love doing yeah, you know awesome. like i love doing all the shit but like yeah no i needed yeah like it's been rough the, it the fact that it's six at night waking up at one Six five hours of of sun uh, you sunlight know, sunlight and then it's six and it's fucking dark as shit. Yeah, it's like yeah, you need a little bit of hope, and I don't want to yeah. take that away from someone. No, and I think rewatching the community, uh, the Abed's Uncontrollable Christmas, really yeah. is one of the better Christmas specials in my opinion because it really drives that home from like a uh, like a. It gets into the feeling of like a young twenty something. Being like dissolute, like wanting to hold on to a childhood Christmas and have that cheer, but finding it difficult because things are too hard. Yeah, and things are changing and life keeps moving on past you, you know? Yeah. It's, uh, yeah, it's fuck, how about the fuck December? (laughs) Fuck December. (laughs) I mean, you know, it's supposed to be like people come together and we're also living in a time where everyone is disenfranchised from each other. And yeah, living separately. Like, I mean, you know, it's only been three years since COVID. Yeah. And it's still, well, it's still going. And it's still going on. Yeah. So, like, yeah, and, like, fucking the feeling of, like, and I feel like, and I felt like kind of that this year, too, where, like, and th- the reason why none of my family's home for the holidays is because we're all going to be together in a month. Mm-hmm. But, like, yeah, it felt like, you know, when we went over to my parents' house, it didn't feel super, like, Christmas. I think it's because I I think, I mean, your mom wanted to see us anyway, yeah. and I think it, it felt more like a dinner, really, than Christmas, because I think she thinks... Everyone being together is going to be Christmas. Yeah, but then it happened on Christmas Eve, so it felt like, oh. Yeah, it felt like, oh shit, this is our Christmas, and it's not yeah. really Christmas. Yeah, exactly. You know? It's very, it's a, it was a, and I, it's, it's not, not even, her fault. It's though. not her fault at all. It's just timing. Yeah, and yeah. Like, yeah. You can't really. I think you know, as I've gotten older, when you, it's, it's a weird feeling, but you kind of become responsible for your own Christmas. Yeah, you know, and I will say that was good this year that we were responsible on our end for our own Christmas because yeah. that was very good, you know. And I think, yeah. I don't know, I think like, and I guess like it feels like that weird like after Christmas, right before New Year's for me. Oh yeah, where it's liminal like, space, liminal space of like 
Remember everything you did this year? <laughs> <laughs> Remember all that shit that all happened? All that fucking bullshit that Dude. happened? Hopefully it doesn't happen next year, huh? <laughs> right? Maybe. <laughs> and I, it's weird, too, because our, our anniversary is in November. Yeah, so we have, like, uh, like, and your birthday's in September. We have Halloween in October. Like, a lot of just, like, four months straight of, like... Well, I mean, like, I feel like we use our anniversary to reminisce as well yeah. on the past year of our relationship. So there's just two months of us just fucking Thinking twiddling our thumbs. About like, the fucking what happened? <laughs> that happened this year. <laughs> <laughs> and then it's like, oh, god damn it, I got two more months to got work? two more months to do bullshit? That's stupid. I don't want to do dumb, that. Um, yeah. <laughs> And then we get here, and everyone's like, "Remember?" And I'm like, "Yeah, I've been remembering for I've two been months. Remembering for two goddamn months. God damn it! Yeah, yeah." <laughs> but yeah, it's like <laughs> I feel like I just talked about this on my solo podcast, but it wasn't. It was like two months ago. Yeah, was, and I yeah. feel like yeah, and I feel like I'm becoming a broken record, yeah. like with how much I'm like, man, remember this year? I mean, this year fucking sucked. Yes, it, but yeah, it did. did. It was yeah. really bad. Like, I think I almost was in the. I almost fucking took myself to a mental hospital with my yeah. my first. My job that I had in January, I was like really deep. You had that like January through March too. Like it kept getting worse. Yeah, because I October of I guess two years ago now. Yeah. October yeah, twenty twenty two. Technically when this goes out, it'll be twenty twenty four. Yeah. Yeah. Fucking Yeah, Jesus. Isn't it great recording a podcast and have not even the year be on the same <laughs> like recording <laughs> date versus release date? Yeah. Awful. But yeah, but... so in October twenty twenty two I spent a month training. And then November until you got thrown in. I got thrown in, and then I worked there. And by the third or fourth month, I was like crying every day. Yeah, you genuinely developed like an anxiety disorder because of this job. I had to get on pills. I had to get on anti-anxiety pills Just on top to, of my depression pills. Yeah, to s- mitigate my Which anxiety. Which also led to a fun. <laughs> With doctors being like, yeah, I'll give you this. And then it's like, I can't take this with my... Didn't that happen? Like, someone no, that tried to give you... The, that that was a different thing. That was the fat phobic doctor that told me I needed to lose weight. Yes. And wanted to get me off of my depression pills because they make me gain weight. Yeah, I remember that now. That okay. was the fat phobic one that was like, if you lose weight, maybe you'll uh, not be depressed and you'll start talking to your mom again. <laughs> Jesus. I was like, what a what a fundamental misunderstanding of, of everything every, about me. Yeah. Wow. Yay. <laughs> Fucking ridiculous. <laughs> Woo. Um. <laughs> but yeah. So yeah. like, I, yeah, it's been wild. Yeah. yeah. I realized that my job working in conventions was not great. Doing yeah. manual labor. That was really bad. Working too. with a toxic environment. And it was. I, I'm gonna say it's a toxic environment. Yeah. yeah and yeah. yeah, I'm never going to fuck back. No. Yeah, fuck that. <laughs> Just the way that they treated you when you quit was so crazy. Oh, yeah. Like, I kept getting calls from my Xbox up yeah. until, like, maybe November, I think. Yeah. I think November was the last one I remember where it was like, mm. hey, why aren't you coming into work? I sent you guys an email. Yeah, multiple times. Multiple times. You send him a message, a text message and like a voicemail also. Like, yeah. He, was, he was just willfully not looking at his shit. Yeah. And I'm like, dude, I quit. You also hadn't been there in three weeks. So you could take a take a hint. Yeah, take please. a hint. Man, Jesus Christ. But yeah, I don't know. I think I don't know. I feel like um it's weird because like I feel like this year was because it was good for the podcast. Like we both do this full time now. I, so I feel weird going into next year, like I don't know what I want now. Yeah. Cause I I've been able to solve the biggest problem, which was shitty work. Job. Yeah. Yeah. Um I will say I really enjoyed working at Morgan and Morgan. I'll drop it. I'll yeah. name drop it because I name dropped Carrier Enterprise also. No, that was fair. Yeah. I really enjoyed working there. I thought they were great. I think the calls were traumatic, but it was like that was because people were calling in and telling me about their like injuries. Mm. And uh but it also really opened my eyes a lot. And I think it opened a lot of my eyes to like my own internalized like ableism and stuff. And it really helped me to try to help a community. Yeah, and I you will know? say, yeah, that was the one thing that was really good about that job. Yeah. But it just sucks that, like, fucking the, the job you had prior to that just fucked it up. Really, where, like, it really it made it so that I couldn't really enjoy a call center. It was, it, everyone talks about when you're in customer service, especially in call centers, the burnout that you get is so crazy. Yeah. And it's like, you know, that's why call centers have a higher risk of uh, suicide. Hmm. And it's like, yeah, it's because you're sitting there and people just berate you emotionally. Yeah, because if you don't day. see a human face in front of you, the the the, yeah. the the lengths people will go to in a dehumanized voice mm-hmm. 
they will bring out the worst in them in themselves, you know? Yeah. And it's like, yeah. I thought I was so strong through all of that. And then when I was done with it, I was like, I'm actually so severely fragile. Holy shit. Dude, I, I fucking, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And now I'm recovering. Yeah. And I feel like it's weird because it makes me feel like I can't do this job because Sometimes. I am in recovery. Mm. But a lot of it is like, no, man, it was just years and years and years of customer service and being talked down to and all this shit. Yeah. Now I have to build up. Now I'm pivoting into an entertainment career where I have to be confident. Yeah. The fuck? Yeah, I don't know how that, to do that's that. That's wild. Yeah. That's, <laughs> that's crazy. That's, that's what I have to do. That's ridiculous. <laughs> Fucking lame. How do I go from a job where, like, I'm sure, like, actors that the waitress on the side yeah, or something. They get, yeah. They probably get, like, people screaming at them all the time and then they have to go and turn around and act. Ba -da -ba. Yeah, you know, like, I'm yeah, the I'm best. happy. Yeah. And it's like, no, I'm not. <laughs> I'm severely depressed, actually. Old people fucking hate the shit out of me. Yeah. Oh, they hate me a lot. That's what I learned at the, the, the convention center. <laughs> yeah, fucking, I, I hate old people and they hate me. Yeah. Which, I don't know, I can't blame them too much. Like, if that that's, like, the only job you have. Yeah. Is doing the bidding of a bunch of rich assholes. Yeah. Yeah, it fucking sucks. It sucks ass. And I felt that at Disney, felt that at Universal. Yeah. Fucking, yeah. I don't even know if I had been working for a company, may, probably not Morgan and Morgan, but if Carrier Enterprise or something like that, where holy shit, the genocide happened, you oh, know, or God. I had learned about the ongoing genocide and, you know, this whole fucking fucked up shit bullshit yeah. that's happening that no one is pretending I to even, even care about. I don't know how to go into work. I oh no my idea. God. Oh God. The idea of having to talk to any of my old coworkers about that wouldn't have been good. No, no. that wouldn't have been good and, at all. I mean, we're being very selfish by saying this. I know some people say like, what the, and we have to go to work. Like, it's not about you. And I understand that. No, yeah, I understand that too. I'm just like expressing my feelings about it. Exactly. Yeah. Um. And yeah, and I just don't know how I would have been. And I'm really, it's so crazy to me that there are people out there who care about this, that you're going about their normal everyday lives. I mean, yeah. Because they have to. Because they have to. Yeah. And God bless God you. Fucking bless, yeah. Yeah. Jesus, man. I totally get that. I totally understand that. I don't know. It's interesting. Hmm. You know, I feel the good thing I think this year is I feel like I, over the past couple of years of customer service, I feel like I lost my empathy for people. Hmm. And it really hurt me to lose that because yeah. I was like, I can't, I don't trust strangers anymore hmm. because every phone call I get is a stranger yelling at me. And, uh, I think I've gotten that back a little bit. Oh, well, that's good. And yeah. that's what I'm trying to do, I think, in the new year, is to continue to be, like, more kind, I think. Yeah, I, yeah. I agree with that, too. And I think, yeah, that's the... Now that my career goals are kind of okay. Yeah. And the only career goal is keep doing it. Keep going. You know? It's, uh, yeah, you know? <laughs> yeah. It's a lot of, like, now I feel like there's a, now another year, like, a chance to, like, again, twiddle my thumb and reflect. But also, like, you know, like, I want to start getting back into working out again, for sure. I yeah. do want to... Uh, maybe get back into writing. There's a lot of stuff there that, like, I think I left a lot on the table for me to do, like, oh, creative yeah. creatively, emotionally. Yeah. Because I was doing these shitty jobs that were draining. Um, yeah, yeah. It's so difficult to go, I would do a job nine to five, 40 hours a week, and then to come home and work on your passion. Yeah. It's very hard. And uh, a lot of people just stop. Because they have to, because they have to go to work. Yeah, you know? and I don't blame them at all. Yeah, it's, it's no, rough I out here. I don't judge you at all. Gotta just fucking disband the system, man. <laughs> fucking it fucking sucks, dude. Yeah. It like I mean, yeah, and I think that's the biggest thing. I think people think like, oh, if I just didn't have to work for this amount of months or something, I would be better. And the reality is, you would be in recovery. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. You huh. would be un unloading all of that traumatic bullshit you went through with your job. Yeah, just to... Huh. And it would take you months to even... To get back. Yeah. Jesus, man. Yeah, dude. That's wild. Fucking insane, yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I, that's the thing that I think about for this year, and that's why I say that it sucked, was just mentally I took a fucking nosedive. Mm. And right now I'm off my Lexapro because I have to wait until February because of the government. <laughs> God damn <laughs> to government. To get healthcare. Um, and then once I, I'll get back on Lexapro. 
But I'm also really shocked at how well I'm able to manage my depression. Yeah, I will say, yeah, you're killing it. Like, oh, fucking, thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, it's still not good. Like, I think I noticed. Um, <laughs> last night I was trying to say uh, <laughs> that I was like. <laughs> Every time we have to go to bed, my brain does the thing of like, I don't wanna, I don't wanna do that. <laughs> and I get like mad. I get like mad and sad about it. And I'm like, fucking bullshit. I gotta go to bed. And it's such a five year old thing to do. <laughs> you go to fucking bed. I wanna stay up late. And <laughs> it's two, it's like three in the morning. Yeah, it's already like, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, I have to parent my own inner child into going to fucking bed. At three in the at morning. At three in the morning. Like, yeah. <laughs> that's what I was trying to say. Okay, see, that's okay. Yeah. Now I understand where you're coming from <laughs> last night. And we were both high as fuck and we yeah, had an argument. Yeah, and uh, I don't, don't want to... <laughs> it's a stupid fucking argument. And I get, I don't know oh, what the man. fuck is up with these gummies that we got. Maybe they're like, you know, super strong or something, but yeah. like fucking, uh, I don't know why when I use them, because I use them to go to sleep mostly. I don't, I don't, yeah. I'm not just getting high in the morning. That's not what I'm using your Patreon money for. <laughs> it's to just fucking be a stoner and do yeah. no work. No, I, I, so when I go to sleep and then I've, I've been noticing I've been waking up at like five in the morning or like five or seven in the morning yeah. and I'm just like, I don't know how to describe <laughs> it. Like, I'm sinking into the bed. Yeah. If I look to the right, I feel like gravity is shifting to the right. Yeah. And, like, I'm just like, oh, my God, I feel all my teeth and all the space in between them. Wow, that's weird. That's a weird feeling right now. Because even when teeth. I'm trying to fucking have go on recreational drugs, my body is still like, like no, no. Fucking hey, how do you feel about being paranoid anxious, right now? Anxious paranoia. Hey, what do you think of paranoia? You think it's good? Too bad. <laughs> Eat shit, Josh. Man. Thanks. A THC Delta <laughs> 8. <laughs> yeah. Love ya. Love you so much. Mm. Oh, God bless. Put me up on a fucking... Uh, put me, put me in You're a gonna trial. You're going to say that and everyone's going to be like, that's not even real weed. Because it's <laughs> not. It isn't. I know. It's a derivative of CBD. I don't... Shut up, nerd. It does have THC. We would fail a uh, weed test. Yeah. Which, thank God, because uh, I'm not working at that job anymore. Yeah, they have we never don't gotten, need to. But everyone's like, I'm smoking weed all day. <laughs> It's like, no, like, I just take CBD to go to sleep. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not even a real stoner, dude. God. Um, yeah, yeah, man. Hopeful. What about you? I feel like uh, I went on a long diatribe about the year. What do you think about, uh, the, about, upcoming year? about the upcoming year? I don't know, because I feel like, um, I think, yeah, I think I said a little bit about this, but like fucking, I do feel like I have literally no plans for this, like, in the sense of like, I literally yeah. have no clue what's going on other than, I guess, holidays and birthdays. Yeah. But, like, beyond that, I'm like, I, don't, are we going to go on a trip? Don't Maybe, have any I don't travel know. plans. Yeah, we don't have any, like, any of that. Yeah. And it's going to be one of those things where it's like, because also I feel, like, genuinely kind of traveled out still. Same. And I don't even remember the last time we traveled. Uh, we went to St. Augustine for my birthday. I do remember that. That was fun. That was nice. That was a really that was a nice really vacation. Nice, yeah. But I feel like um, there's nothing bad that happened. Oh, you know what it is? Because we went to Tampa like 20 different times. We did go to we, Tampa, we went to Tampa a lot. Like a, a lot. And a lot is like two. <laughs> That's too many. Two, two one is too, too many. many. Time. Yeah. yeah. Cause I, oh, yeah. Because Career Clash happened this year. Yeah. Oh, there was fuck. the Tim tour. A lot of shit happened in the beginning of the year, I feel like. And it was definitely like. They didn't announce Career Clash 3, right? I don't no, think they haven't. One. No, they might not do one. They might not do one because I think because it didn't make money. Yeah, which sucks because it was a oh, real, it was man. a much better event. That was a really good event. Yeah, yeah, and I will say I think uh, Ian uh, Idubs he did uh, like a charity stream at some point and he just gave all the money to charity. Mm. So I think he just took the hit, and then which was like hit. six right. digits, and I'm like, fuck, you guys have That's this so money, wild. Jesus, I'm fucking. I mean, yeah, take the hit better than stealing from charity yeah yeah i mean i don't know about the financial situation i don't know if they took like an actual monetary hit or if they took like a profit hit i don't know i don't know either but yeah it was definitely an interesting like uh but it was still a good event but fucking yeah this is a damn shame that it didn't set out didn't complete its goal of giving yeah. money to charity uh yeah i don't know man fucking um yeah a lot of shit i feel like a lot happened this year yeah and i kind of just want to spend the next year chilling, chilling. out yeah yeah. Like maybe like I know we have plans or, or like plans as in we've said we're gonna do this of well, your like, sister's having a baby. My sister's having a baby and you know at some point we're probably gonna go see her in have North we said Carolina. That on the podcast yet? We I can think we've say hinted it, now. it. I think we've hinted at it. I'm gonna be an uncle. 
Josh is gonna be an unky. Yeah, I'm gonna and be a technically fucking, I'm an on. I guess. Yeah, I guess by uh, by, uh, by uh, inclusion. Yeah. But yeah, it's nice. Yeah, so I've already been an aunt. But yeah, yeah. But like now you're gonna be a, another aunt to the third, third person? one. Yeah. yeah, third one. Yeah, my third niece. <laughs> Your third niece. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, no. So that's gonna be nice, and we probably will go up to see her at some point. I think there is. We've talked about it before this year of going to to Boston. Baston. Baston to yeah. see my other sister. Yeah. And it seems like that might be the only like travel things. I know we also have like we've talked about it briefly, but like going to the UK at some point. Oh yeah. Oh, don't say that. Helen's gonna watch. She's gonna be like, What? And I'm like, Yeah, I forgot to tell I you mean, um the KU wink. <laughs> but no, I wanted to go to the UK for my birthday or something. Yeah, like something like that. Yeah. Yeah. I think other than that, like uh, everything that we've been planning has been a lot more smaller local like go on bright line come back yeah. same day yeah you know and those are mostly like date ideas i guess you know I, it, I, it the problem is i think it depends on the money what are yeah. where our money's at i will say i feel a lot more financially stable this end of the year compared yeah. to how it was beginning of the year true and i do feel more confident going this year like all right we'll be okay yeah finally not working. I think I, I did the math. I think I'm still like if I was working like a regular fifteen dollar an hour, uh, I would I I would be making less money. I think, but I think it's yeah. like maybe twenty an hour. I think is what I'm making if I were going to forty hour a week. Yeah, but then how do you even get that? You know, you have to yeah. fight to get a twenty dollars an hour. Exactly. Job. So I feel very fortunate that yeah. like that's even what my <laughs> my you know. That's uh, the thing, man, and that's something that uh my mom told me that is actually just like good. Like, uh, I, I, I mean, I don't know if it's good financial advice because she was not good with finances, even though she was an accountant. Yeah. But uh, she she told me she was like, when I started working, I made like a thousand dollars in a year because mm. I started at the end of the year. And then the next year I made like five thousand dollars. And then the next year I made ten thousand. And then the next year I made thirty thousand. And then the next year I made sixty K. And it's like, oh. It's like if you keep doing it, it will you will continue to make money. Yeah, you know. I think yeah, like, I can... you might make financial hits, but your gross income is going to go up, and it just matters. Like it's not you don't have to worry about. I have to increase my income. Is what she was. It's what my mother was trying to tell me. Yeah, I know there are going to be a bunch of people that are going to be like, "That's bullshit, Sarah." Yeah, because my crazy ass mom told me. Okay, <laughs> yeah. Jesus, I didn't that say it. Absolutely ridiculous clown of a woman. <laughs> yeah. Yes, but she was basically saying like, "Don't worry about the income. You will get the income. Worry about how you spend your money." Yeah, that's an important thing. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. Keep a track of your budget. You know, that's yeah. a pretty. That's basic advice yeah uh and I, I get it i get where that's coming from it's like yeah. but if she's saying it i'm like the fuck are you talking about <laughs> <laughs> i think she was she she thinks that way because she is a workaholic like she that is fair yeah is constantly thinking how do i make more money mm. and so that's how she did that she's a grind set she was like grind set before grind set happened was even popularized yeah I feel that. Which uh, I think is hilarious because they probably wouldn't allow her in because she's a, a large woman. Yeah. Not only is she you a can't woman. Be a girl boss. Yeah. No girls allowed. Yeah. <laughs> in the treehouse of, of a grind set bros. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> 20 year olds that know less about money than her. But yeah, exactly. Ridiculous. But if you're just signing up for a course. Yeah. <laughs> but no, fucking, uh, I, I will say, fucking, um, I don't know. I, I do feel more stable, which I do feel That's good. is good. Yeah. Yeah. Because I think, especially working, I think the past two years in this apartment, like, there's been plenty of times where, like, we were late on rent. Oh, yeah. And, like, we had to spend more money and, like, fucking. Oh, uh, yeah. God. I'm like, I don't, I'm like, I don't even think, like, uh, I, what do you think is middle class now, like, personally? I don't think it exists. You don't think it exists? I yeah. think it's gone. Because some, I was watching, like, some guy talk about, like, um, I think he's, like, a finance guy, but he's not, like, He's not like a finance finance guy, if you know what I mean. He's not like a Grant Stevens. He's just some guy on TikTok. Right, yeah. That was like, all right, here's what, uh, if you're making $60,000 a year, that take home is probably like 47000 Which is just, just double the poverty line. Yeah, so it's like you're not really making a lot of money. No. And at the end of the TikTok, he said, and that's why Gen Zers think 120000 a year is middle class. And I'm kind of going that's back and class? forth, and I'm like, I guess it is if you want to like buy a house. If the middle class, if the <sighs> prereq is to buy a house, 
to be middle class. Yeah. That already, my whole life, I've never. Yeah. So, that like. That to me is like, that's not even available to me. Which, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And That's like, I me, thought like, I was middle class growing up and I was not. I was poor. Yeah. But I knew I would never be able to buy a house. Yeah, I get that. And from it's birth. Like, I, yeah, I, no, I totally understand that. Yeah. yeah. So I'm like, wow. Yeah. And I'm like, we're definitely not anywhere near 120,000 a year. No. Like, Jesus. But like. But I think people look at us and say, they think, oh, they don't need a job. They must be doing really well. It's like, not really. We're doing really well in the sense of we don't have a job. That's it. Yeah, that's, that's the only good thing. <laughs> the bad thing is, oh god, I don't even want to think about taxes right now. No, don't even, don't even, Not even yeah. Doing. God, I wish I had a W two or a W four. I think is the one. Yeah, one I wish them. someone paid eight percent of my fucking. Taxes. Yeah, I wish I wish YouTube and <laughs> Megaphone would actually withheld hold taxes, but no, I'm an independent contractor. Oh my god, that's when great. I, when I was a baby atheist and I was arguing with uh, Christians at my school because yeah. I was that person, um, <laughs> and like that, like in those conversations when t- finance comes up, yeah, no, it would, it would always come down to uh, they would be like, you know, they would be all belligerent with me, like I, you fucking don't believe in God. That's you're such selfish, whatever. And I would be like, selfish. I wish. Are you fucking <laughs> yeah, I kidding wish. me? I wish I didn't hate myself so much that I didn't have faith. What are you fucking talking about? You got some guy that's gonna love you forever. <laughs> yeah. That you just know that he loves you all the time. Unconditional. I fucking yeah. I wish, wish I had that. Yeah. What the hell? Are you kidding me? I wish I had faith in Christ. That would be amazing. That would be amazing. Yeah. And uh, that's how I feel about this conversation. Yeah. I was like, God, I wish I didn't fucking. Yeah. Yeah. Nah, man, it's it's wild. Well, it's very uh, yeah. God. I don't know. That's interesting. To yeah, me. I've I'm, never. I don't. Yeah, like never thought about like middle class or like or just like. Yeah, yeah. like uh, I, there was a time when in Obama's presidency where he publicly stated that you're you are rich if you make over like two hundred and fifty k. I I think that is a. Uh, <sighs> I feel like it's a pretty safe estimation, but of course it pissed everybody off because Obama said it. But also, it was like, it's really kind of what opened my eyes to it was my dad got pissed at Oh, it. yeah. And my dad, he wasn't a conservative. He just grew up in the in the 50s. Yeah. So he was like, that, it doesn't, putting a number on being rich doesn't mean anything. Rich is a lifestyle. Yeah, I get, okay, that, I kind of understand that. Yeah, like, that's what he was trying to say. He was like, you don't, like, he had a very old school way of looking at, like, money and things. Like, he would specifically not buy very cheap shit. Because then they would break. Yeah. Yeah, that so makes sense. I, he assumed if something was $25 that it would it would work. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> to that some extent. That didn't work. Yeah. For a long, yeah. a long time, he just assumed he had faith in the in the economy and and, and in, businesses and consumerism. Yeah. Well, I don't. He hated consumerism and materialism, but like he just had faith that that people making things were not trying to one up us. Yeah, the poor man, poor poor, <laughs> poor man, sad yeah. old man. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, I don't know. It's uh, it's interesting because that opened my eyes to that where it's like rich is a rich is a lifestyle. You have to be rich enough that your expenses allow are not enough that they allow you to buy luxury items yeah and i will say too when i when i say like 120 is probably middle class that is very dependent on where you are as well because yeah. like a dollar doesn't mean the same thing in florida as it does in like new york city or yeah. california yeah. you know and i want to state that for the record but like i feel like 120 i guess is probably close ish to what middle class might be i mean yeah and I, i'm like that sucks i'm like over a hundred Six digits? If I ever made six digits in my life, I think I would explode. Yeah. I think that'd be... Yeah, like... <laughs> dude, you find out at the end of the year, oh, TikTok has sent us officially, like, $500,000 <laughs> by now. I would be like, how am I still overdrawn? Uh, yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Yeah. God, you know what's wild about that, too? It's like, I'm not gonna say how much TikTok has given us, but, like... It's a lot. It's, it, it's a, I mean, it's enough to where we can live off of it. Yeah. But also, I'm like, wow, you guys won't... 
fucking give a shit if like people steal our content. That's wild. Yeah, that's insane. That's one of the wildest things. Like, wow, you are you respect us enough? You really that, like, you respect us enough to give us money, but not enough to not piss us off. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Good old capitalism. Yeah. Not emotions. No emotions. But only money. Josh, they're not stealing our content. They're ethical clipping. Get out of here. I will say real quick, positive note, we did have an, a transformative use of one of our TikToks. Yes, bitch. Oh, my God. By the red flag guy. I think his name's... Devin Pointier? De- yeah, I believe something it's like something that? like that. Yeah. yeah. Shout out to fucking him. We're friends with him on TikTok now. He's dope as hell. But uh, fucking, yeah, I, that that was a wild he experience. really good edits. He does very, yeah, like that. I saw one where he was like, the it was the red flag his uh his icon but it was the batman thing oh yeah it was really good i think yeah he's a fucking yeah. talented guy and i think yeah that was like the first time in a while like people have made like a uh, like fan animations they've done fan art all that's great yeah and i remember one uh that was on instagram that was like am i wrong and then it's like your the brain uh, the, the is the anxiety like, in the brain yes <laughs> yeah <laughs> and it's me being like yes of course well, of course i'm just telling the truth shut the fuck up yeah <laughs> Yeah. God, that was really that was a fucking awesome one. Yeah. That was really I saw a TikTok too where it was you saying like, yeah, people have listened to us like for fifty thousand minutes this year. And I was like, what the fuck? That's and then crazy. someone showed off fifty one thousand minutes. minutes. That was really good. Yeah, shout out to that person. Fucking you're shout killing out it. To both people, yeah. yeah. Shout out to everyone. Yeah. Oh yeah. And I like I know we talked about it when we did Spotify rap, but yeah, just the the support there. Yeah. yeah, I'm still wording out. I'm trying to word out a personal Instagram post that's just the podcast uh, Spotify wrapped. And it's like, mm. quit my job, bitches. Quit my job, bitches. And that's only that's because part of my brain is like, I gotta show these motherfuckers. Yeah, that I fucking I'm I'm I win I won. <laughs> yeah, that's my goal. Is I I keep seeing people post like about their crazy ass life on Instagram, and I get jealous, and I'm like, I got a crazy ass life. Yeah, <laughs> I should post on Instagram. That's how I've start. I'm like, maybe I'll start using Instagram this year. You know yeah, what I mean? I, yeah. I'll become an Instagram normie. Dude, hell yeah. I quit Twitter. I Congrats. hope you continue yeah. to quit Twitter. That's what I want. I feel that, yeah. Blue Sky. Yeah. Blue Sky's oh, good. fucking uh, quick shout out to Quentin Reviews, uh, the newest video, mm. the Sam and Cat trilogy. I edited True. some of it. Go watch it. And it was funny because I'm the only one, every other editor has like Twitter and I'm the only one that put Blue Sky in, which is you wild. fucking freak. Yeah. I'm, I feel like, <laughs> is this like classist almost? Like, am I like showing off? I you're, was like, wow. <laughs> you're in an era where you're accidentally like, you're like, oh yeah, that's fine. Thousand dollars, whatever. It's a, it's cool. Here's my Blue Sky invite only. And yeah. <laughs> to the invite only social media app. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, do you think okay, quick okay, qu- question. Yeah. If we if we like broke up theoretically. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah and it like uh yeah, that's 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 the goal this year is break up. This sure. Year. Fuck it. Do you think do you think we have enough clout to go on yeah. the famous people Tinder? The famous people oh Raya to get on Raya? Yeah. Uh we'd probably have to move to LA first. Is so, it okay. only like in LA? Like No, but I assume that's where they all are. Yeah, which <laughs> in my southern brain. <laughs> Yeah, who's in Orlando on Raya? Yeah, the fuck? It was Shaq. It'll be Shaq. <laughs> Dude, you start dating Shaq. <laughs> He's Dude, funny as fuck. I yeah. love him. He's great. <laughs> the One of us is dating like an anchor from like West 2 and the other one gets Shaq. <laughs> oh, man. Which anchor do you want to date from I don't, West 2? I don't know. Is there one? They, yeah, they're on a rotation. There are a couple anchors, I think. <laughs> do, they, do they not just get rid of all of them and they're no, not AI? No, it's all AI, yeah. <laughs> Dude, yo, yeah. If, it's been so long since I've actually watched, like, local news, yeah. but, like, if I, if I found out later that it's just, like, robot sitting with paper in hand. <laughs> yeah, like a, like, a, like a cardboard robot painted silver. Yeah. <laughs> like sex robot and it's, from, from Voice Kids, you know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Only a piece of paper. Yeah, just like. <laughs> oh man, I I hope uh, if we broke up, uh, I hope that if or when we break up, yeah, uh, we're in a situation where we just have two different houses. Yeah, already like already set up, so I don't have to worry about yeah. moving. <laughs> already like bought and paid yeah. for, and there's like solar panels, so you don't even have to worry about like electricity. 
Yeah. Like, the only thing you have to maybe worry about is water. Isn't that the weird thing? Like, I feel like now I can't break up with you, right? Not that I want to, (laughs) but because I'm like... stuck here forever. Part of me is like, damn, this business... (laughs) This business needs to live on. It just started growing. (laughs) Yeah, right, yeah. Like, I can't give up on this. (laughs) Fuck. (laughs) I don't know. Is this weird to talk about breaking up? It's a little little wild. Sorry, but I I just I I just thought it would be funny. The the it is funny to think of whatever the fuck it's called. Yeah, and I think it is funny to think of you dating Shaq. (laughs) I don't know why. I love Shaq. Is it? It's because of the age gap. Yeah, it's the age gap. Yeah, yeah. Going against everything you've ever said on the podcast, so you could fuck Shaq. No, realistically, <laughs> if we broke up, it would destroy me. It would be devastating. Yeah, it would be would absolutely be, devastating. Yeah, we're not gonna break yeah, up. We're not gonna break up. We're not, we're not Mom and dad's up. not breaking up. Mom and dad are not breaking up. I I don't think I would date <laughs> for like twenty years. Yeah, I yeah, think I would totally be that person. I feel that. Yeah, yeah, I don't know what the fuck I would do. So plus, we're also, not breaking up, guys. How do you tell your next partner? Yeah, my ex and I had a really famous podcast where we read. Yeah, we only had like three hundred thousand. That's not a lot. It's not a million. <laughs> There are hu- almost two hundred episodes, three hours long of me and my ex talking to each other, and half of them we fucked afterwards. So, like, I mean, <laughs> so, yeah. saying that to my future right now, recorded to my future potential partner Dear to scare future them off, uh, partner. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Eight reasons why, but it's about your podcast <laughs> and, and you're and like you're not even reasons why. thirteen reasons. What? Who cared? The fuck it. <laughs> the fu- that shitty fucking show. Whatever. Well, it's important. Is the last reason is the reason she fucking killed herself. So, <laughs> so it would be twelve reasons why. Because if it still was be alive. twelve reasons why, it would be just a bunch of reasons for bitching about <laughs> stupid shit. <laughs> The thirteenth reason is the thing that makes the twelve reasons important. Important, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I never read it or watched it. It looks really like dog funny. shit. I don't care. I don't care. It is dog shit. It yeah. looks like yeah. But okay. That How book was so bad. How do we get out of this hole? <laughs> uh, um, as a depressed teen, I shouldn't have read thirteen reasons. Yeah, that's, why. yeah, I feel, yeah. It's kind of weird. It's so just it like, so stupid. God. And the TV show, I don't even know what the fuck is going on with the TV show. God. <laughs> wow, that uh, went off the rails for a it second. Really did. I'm sorry, everyone. Yeah, sorry, everybody. Sorry, guys. We're not breaking up. We're not breaking up. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, I asked you. Oh, <laughs> uh, what was the question? Sorry. <laughs> I asked you about what do you, what do you, how do you think about the new year? Uh, I think I'm, I'm excited for this new year. I am excited for this new year, if mm-hmm. I'm being honest. I think I do. The one, the one thing I do want to try and do, mm-hmm. and I think this is the Cody Co. inspired thing, is like oh, I do yeah. want to run a marathon at some point in the future. Yeah, because also like I'm sick of my family saying we're gonna do runs and then not doing them. I think sometimes they do them. I just think we don't do them. Dude, that'd be so funny. If they're they've like been doing, secretly meeting up and doing runs, like marathons, yeah. and like they're just not inviting me. The yeah. guy that got everyone into running, I feel like. God, like, do you remember when we were supposed to do the pumpkin run, and your mom triggered me so hard that we had to drive back home? Maybe. Oh yeah, I do. Yeah. yeah, I'm positive that she didn't even know that she triggered me that bad. But it was yeah, it was really bad. And then she just thinks I just wanted to get out of the run or something. Yeah. <laughs> Sarah doesn't like running. Yeah, it was so funny. <laughs> Fucking, uh, we were doing this pumpkin run in the middle of uh 2020. Yeah, because it was COVID. It was supposed to be a virtual run. Yeah, and she had bought the stuff, so it came with the medals already. Yeah, and but she was like, "You're not allowed to have it until you do the run." And uh, <laughs> right before, um. I had said something like, oh, yeah, this happened with my mom or something. And she goes, oh, are you thinking about talking to your mom again? <laughs> just, and I was like, I gotta go to the bathroom. Yeah. <laughs> and I it, forgot about that. I yeah. just broke down. Yeah, I yeah. don't blame you at all. Jesus. That's insane. <laughs> that was a so wild. so funny because then you came to get me and I was like, I have to go home. I don't feel safe here. I feel like your mom's judging me about not talking oh, to my mom. Oh, yeah, and then I'll... And then, uh, and then you, you were like, "Okay, we're gonna go." And she was like, "No, okay," <laughs> because I think she thought that we were trying to get out of the run. These fucking lazy pieces of <laughs> shit. 
<laughs> now I can look back and it's funny as fuck. It's very funny because that was three years ago. Because that woman just did immense emotional damage to me. Didn't know it, and then yeah. was judging like, me for being God, fat and up. not running. <laughs> 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 fucking loser. <laughs> yeah, okay, guys. I did my run yesterday. It's so funny, dude. Fuck, that is really funny. Jesus. And now all the time she's like, do you want to do a run? You could do a run. We could do a run. And I'm like, I'm good, bitch. Yeah. I'm good. I'm good, yeah. I can't Last even time think we... about it. And then every time I say that too, I feel like it's because I'm fat. But no, in reality, but no, it's because it's I don't want to uh, be in that situation again, again. Or it's like, oh yeah, <laughs> you know, if you just went out for a jog, maybe you'd want to talk to your mom again. And she's not said anything like that since, or even before. That was like a <laughs> one full, time, one time worst timing. Yeah, and now I'm, <laughs> the idea of going on a run is now ruined forever. Yeah. So you did it. And it's not her fault. It's not her fault. I, it was, I it didn't was a, tell it was her for that sure it a mistake. even bothered yeah, me. Yeah, but yeah. God, that's why I forgot about that. That's so fucking, funny. God. You had to drive all the way back to my house. And that's... that's that, was, that was the time I was in Poinciana too, right? Yeah. yeah. So it was like 40 minutes. This is how good of a boyfriend Josh was. I was triggered so bad. And then he was like, get in the car. We're just going to drive to your house. Get in there. Yeah, we're just yeah, we're going back. And then yeah. we hung out there. And then we came back home. And pretended like we had been out doing stuff or something. Yeah. Yeah. God, that was wild. That yeah. was so wild, man. Fuck, dude. <laughs> That's Jesus. some shit, too, that if I had told, if I told your sisters that, they would be like, what? <laughs> <laughs> like, they would be like, what? Like, they would be like, oh my god, or they would be like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's her. Yeah, it's she's, like one she's or the like other. Yeah. It's like, uh, yeah, it makes sense. Or, yeah. oh my god, I can't believe you said that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Jesus, God. Like, take me out back and shoot me before I get to the age where uh, I just start randomly saying crazy shit. Yeah, because, yeah, God, who knows what crazy things I'm going to start saying. Dude. New Year's resolution, don't say any crazy shit. Don't say that reminds any me, crazy if shit. If I say it out loud, it reminds me of my parents. There we go. That's that's all I want to do. I mean, yeah. Well, I mean, also talking about it, I mean, you know, we're both learning. I think that's what the yeah. mentality I want to take in to the new year is like, we're learning. Yeah. And we're, there's a lot of shit that I've been thinking about, like, uh, childhood wise, that I'm like, that was fucking crazy. The way that adults acted <laughs> and like modeled their behavior to us wasn't great no not good no all the shit i say all the advice that i've given on this podcast is in spite was not modeled by the adults in my life yeah it's it's, shit i had to learn yeah exactly (laughs) it is very uh, much uh, yeah and i that's crazy yeah and i will say and it is very wild it's like very fortunate to come out of those events and being like that was fucking weird yeah and not just being like that's awesome dog yeah. Let's fucking party. Like, oh man. Like just, I was just thinking about like we were just talking about all the crazy, like edgy comedians, you know. Yeah, and like, you know, how they the the want to like go deeper into your own psyche to, and seeing how bad it is and instead of working on it being like That's funny as fuck. I'm gonna make a million dollars. I'm gonna say this on it was specifically Louis C. K. Like Yeah. The the vibe of like I I don't think any kids would go back and listen to Louis C.K. and be like, this is funny. I think they would be no, like, this yeah. is crazy. Like, what the fuck? People yeah, especially funny? considering that, like, it seems like not as much of a joke anymore because he just did a lot of the shit, you know? Yeah. It's very, yeah, it's very, that's the crazy thing. And I, I was thinking about that, too, where it's like, if you're not, if you're just saying all these things and doing it, you're not yeah. funny. You're just saying it. And we all thought it was a joke because we we uh, thought you were, you know, you positioned yourself as being a comedian and it not being real, but it was real. And that's why, like, and, I, and I've been having this, too, recently with, like, uh, like Anthony Jeselnik. I've been seeing more of his, like, yeah. podcast. And, like, yeah. he's recommending, like, books about, like, I think his, like, recommended book of the year was, like, something about, like, uh, like a prison chain gang or something like that. And it was oh, written wow. by, I don't even remember what the fuck it was about. Like, I gotta look into I keep seeing it, too. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I can't remember the name of it off the top of my head, but like he said, he read it like three different times, bought it three different times, and it seemed like a really interesting book. And I was like, wow, this seems like a smart, intelligent book. Yeah. And I think he had a lot of like relatively like good progressive picks in his books and like good fiction. Yeah. Well, I think, yeah, I think it's, you know, 
people look at edgy comedy and they think like, okay, yeah, the guys the that were the fans of the edgy comedy, they were saying it. Like realistically, they thought they were being comedians, but they were just saying slurs and yeah. yeah. That is true. But the people that were producing the content that inspired the fans for the edgy comedy were trying to get to a point in this style of comedy that was reactionary and outlandish and, you know, that came from, like, a void of the, like, the Dane Cook absurdist commentary. Yeah. Oh, God, yeah. The, co- the college humor. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, like- yeah. Where it was like, oh, and then I'm fucking a dragon. <laughs> I see a lady on the train and I'm attracted to her and in my head I'm so crazy I'm thinking about fucking her but actually it's she turns into a pterodactyl and then everyone's like ha 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 Dan Cook is so hot (laughs) (laughs) Dan Dan Cook the original Matt Wright (laughs) fucking (laughs) yeah and now you can't do that anymore yeah you can't yeah because people don't want that stupid shit yeah it's fucking dumb they want funny shit They do want funny shit. Yeah, Yeah. they kind of want... I don't know. They just want it to be funny, and they want to not have... I mean, honestly, realistically, I think the world got worse, you know? Yes, yeah. And so now if you're reminding them of reality, they're not going to like it. Yeah. If I'm a trans person and I'm watching Dave Chappelle and he's up there talking about trans jokes, I'm not going to like it. Yeah, especially when the joke is directed at your existence uh, as like, I don't fucking get it. And even before then, it was rape jokes, you know? Yeah, you know, and it's like... (sighs) Edgy comedians were like, I feel like I should say whatever, I get to say whatever I want. But if you're a rape victim, and you're sitting there, and you're watching a comedian joke about rape, it feels, oh, what I went through, this horror that I went through that I'm dealing with, is a joke. Is a joke, and it doesn't... And people around me are laughing at it. That's a terrible experience. Awful, yeah. They're not gonna laugh. No. No. And Jesus. don't you want people to fucking laugh? Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah, trying to bring joy to people's lives, you fucking weirdo. It doesn't mean you can't curse. It doesn't mean you can't be funny. Yeah, it just means a... that you have to work harder. Yeah, exactly. You're, you're, this job shouldn't be easy. Yeah. And I, yeah, it's not easy, quote unquote, in the sense of like, it's an easy job because I just sit down yeah. and pfft, into a microphone. But yeah. Also, I am actively thinking like, all right, if I'm going to make a joke right now, who's the butt of the joke? Yeah. Is it someone? Why, is, yeah. What's yeah. the joke entail? Shit like that. Yeah. And, you know, sometimes I'd fuck up. I think that's fair. We fuck up a lot yeah. because also <laughs> we're in our 20s and we don't know anything. We're in our 20s. Yeah. We don't have any real comedy experience other than this podcast. Yeah. Like, I don't go to open mics. No. I, you know, We don't fucking... stand up. We've never been to an improv class. We've never done any of that stuff. We just started doing this. Yeah. And sort of fell into this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And people think that what what we think is funny and luckily we have an audience where people will respectfully be like hey i disagree yeah and we'll be able to like review it and be like oh shit that's nice i think now uh no i I go in the comments and i'm like i should be allowed to say whatever i want that's crazy (laughs) though right that's so wild to me (laughs) i don't know and i think also i've i've gone off the deep end about like um like obvious hate comments and shit like it really would fuck me up every week i would find one comment that would fuck me up yeah and um i think i'm just gonna not i'm gonna try not to deal with it or i'm gonna try not to um look at or look at comments I think. that's fair that's more than fair yeah, yeah. And i'll keep an eye on it and i'll be like nothing's i think for and youtube I'm, so it's I'm like texting it i'm just like fuck you piece <laughs> of fucking shit get off my fucking channel <laughs> Yeah, all the hate comments are Josh. <laughs> gay. <laughs> fake and You're gay. Fake and gay. Um, no, I mean, you know. I think uh the thing about it is like I for a second I was like, if it's not constructive, I'm not reading it. But now I'm like, no, I get it. You don't have to be nice. Yeah, no, I get it. For me to understand that you're criticizing me. Yeah. You know? I understand that. But I can also ruin my mental health doing this yeah and doing yeah yeah. because then i won't continue to do this unless i shouldn't continue to do this like i'm a piece of shit yeah and like yeah and everyone's just kind of like platformed or whatever no i feel you (sighs) but yeah that's my job though right is to figure out yeah what is and isn't real Mm. in criticism yeah i don't know and i'm still figuring it out but that's the thing is like you know we make mistakes all the time and um i hope to not make as many terrible mistakes to his, to piss people off because I never mean to do that. Yeah, exactly. Um, and yeah, I just want to continue growing, I think. 
Me too. I agree. I agree with that. And I think learning is always a good mindset to have. I feel like yeah. I started this year with a learning mindset and I kept it going. Mm-hmm. And I don't think it should be like you shouldn't ever like you should stop learning ever. In fact, I think no. you should keep learning. But I think it's a good reminder every year to be like, all right, I grew as a person this year. There's still room for improvement. Yeah. I'm going to improve myself. Yeah. And uh, that for me involves making my legs hurt so badly and shitting my pants when I do marathons. <laughs> So yeah, <laughs> hell yeah. Why does running make you shit your pants? I don't. I don't know. I've heard about it so often, and I'm like, damn, dude, that's crazy. I I probably that's why I don't run actually because I shit my pants when already. I sit down. Yeah, so all it's the like time. yeah, yeah. I think it's something. I think something that you produce like when you're exercising, mm-hmm. like you have a high level of like a certain like. Uh, I don't know what it is, like a protein or something like that. Mm. And I think that's the protein that makes you shit your pants. There was a Tom Segura bit, convenient that I have not looked at for a while because well, yeah, I think he's, he's, jo- he's Jordan Peterson pilled. Now. Yeah, and it's really uh, so sad. Yeah, it's sad, and also like going back and I'm like, okay, no, I see it. I see. There was one bit about yeah. him though, like having really bad diarrhea because that was funny at the time. It's always been funny. It's always funny. It's diarrhea, still funny. Yeah. Diarrhea but is it, hilarious. But like he apparently had like a piece of shit doctor. <laughs> that was like, well, the only way you could have these ba- like high of a thing is if you're a marathon runner or if you're on coke. <laughs> okay. Yeah, and I'm I, yeah, that's gonna cut because that's I feel like it's yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Why? I don't know. Fucking <laughs> is that is it fucking? I feel like it's like an ableist kind of thing. Oh, is for it? why? Nah, it's making fun of drugs, I guess, or the doctor. I don't know anymore because Tom Segura is no kind idea. of like yeah, Tom no is a piece of shit now. I feel like yeah, yeah. He is a piece of shit. I mean, I liked his com- his com- uh, comedy before he was a piece of shit. Yeah, but like then... there was that like um, and I'm no, I ain't no good. That, oh that bit. yeah, the <laughs> that is a good bit. Yeah. There's good bits there. God, yeah. Why does some of the worst people sometimes have good bits? Well, I mean, that's the thing. It's they sacrifice their morality for com- for for comedy. Yeah, as an art form, like they are up there trying to perfect an art, and they don't really care who they insult or offend along the way because well, that's they not want really to... perfecting the art, right? Like, no, I feel it's like that's being actually shitty. Kind of, yeah, <laughs> that's what they think, though. That's what I'm it's saying. Comedy is being shitty. Yeah, no, that's what they think they're doing. Is that hmm. they get up there and then they get into like a philosophical, like I'm gonna do this. Yeah, I'm gonna perfect the timing and the performance and the this. I'm gonna say, oh, a crazy thing, oh, ooh, and it'll be, you know, here's the cadence of my words, and they're so in the weeds with that shit that they're not realizing they're saying slurs yeah, over and over, over again. Over again, yeah. That they're yeah beyond themselves. Yeah, that reminds me of the. <laughs> I was gonna the say Tim Heidecker. Oh, okay, where, go oh, ahead. No, it reminds me of the Tim Heidecker where he's like. I love T and A, and then he's like a PC police Token and <laughs> <thing. A>. yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Wee <laughs> wee, yeah, yeah. That's so. That's what makes uh, Tim Heidecker's special so funny. Yeah, because it's a guy that is just getting up there doing edgy shit and not doing any of the actual, like the cadence. Not even being good at. He can't deal with a microphone. Yeah, he can't stand up and like do the thing, and he's <laughs> fucking upset at the sound guy. And he's, yeah, you know that's it's the everyone's that's fault funny. but his. Yeah, yeah. And that's God. It's so good. It's really good. But yeah, fucking um. I was gonna say it's like the Family Guy uh bit where Peter and um Lois are getting high to do like a. Oh yeah, it's like where it's like they're in like the yeah. uh, they're in like a fairy like a fairy tale land, and then it cuts, and it's a hard cut, and it's just them uh, like strumming like in the yeah. worst way. They're they're they think they're like really good at at music, and they're doing a talent show, and they think they're killing it because they're and high just as like fuck. Lois screaming and like Peter like on the ground like <laughs> on acid, like yeah, yeah, and it's like you're not actually doing a good performance because you're not you actually you know, you're not actually. You're not actually making people feel good. You're yeah. making them feel like shit. Exactly. God. Yeah. That's wild, man. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. I lost the sauce on it. I think I'm excited for next year is my main point. Uh, me too. Yeah. Anyway, do you want to talk about 9-11? <laughs> also Harry Potter. <laughs> um, I am so fine with uh, degrading Harry Potter characters. And throwing them into 9-11, actually. I'm actually pretty okay with that. 
This is a uh, fanfiction.net, so we've moved from Wattpad. We've upgraded. Honest, yes, fanfiction.net was my home. That was where I was. So now you're like finally you're I like I had to figure out Wattpad and it was it was a trip. Yeah. Fuck yeah. But now I'm back. Fan fiction time, baby. Yeah, let's and fucking This one is tall is called Tumbling Towers. <laughs> where do you hear this uh fan fiction from, actually? I'm uh, curious. Strange Eons. Oh yeah. Okay. They're that talking makes, about yeah. the Snape wives, I think. And they, yes. They mentioned oh, okay. The Ron and Hermione nine eleven. And that piqued our interest. Yeah. Yeah. Because of course it did. Yeah, we love nine eleven. <laughs> we love it. No, I do want to say <laughs> off the beginning, we're gonna make a lot of nine eleven jokes. Yeah. If it's, if you're yeah, it's. I feel like this is. <laughs> we don't mean to a be minefield. Yeah. Of, yeah. <laughs> Um, I'm reading what is written. <laughs> yeah, That's this it. is a why I'm, our own personal feelings about 9/11. I'm sorry for anyone who uh, lost people. It was a horrible. I feel attack. like the butt of the joke is going to be the fan fiction more than anything. Yeah, I think that because okay, fourth wall breaking. Never done that on the show before. Uh, I feel like yeah. I I feel like. On this podcast, when mm-hmm. we read like red stories, when we do the fan fiction, yeah, uh, and not to like toot our own horn, but I think there is a dissection, even if just a little yes. bit, yes, of like why would someone do this? I think genuinely, and, if you're listening to this part and you listen to the red stories, that's what you like is the dissection. Yes, because yeah, and I feel like that's the 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 kicker here is we've already we've already lost the plot on yeah. a nine eleven Harry Potter fan fiction. It's already pretty insane. Called what was it like? Tumbling towers. Tumbling towers. Tumbling towers. Tumbling towers. Tumbling towers. By Bailation. See, and this is where I get to. I get to. I get to toot my own horn for a second. And I'm like, you know, I have more self awareness. Also, I will say to this, not to a not do this. This was published September 10th. 2011 so a day before the 10th anniversary of 9-11 so and this is where i'm like this has to be a bit this like, has to be a, a ill-timed joke or not even an ill-timed joke uh fucking uh a, 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 she i uh, uh, are you ready uh, i guess because there like, is a warning at the beginning let's do the warning let's do this warning and it will encapsulate this entire yeah, yeah. okay so this is chapter one of tumbling towers by Bale, Bale like you already Asian. called it tumbling towers. Yeah, like that's insane. ridiculous. Like, come on. All right, but this will clear all that up, though. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. See, if you if you if you warn everyone that you're about to do it, you're actually okay to do whatever you want. Yeah. If you say yes. you're, yeah, I know Chat I'm being an face, asshole. Yes. You know, and I think that's gonna. I think that's the real dissection here. Yeah. That's the real getting to the root cause, like yeah. a surgery almost. This is. You know, this actually might be more complicated to do. I feel like this is more of a surgery than the other ones. Yeah. Where it's just like, well, fan fiction, that's no, fine. but no, it's okay, because there's a warning. <laughs> <laughs> and everything's fine. Everything yeah. will be fine. Everything's fine. There's okay. a warning. It's fine. Warning. I know this looks bad. The 9-11 attacks on the World Trade Center is a highly tender subject to most people. Is it? You mean, really? Is it? That's so crazy is that you it? said that. Is it? Especially Americans. Hermione and Ron versus COVID. Fuck it. Why right, not? I'll read it. I'll start from the top. I'm then, sorry. Bitch. I'm Jesus. just like, I'm just, I'm so, I'm, this is all, I'm all over the place. My mind is yeah, not, I'm sorry. This is. I know. I say 9-11 and you perk up. Like I a lot. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I had yeah. attention. Yeah. Okay. Warning. The 9-11 attacks on the World Trade Center is a highly tender subject to most people. Shocking. Es- especially Americans who were alive to witness the tragedy, like me. <laughs> I guess, yeah, if you're one year old, I guess you could have <laughs> witnessed it, yeah. <laughs> I yeah, I don't know about you, but I was like, ooh, I poopied in my diaper. I poopied in my bed, ba- yeah. Uh, if you feel like you are especially sensitive to this subject and feel the need to criticize this story harshly, parentheses, "Quote unquote," harshly meaning beyond constructive criticism or what do you mean by unnecessary unkind comments? and parentheses. Please save us both the time and do not read this story. This story is not in Me any when I'm way about to kill a bunch of civilians, guys. If you're gonna like bitch about it, 
Don't bitch don't to me. Don't bitch to just me. Just walk away. Just walk, just walk away, Cox gun. <laughs> <laughs> like, what are you fucking talking about? Yeah, I know. That's why I chose this story. <laughs> this I, I read this and I was like, thank God we get to white night about 9-11. <laughs> This story is not in any way meant to insult the day or those who died in the attacks. Why are you writing? Oh wait, oh, I mean, okay, okay, okay. All right, you're okay. You don't want to insult anyone. Fair. It's, I it's, think it's good to not insult people. It's to pay tribute to the day in a unique <laughs> Harry Potter related way. <laughs> you know, yeah, Potterheads have a disease. <laughs> I don't know if this one's real, this man. Is a ner- this, this is, is a, a neural worm feel like. of yeah, <laughs> dude. You know this person's a fucking turf now. Oh my god! Like J.K. Rowling just... fucking said, and hate the trance. Fuck yeah, we woohoo, woohoo. Uh, yeah, that's yeah. There should be a Snopes like a Snopes website for is this Fan a fiction. troll or is this not a troll? Because y- yeah, I d- I feel like it's a someone troll. should make that. You should go out and make that. Please. But also, like, 100% 2011 fan fiction? Yeah, I could actually kind of believe this. Like, that's, no one would do it now. That's the other thing. I want to rebrand ourselves as we love reading troll shit. Yeah, you, <laughs> you know, know sometimes, I mean? yeah. We're just having fun. The story's not real. We're just reading it. Yeah. We okay. like reading. Let's, let's, but I like pretend. Yeah, I get it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Anyway, it's a way to pay tribute to the day in a unique Harry Potter related way. So please enjoy and no flames. Oh fuck you! You can't build a wall of uh, anti criticism by a being like, "Listen, I know, I know what I'm about to do." Yeah, which is oh god, it's just which a tr- is, this was a one of the nails in the coffin of me being like, I can't just be like constructive criticism is the only way because I sound like this guy. I sound like this person who's writing yeah, the 9-11 even, fan yeah, I don't fiction. even think like, yeah, and it's very like, I think it is constructive criticism to be like, you shouldn't have made this idea. It, listen, if you made it, that's fine. You shouldn't have posted it, Ken. You shouldn't have posted it. Yeah, that's a constructive criticism right there. Some yeah. things you cannot publish. You don't actually have to post Sometimes you record a whole life. podcast and you realize the whole fucking thing's out of focus. <laughs> and you don't And you, you don't post focus. it. You don't yeah. post it. Maybe you should just, you, you know. T- you take the loss and you do it again the next day. Okay. 8 September 2001. <laughs> September 8th, 2001. Yeah, you can't. Okay, I guess in the story circle, you can't just jump in. It can't be, be 9 11. Yeah. 9 yeah. 37 p.m. London's Muggle Airport was bustling <laughs> with hundreds of people, just like it did on most days. The Stupid sound shit. of a thousand <laughs> shoes hitting the, the floor. <laughs> Echoed through the huge place, bouncing around Ron's head at a volume louder than usual. Real quick, okay, real quick. I, I know this will probably be answered, but are we assuming that this is in the universe where the Potter books technically take place in like the fifties or whatever, whatever time period it was? Uh, no, the eighties. Yeah, it was in the eighties. Okay, so yeah. in the eighties. So okay. it makes sense that this they would so be then, around. Okay, they're all adults, right. so they're not just like elderly people. No, yeah. Okay. He noticed a lot of them were uh okay. Blah, blah, blah. Echo through the huge place, bouncing around Rod's head at a volume louder than usual. As he looked around, he noticed a lot of them were in muggle suits, but most seemed to be preoccupied with finding their next destination. Ron nervously gripped his wand inside his pocket. That's what they're calling it now? As he pulled <laughs> his suitcase with the other. <laughs> Stupid. Low-hanging fruit. That was low-hanging fruit, but <laughs> fuck it. Hey, no flames, Sarah. Jesus, I fuck. Know. Sorry, I'll stop flaming. They, this seemed like the kind of place where Death Eaters would attack. He knew he needn't worry, but though the war had been over for three years, the Auror Department was still finding convicted Death Eaters daily. Wait, is the implication going to be Osama Bin Laden's a Death Eater? Is that what... We're, are we doing this? Are we fucking doing this? I'm gonna cry. <laughs> you can't just take the a tragedy. So strange on the plane. <laughs> I can't. I can't contain myself. Dude, if it was like that, and then oh the like the God. code names are like the code names of Death Eaters are whatever the real names of like the fucking terrorists were. Are you fucking kidding, dude? You can't. Oh, oh my died, God, man, you can't do that. dude. Okay. Jesus fucking Christ. Hermione was at his side, her arm sliding into his as she led him led them to buy a ticket to the next flight to New York. 
He noticed her worried expression as she received the ticket, the way she wrung her hands like she did when she was nervous. I have a feeling something bad's going to happen <laughs> I don't in know, three I have days. A bad feeling. He knew she hated it when he went away for an order mis- admission, especially when Harry wasn't with him. I would feel pissed off of that. <laughs> yeah. Like, what? We need oh, him. Oh, we need the boy who lived yeah. to fucking carry me around and what? We need magic. Isn't that Jesus. the whole point of his character in the ending books is that he's like, I'm good too. <laughs> yeah. It's like, yeah. And also, like, that's what, 20 years ago? Fucking Voldemort's dead. Shut up. Yeah, He's not special it's anymore. Apparently, three wars since the war. Three, oh, the end okay. of the war. All right, fair enough. Three years. So, um, he couldn't help feeling a little sorry for himself. He knew she meant well, but he felt as if she didn't think he could look out for himself unless Harry was there with him. That's a problem. That's a problem. Yeah. In a haze, he realized Hermo- Hermione was pushing his ticket into his hand, which now also had his boarding pass and his passport. He suddenly realized he didn't have his suitcase, only his carry-on bag over his shoulder. He had looked back and comprehended that Hermione had dropped it off with the rest of the luggage that was going with his flight. Man is not present. <laughs> yeah, he's, yeah. How do you get through the check-in, the checking without, line without the, thinking real, I'm I, in the checking line? I have to check my bag. It usually and... takes a fucking hour. The it's, fuck? Yeah, and also, like, I'm willing to bet this is also still around the time, like, I, I don't think 9-11 caused the, like, if you leave unattended baggage, you're, like, or did it? It did, yeah. It did? Okay, so maybe... Yeah. Huh. So, yeah, maybe Ron no, was just willy-nilly with, what like... he had said was she had, like, snuck off and checked his bag. Oh, uh, that's what he assumed happened, yeah. yeah. Or, yeah, Jesus. They arrived at his gate, and he numbly sat down as Hermione spoke to the lady behind the desk. He had only been on a plane once before, when he and Hermione had gone to Australia... So she could retrieve her parents and fix their memories. When did that? What? What was that about? Oh, because in the book she erases oh, her me- yeah. their memories. Oh my god! I forgot. Wait, Hermione's about- Australian. N- no, her parents are no. Her parents are Muggles. So why did they have to go to Australia? Because they get there was a war. There was oh, a Holocaust. So the war. There was a wizard Holocaust in the UK. So she like shipped them off to Australia and fixed their. I forgot about that. That's old as hell. Oh my god. Oh my god. Wow. <laughs> yeah, okay. This is wow. You just realize how stupid Harry Potter is. Yeah, the fact that she has to go to pick up her parents and be like, no, you I'm your daughter. To, let's get let's I'm get your daughter. Fixed. I'm fixing your memories. <laughs> what the fuck? Well, yeah, uh, sorry. Hey JK, Holy I had to tie that I had to tie that loose end because you didn't in the epilogue of your fucking book or whatever. Like I know everyone says that she's bad at world building, but I forget until it comes up, and I'm like, yeah, that yeah, did that happen. Is, that I is just accepted that because my prefrontal cortex was yeah, not you know, developed. That's the other thing about like a Harry Potter fan fiction is that the foundation of Harry Potter is already kind of you a, gotta a, fix a, a lot of problems, a fucked already. up structure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's build a skyscraper on just mud. <laughs> Just sand. Just some sand. Sand, whatever. <laughs> whatever the cheapest is. Uh, if we get it real hot, it'll be glass, so it'll be fine, <laughs> yeah, actually. It'll be fine. That's strong, I guess. <laughs> this time, the rest of his aura unit was flying out of the airport in Cornwall, and he was alone. They had told him that they would meet up with him at the airport in New York, and he really hoped they would, because he had no idea where to go from there. <laughs> He's just a bumbling fucking idiot, and she is doing everything for uh, him. Yeah, that's, yeah. That is not... I feel like you're shitting on Ron a little that bit. That is kind of a, a flanderization of Ron, yeah. That's a funny word, but yeah, yeah. you're right. You're totally right. Know yeah. exactly what you mean. Yeah. Yeah. Hermione returned from the desk and sat down next to him. They're going to start boarding at 10. Your flight leaves at 10.30. The way that he's being treated is like he's 12. All right, you're, you gotta so you leave gotta go with this, and then you go here. Like, have you not been to a fucking airport before? Yeah. Like, I mean, yeah. maybe if they're muggle, if they're not muggle. Yeah, why do they have to go wizards? through the muggle, like, fucking, is there, like, a... <laughs> that is a good point. Why can't he just fucking... The fucking apparate or whatever the fuck it is. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Just don't they have wizard shit in New York as well because of the 50s stuff? Yeah, because that so, was don't they pre-Harry Potter. Yeah, so do they technically have... Well, don't don't they mention there's an American school at some point as well? Yeah, because yeah, yeah. also, yeah, the 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 Fantastic Beasts and what they what they're and, all about is. <laughs> <laughs> 
I don't remember. I know Steve Zaragoza and Mike Falzone did a bit of that, but I, cause, cause I actually don't remember what it's called. Uh, but <laughs> because, so what, what they're doing, and... what they're all about. Yeah. Uh, no, but like fucking um. No, the the um. That's a funny bit. Uh, yeah, that's great. Go watch that podcast. Why are you watching that's this? That's a better podcast. Yeah, fuck us. Yeah. Um. But no, fucking um. There's a uh, because that happens in New York. Yeah, yeah that's it's in New to be... York. They have like a whole thing i assume i, thought, I don't know I, I dropped off after the last movie and then also all the jk shit yeah. i was forced to watch that one and i was like oh okay it's new york cool hey baby it's new york hey, baby, i'm walking here i'm a wizard is marius from fucking uh les mis being a being a guy in new york and now everyone wants wants to suck his dick with him and his wide mouth <laughs> got a really wide mouth if you ever looked at but it. But yeah, no. So okay, yeah. Why don't they just apparate or whatever the fuck? Why do we have to do all yeah, this? I don't know. Paperwork. Why don't they just fucking ride the eagles to Mordor? You know what I mean? Yeah. I, yeah. Um, Cinemasins ding for those of you <laughs> at home. She <laughs> sighed and looked apprehensively out the window at the huge airplanes, which were only visible from their blinking lights in the night. He watched her as she started fiddling with a sparkling diamond on her left hand, her hands shaking as she did so. He studied her for a moment more watching as she spun the ring around her finger and look at anything but him. He sighed and gently took her left hand in his. Oh, so it's Trouble in Paradise? Is that the <laughs> implication here? Love, please stop worrying. I'll be fine, all right? Her brown eyes found his and she looked at him reproachfully, as if it was his fault that he was being sent across the ocean by his department. I wish Harry was going with you. <laughs> I, I like him more than you. Yeah. I want to get married to Harry. <laughs> I want to suck his fucking dick. <laughs> No, it genuinely says, I wish Harry was going with you. I don't like it when you don't have each other. I know you battle best when you and Harry are together because you suck shit at fighting without your best yeah, friend. Yeah, you fucking suck, dude. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Real fucking Hall and Oates situation over here with you and Harry. <laughs> uh, he frowned slightly a bit offended, but he knew Hermione meant well and decided to hold back his anger. Jesus. All right. I mean, I would be angry, too. I'd be angry, too, yeah. I know. He gently took her face in his hands and pressed his lips to her forehead. Fucking, sl fucking slams her down. Fucking. I'll be careful, all right? And he... <laughs> Body slam. Yeah. She nodded through her, uh, though her eyes now were shining with unshed tears. Jesus Christ, lady. Ron looked down at what? What's going to happen? Um, Ron <laughs> looked down at the diamond that glittered. I'm waiting for the comment that's like, guys, they're going to the airport because 9-11 involved planes. It's called, it's, it's setting it up. <laughs> guys, what? Come on. I, yeah. I thought you guys said you had media comprehension. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're not the asshole. <laughs> no, it's us, for sure. Yeah. It's us and our bad media comprehension. <laughs> yeah, that's what's going on. That's totally reality. Um, she nodded, though her eyes were now shining with unshed tears. Ron looked down at the diamond that glittered on hand and squeezed her fingers gently. I promise when I get back, we can sit down and start planning this wedding. All right. <laughs> wow. Oh so they're also putting a shit. Wow, man. This is a weird B plot. I'm one day away from retirement. Writing a, <laughs> writing a, dude, writing a, a, a 9 11 Harry Potter fan fiction and not knowing whether or not the romance is the A plot or B plot. Cause we haven't even, that, <laughs> we're just, we're just like really like. Oh god! Oh, what? Okay, this is some. Um, oh my I'm, god! My story this, circle brain is not this one's okay really good. right now. Hermione smiled through the tears that now fell down her face and said, "Seriously, you swear?" They both knew it wasn't a promise about the wedding at all, but his safety. <laughs> the shit I have to say <laughs> on this fucking segment that I'm reading from <laughs> other people. It's it makes me so and my heart is full. I'm so happy that I have to say this. <laughs> like if Let's I go. had to get a job in the future, and they're like, "Let me look this girl up." Oh, she's got a podcast. I'm gonna watch episode 183 <laughs> in particular because 183 is my lucky number. I'm fucking crying. I'm actually crying. Swear to Merlin. <laughs> Okay, another what? thing that you have to work with is you have to replace Swear to Merlin, dude. Merlin, damn it. Yeah, you have to replace any instance <laughs> of God with Merlin. It's not as fun as every pony. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Fucking God, that's so 
Because I know, uh, yeah, because isn't also Merlin's beard in Harry Potter like uh, like saying, what the say fuck? they swear to Merlin in the, in the book? Swear to fucking Merlin, dude. No, they did it because even J.K. Rowling, that you know, fucking moron. That was what caused was it. Like, yeah. God was like, what the fuck? Yeah. What the hell? Wait, God caused 9 11 yeah, because. Yeah, because he said, swear to Merlin. He was like, that's fucking crazy. And that's I when. I did all this and I get nothing. <laughs> And that's when uh, Osama bin Laden had an idea. <laughs> like, <laughs> I just realized I, I made the like <laughs> Harry Potter is anti Christian yeah. <laughs> argument just now on accident. <laughs> <laughs> Fucker. <laughs> All right, let's get through this. This is a minefield Holy and we have hit shit. every single mine. Yeah, Great. That's the, that's the funny part is the warning being like, guys, I'm not trying to make fun of everything. 9-11, Harry <laughs> Potter, swear Jesus. to Merlin, Jesus Christ. And I'm like, whoa, dude. Yeah, okay. You're, if you didn't mean it, that's fine. And but, I guess I won't hate comment, dude. But also, come yeah, on. That's the only thing you come want on. is me to not A criticize bit, you. Yeah. Oh, my God. This is a nightmare. Swear to Merlin. <laughs> Dumb. <laughs> so dumb. She gave a watery laugh as he planted her his lips on various places on her face. Fucking <laughs> 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 like nibbling the yeah, eyes. Uh, kissing the tears away. Some hardcore PDA, Jesus. <laughs> yeah, people are like, what the, the fuck is wrong fuck? with That's them? why you're on this plane. Yeah. <laughs> it wasn't long until a cool woman's voice announced above them, attention, flight 657 is now boarding. Hermione's face immediately fell as she faced Ron. That's you. Look it up, bitch. I have no idea. I'm just gonna I look don't up, remember I'm just gonna the look up this flight number. Well, no, because <sighs> I want to say... There's so much more to this. We really got to get through this. I'm though. sorry. Yeah, we can only do probably like one chapter. We've already been here for like 30 minutes. Oh, fuck me. Okay. He said nothing but wrapped his arms around her, hugging her so tightly that he feared they would soon become one being. He felt her arms fold across his back and the moisture from her tears darken his shirt. Get your <laughs> fucking wet tears off my fucking shirt, It's funny bitch. as fuck to think of Hermione shorter than Ron <laughs> hugging him and being like, <laughs> yeah. in the middle of uh, 9-11. Yeah, they stood yeah. there locked in their embrace for what felt like forever before Ron finally gently pulled back. He looked into her eyes once more before recklessly capturing her lips with his. He became aware of every small detail that was happening between them. He felt every curl as he ran his hands through her hair, and in contrast, he could feel her hands gripping the hair at the back of his neck. He felt the warmth of her back as his other arm wrapped more securely around her waist. Last call for flight 657 to board. The voice shook Ron from the embrace, and he broke apart from Hermione. She looked up at him sadly and grabbed his carry-on bag, handing it to him. He slung it over his shoulder and gently kissed her one last time. I'll be back in a few weeks, he told her, his eyes meeting hers. I promise. Then he got in line, handing the woman at the desk his boarding pass. He turned one last time before entering the terminal, waving slightly to Hermione, who waved sadly back. He boarded the plane and felt like he had truly left his country along with Hermione, even though the plane hadn't even left the ground yet. Okay, 4th of August, 2001. Wait, okay, so now we're time skipping now. Yeah, so this is earlier. <laughs> The bloody ring that had been burning a hole in his pocket for weeks finally was going to be gone. Ron took out the small box and opened it, picturing what the glittering diamond was going to look like on Hermione's hand. Oh, this is the proposal. All right. Yeah. He had finally saved enough to purchase a diamond that was actually visible. Tonight was going to be the night. Ron had retreated to the flat he shared with Harry right after work to change out of his work clothes and into the emerald... Oh, oh, fuck. Okay, I'm sorry. Ron had retreated into the flat he shared with Harry right after work to change out of his work robes and into the emerald green dress robes that had cost him almost as much as the ring. At lunch, he had told Hermione to meet him at his flat after work. She had looked at him curiously, but he had only winked at her and left. There was no way she was going to figure out what he was planning. At six o'clock, there was a knock on the door and Ron rushed to open it. Hermione stood before him in a modest black dress, her hair in a messy bun. She seemed to be fussing with herself, so smoothing her dress and patting her hair, but Ron didn't think there was a way to improve such a perfect picture. Hermione, you look beautiful, he told her. She beamed and accepted his arm around her. Ron, where are we going? You'll see, he said with a smirk. From inside his flat, they apparated to the destination. Okay, so they know how to do that. Yeah, they didn't, yeah. Actually, the apparate spell only has a yeah. 500 meter range, actually. Do you so. think they're going to apparate onto the plane? Like, there's so much 
crazy shit you could do. That could happen, yeah. And yeah. I don't like any of it. I don't like any of this. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Um, the smell of old books was the first to meet Ron, and he knew they were in the right place. Hermione was looking around with a smile on her face. She turned to Ron and said, we're in the library at Hogwarts, aren't we? You're adults. We're going back to high school we're for this proposal. We're going to high school. He only smiled and snaked his hands around her eyes. You'll see. Ron, just follow my lead. He stepped forward and so did she. She led, He led her to the back of the library where his hands, with his hands over her eyes, where he had found her so many times, reading in the window seat, hidden away from the rest of the school. Hey, remember when everyone hated you? <laughs> Remember when I bullied you also as yeah, a child? as a child, yeah. Isn't that cool? Let's and go back to that space. A happy marriage. Cute. Stupid. This is Remember the- when you uh, led a fucking um, house, house elves slave revolution and everyone made fun of you for yeah, it? Yeah, because like, they like it. Because our creator sucks shit? Yeah. <laughs> and our existence is a cruel joke. <laughs> yeah. Our creator made an entire race of slaved elves. While also talking about and also made beat. a Hitler to yeah 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 cool. fucking yeah good. Um, when he led Hermione around the final turn, he grinned at the side of two chairs and a table set with candles and an elegant dinner placed in the middle of the huge space in the back of the library. It had cost him two months of savings, but George had pulled through for him. He removed his hands from Hermione's eyes, and she gasped at the sight. She shot Ron a huge smile. As he pulled out one of the chairs uh, for her. Once they were tucked into the dinner, they began to talk about everything there was to talk about. Though they had been best friends for such a long time, they still got to learn something new about the other person every day. That's not realistic. That's I gotta not be realistic. Honest yeah, with you. people are fucking boring. It's, I mean, maybe if you're a fucking wizard. Yeah, I learned like, a new spell today. <laughs> Flowers. I don't know. Some some crazy shit. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, I guess. Yeah. But I mean, yeah, you shouldn't be like. <laughs> what secrets are you hiding from each other, wizards? Yeah, it's been five years. I think. Yeah, you should you should know pretty much everything. <laughs> yeah. If you don't, there's something wrong. I think. Actually, actually I got a I got a bungalow. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I got, got a whole secret whole other husband. House. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Okay, about the other person every day. Ron realized that no matter how many conversations he had with Hermione, he never got bored. She would talk to him about her day, but he wasn't always listening. My wife, am I right? (laughs) Sometimes he would use the time to simply gaze at her features, wondering how on earth he had gotten so lucky. Halfway into their meal, Hermione was talking about the five essays she had to have done by Friday when Ron felt felt like his carefully planned proposal was going to burst out of him if he didn't do it now. Hermione... He had cut her off. Her eyes narrowed. When she read his soft expression, however, she said, was I talking too much again? What a bitch ass. Ron, yeah, Ron fuck you, Ron. You fucking abuse this woman. Wife just keeps fucking nag, nag, nag. <laughs> um, was I talking too much again? Ron grinned. You always do, but I love that about you. He said cutting her I off. I need the red flag guy to come yeah. through here with this. I need I need him to be like Ron. Just texting no. him. Hey man, got a <laughs> hey wild man, you one gotta for you. Do this shit. <laughs> <laughs> you always yeah, we're buds. <laughs> yeah, me we're, and Red Flag we're guy. Best yeah, we're best friends. Yeah. we're such best friends. I don't know his name. Uh, you always do, but I love that about you. Speaking of that, I was just thinking of the reasons why we should get married. Her eyes widened, but after a moment, she recovered and raised an eyebrow. Well, I don't know," she said as she sipped her brandy with a smirk playing at her lips. Why should we get married? See, that's the issue I've been dealing with, Hermione. I reckon you have no reason not to marry me, especially because of my charm and good looks. He flashed her a cheeky smile, and she looked at him challengingly with a twinkle in her eye. Really? She asked, peering at him with a raised eyebrow. Still, she's been raising her eyebrow the whole time. So what reasons do you have that makes you want to marry me, Mr. Weasley? (sighs) Your bad grammar. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Your shitty sentence structure. Um, Ron smiled, admiring the way she blushed slightly at their flirtation. Well, I reckon after 10 years of fighting with you, crushing on you, he reached into his back pocket and felt the soft velvet of the small black box. And loving you more than anything, I probably should get on with it. Just fuck it. Let's wrap this up. Yeah, let's just, yeah, let's just get this fucking show on the road, huh? That makes me not feel good. Yeah. <laughs> He got out of his seat and bent down on his knee in front of Hermione. He took out the box and opened it, revealing the sparkling diamond inside. Hermione's hand covered her mouth, her eyes glinting with tears. All signs of flirtation and teasing gone. Ron, 
Hermione, he looked up at her seriously now, drinking in every part of her. Will you do a huge favor for me and make me your husband? I know we fight a lot, but I swear I'll take care of you and love you more than anything else. He was cut off when her lips pressed against his, causing him to forget everything he was going to say. She wrapped her hands around his head and tugged him closer to her. He smiled and enveloped her in his arms. Uh, when they finally broke apart, he spoke to her with his lips an inch away from hers. Is that a yes, then? Days in the courtroom are Hard much, much fun. fun. Okay. Do, 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 do. <laughs> okay. Uh, 10 August 2001. And I think this is the last one before it's done. Okay, cool. Because, yeah, that was a long <laughs> one. That's a long one. a long fanfic. Fan and fiction also, about there's that. a lot to time. unpack because, again, this is the 9 11 fucking. Yeah. Okay, 10th of August 2001, 10 44 p.m. Ron stepped out of his fireplace and into the hearth, ruffling his hair to get the soot out. He looked up and noticed how dark the flat was. A small crack of light was seen behind his and Hermione's bedroom from the space between the door and the floor. He dropped his briefcase onto the kitchen table and approached the door, wrenching it open. Hermione was sitting cross-legged on their bed, deeply immersed in a book. She looked up when he entered and raised an eyebrow questioningly. She's always raising eyebrows, dog. She's yeah. always be like, mm -hmm. this is what I think of when I think of Hermione. He's like, hmm? 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 Um, okay. He approached her and gently kissed her lips. Sorry, love. They kept me late again. You said you would be home at seven, Ron. That was almost four hours ago. She glared at him reproachfully and turned back to her book. Ron furrowed his eyebrows and fell onto their bed, taking Hermione into his arms. I'm sorry, Hermione. I really am. The department's keeping, really keeping me busy. Yes, Ron. My job keeps me busy, too. She burst out, wiggling out of his arms. But I have an eight-hour day, and I come home at six every night. He frowned at her and thought about his day and the news he needed to tell her. <laughs> is it going <laughs> to be the stop 9-11, oh, Hermione? Yeah, I'm is sorry. that going to be what it is? Is like This is like the CIA of like, listen, we got it. I got it. But <sighs> I can't let the FBI get it. All right. I need to listen. I need the funding. I got to be honest with you. All right. It's like they have the, the the conflicting like the Ministry of Magic, and then it's the uh. Bureau of Magicianal Investigations. <laughs> yeah, Be <laughs> I never got why they just become cops. Like they went through the whole situation where the Ministry of Magic is like got overrun corrupt. by Nazis. Yeah, yeah, like the, the the magic Nazis. Like her way of figuring that out was. Time to clean it out from the inside. Yeah, <laughs> like, are you kidding me, dude? No, I wouldn't trust them for a fucking minute. I don't even think that's liberal. I think that's just fascist shit. Yeah, like, that's, that's a little, not yeah. how that works. I'll change it to the way I need it to be. <laughs> By being a cop. <laughs> that's not how that works. That's not how it works at all. Okay. Jesus. He, he frowned at her and thought about this day and the news he needed to tell her. She looked away disgusted and rolled off their bed, marching into the bathroom and slamming the door behind her. He heard the water in the sink turn on and knew she was brushing her teeth to avoid talking to him. He sighed and changed out of his robes, replaying the news he had gotten from his head aura in his head. That's supposed to, like, uh, 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 the fuck, brushing her teeth? That's gotta be, like, a... I mean, I think it could be a good quirky thing, but I'm like, everything that, uh, that she has done so far has been about dealing with Ron. Yeah, so I feel like it's like you're it's turning on the sink not... just to cry or something. Yeah, like, fucking... It's like, whoa, dude, this Jesus is some real... Fuck. yeah. <laughs> this also wait this is august Hermione not needs so wait, okay. feminism as if i like <laughs> <laughs> like yeah that's what hermione is the character is uh oh not feminist yeah never. a trad wife that's what she was gonna be that was whole whole point of her character yeah. what <laughs> that's so crazy <laughs> so dumb <sighs> okay uh okay Blah, 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 blah. She sighed and changed out of his robes, replaying the news he had gotten from his head or in his head. Moments later, Hermione emerged from the bathroom, frowning at him as she reluctantly crawled into their bed next to him. Before she could pick up the book, however, Ron blurted out, Hermione, I need to talk to you. She looked over at him and met his eyes. She seemed to read the earnest, uh, the earnest in his eyes and said nothing, but gave him her full attention. He inched toward her and took her hands, feeling her engagement ring under his thumb. I gotta go to New York to stop. 9-11, dude. <laughs> he took it as a good sign that she didn't pull They're gonna away. call it 9-11. That's what they're gonna call it. I used the time turner thing. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot that you could do that. 
<laughs> we're gonna go back in time. To I Nine wish 11. he would be like, oh yeah, I'm gonna go to New York. And she's like, for 9-11? And he's like, what? <laughs> she's like, yeah, I mean, I do the time turner all the time. It's yeah. not, it's 9-11, you can't. <laughs> no, you're not allowed. Or is it the twist at the end that she knew this was all gonna happen? And did nothing. Because of the time turner? <laughs> The thing that was so fundamentally broke every, every single thing, everything in Harry hey, we're Potter. Only, we're only three books in. <laughs> Let's add time travel to this real quick. I'm J.K. Rowling, <laughs> I'm a JK smart Rowling. person. This is a smart <laughs> idea for my fantasy novels. Yeah. Is time travel? <laughs> this is to give the to give the power of time travel to a teenage girl who uses it this to take more worst. classes. God, this is the this is the worst <laughs> fan fiction. This is the worst one. This I is... think we're just uh, we're just dunking on Harry Potter yeah, itself. This is, yeah, this is yeah, yeah. Holy shit! <laughs> In short, her took her hands, feeling her engagement ring under his thumb. He took it as a good sign that she didn't pull away. Hermione, I'm not sure to tell you this, but they're signing me to another Auror mission. She seemed to take a sharp intake of breath, closing her eyes for a moment. For how long? He could sense the tears were coming, so he wrapped an arm around her, pressing his lips to her forehead. Only a month, but it's... it's in New York. <laughs> she looked at him incredulously, her eyes lit with a new fire, but this time it was different. It was sadder. New York? Why do they want to send you there? You know what's ironic is that that Remember Me movie where it's Robert Pattinson. It should have been Rupert Grint. <laughs> I know! <laughs> That we just watched a, that, that recently. That ending to that that shitty fucking <laughs> that shitty fucking movie. Jesus. I don't know if the movie is actually good or not. But that twist is not. When I saw Pierce Brosnan in there, I was like, "What, what the, the fuck? fuck? He got roped into this? How did he get in here?" Jesus. <laughs> she looked at him incredulously. Her eyes lit. Uh, yeah, New York. Ron sighed. Our head was our head was reasoning to suspect there's a group of Death Eaters building a new sort of cult under the city. Under the city? Like, underground? He nodded, squeezing her hand. We'll be underground for most of the time. Our head says that we're leaving on the... And then he steals all the pants. <laughs> <laughs> he steals all, all the jeans. jeans. <laughs> all the jeans. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my God. It's redemption. The redemption. God damn it. It's always uh, Dan it's Harmon. Always Dan it's, always, Harmon. It's, always, it's always Dan Harmon. Look always, up redemption, always Dan was. Harmon. <laughs> Oh, it always, always has been. Has been. Jesus fucking oh, Christ. We'll be underground for most of the time. Our head says we're leaving on the 8th of September. Uh, in between then and now, uh, they're to be training us to get ready to go underground. He studied Hermione's face apprehensively, watching as her face fell in sadness. But I, you, she stammered and he squeezed her tire to his side, kissing her temple. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, she burst out. You can't go underground, Ron. Especially as a, it, in a foreign country, it's too dangerous. And you just proposed. They can't be planning a wedding without you around. It's one month, lady. Calm the fuck you down. Just, you're not planning it immediately. Yeah, you know, it takes a little while. Yeah, I wouldn't be. I assume there might be people that are like, I've been planning it since I was a child. But I would be like, can we figure this out next year? Does it have with them like eloping to like Vegas or something? Like, I just heard of this new place. Sin City. Sin <laughs> City. Uh, I gave you planning a wedding without you around. Tears were falling down her face and Ron felt his heart slowly start to break. He embraced her, tucking her head under his chin. He hated himself for putting her through this. I'm so sorry, Hermione. If I could get out of it, I would. But they're making me go. He was watching her carefully again, gazing at her as she wiped the tears from her cheeks. Finally, she sighed and spoke once more. I suppose I can't do anything about it. Just promise me you'll be careful. Please, Ron. I can't lose you. It would end my world. She cut off as he kissed away her tears. (laughs) 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 I don't know why that's the thing. Yeah, that's that's what you're like. But just the idea of like him cupping her face. He's very aggressive. Yeah. Like, Jesus, stop touching me. Stop it. What the fuck? I mean, maybe it's because I have sensory issues. (laughs) <laughs> That's what it would feel like, I guess, yeah, to me. Like a strangling. And, yeah. <laughs> Ron kisses TM. Ron kisses. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, kissed away her tears, finally capturing her lips with his. He looked deep into her sad brown eyes and saw all the worries that were going through her head. He kissed her one last time for the night and said with the strongest <laughs> earnest he could muster, I promise, Hermione. 
She seemed satisfied, but it was difficult to tell behind her mask of stony sadness. She looked like she was already planning his funeral. <laughs> she, oh my god. She, you don't even know 9-11's gonna happen. Or she does, and that's the twist. Yeah. He just held her tighter and kissed every part of her face all over again. <laughs> um, finally, before she fell asleep in his arms at night, she whispered, sometimes I really wish you weren't an aura, Ron. I'm sure every cop feels that. God. And that's the end of chapter one. Wow, there's a lot going on here. There's it, a lot. There is a lot going uh, on here. And none of it's good. No. <laughs> no. This is... I think this is the worst idea for a fan fiction so far. This is for sure, obviously. Yeah. Someone uh, in the comments said, I'm sorry, Hermione. <laughs> My next trip is in <laughs> Afghanistan. <laughs> we, got, we have to go into Iraq. <laughs> we have to. They have weapons of mass destruction. <laughs> the Death Eaters <laughs> are hiding in the caves. <laughs> Saddam dude, Hussein. Dude, a bunch, of, a bunch of fucking liberals like trying to like equate <laughs> like Saddam Hussein, I, which I think did dude, that happen? I feels like it. Did. It feels like it could have happened. Where it's like they're using like these are the Death Eaters because like remember when like Reagan used like Star Wars to go yeah. against uh, classic, Ro yeah. Like we're gonna build a big we're Death build Eater a like it's Star Wars. <laughs> Get the fuck out. That's real. <laughs> Get the fuck out. Uh, why is Gizzy no scared about yeah. Reagan? Yeah. Yeah. God. One of the many uh let's all kill the president skit just sketches. Classic. Classic. Yeah. Classic God. shit. Um I don't know where this is going, which is so worrying as yeah. a podcaster. Yeah. And also this is my job now. And also <laughs> Um, yeah. Hey, I've never felt more like I've never my felt head's more on alive. The, my head's on the chopping block now, isn't it? Oh fuck! Why? Because of nine eleven? Because yeah, not even that. Because I, I, I feel like I, okay, I for what? I don't know. Because like I'm just like, where is this gonna? Because also like I know we're not the ones that are writing this. Yeah, that's what I think. Yeah, I'm not I making fun yeah, of nine eleven. Is, I'm making fun of this person for making fun, fun of nine eleven. Also, I'm trying. I'm trying so hard to determine like, is this a troll? Because this is like too much effort a lot of effort for a troll but it's also fanfiction.net you have to have that amount of effort honestly. yeah so i'm like i don't know yeah you'll get dunked on if yeah you don't, really. i mean people on fanfiction.net are like like grammar nazis to a large extent okay so that's probably why but like wow that's like i'm so i'm just shocked and i'm like because mm -hmm. i could see someone Writing this a hundred percent in earnest for the tenth anniversary. Yeah, and like some teenager, you know, <laughs> like that was like seven when nine eleven happened, and couldn't yeah. really like. I don't. I just so wild, man. Yeah. <laughs> Ron and Hermione versus. I read a comment that was like, uh, "She's Hermione is too teary eyed for this," and I was like, "Well, yeah, dog." And I read that before reading the thing. And I was like, yeah, dog, 9-11 is happening. Um, yeah, I think she's allowed to we cry. We haven't even gotten to 9-11. And she's, so, she's crying every damn second. I'm like, Jesus Christ. I think she'd be also, fine. Real, real quick, like, writing note. Yeah. Really annoying that it's not in chronological order. Especially when it you doesn't... Didn't you, didn't, you didn't need a time skip back. Yeah. That's really... That's really... And in fact, that's kind of a weird, like... Yeah, what's the point of starting in the airport? Yeah, like... The, is it because like is there gonna be more stuff in between those times like okay how big mm. is 9-11 in the context of this story right. like how important is 9-11 to this apparently the a plot is of of crumbling marriage because of ron's work or just starting marriage yeah just starting or like a crumbling relationship i guess it's yeah. die hard basically like yeah <laughs> there they turned to die hard except instead of john mcclain it's, it's ron fucking weasley in the north Tower. <laughs> instead of the fucking building it's goddamn 911 that's what it is and uh, instead of that's a better idea is Die Hard but Harry Potter like just mix those two no, together. No, it's not actually why a good you, idea. Why can't you? Yeah, well, why do you have to bring, bring 9 11 into it? it? Yeah, if you just want Ron to be yeah. in a building alone with his wand, 
and just do die his one and do a die hard. No, you're so right. Yeah. It is a bad idea. I was thinking it's in terms no, of so, no, no, no. I was thinking good in terms ideas. of like all media, and then I was like, no, yeah. In terms of fan fiction, we're that's the a bottom good idea. of the barrel right I, now. I like we're past yeah. the barrel. Yeah. Like this, dude. Okay, uh, listen. No hate to this commenter because I you just reminded me with the bottom of the barrel content. Yeah. We apparently said something last episode about like this <laughs> shit is the bottom of the barrel. And someone was like, yeah, I just turned off Glee to watch this, so I guess you're better than Glee. And I read that, and I was like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I do feel a little bit more confident in saying that at least we're above Glee. Like, yeah. I'm not, I'm not going to be like, oh, thanks. Thanks for the gold, Thanks for letting stranger, me yeah. know that I'm better than Glee. I knew that before I even started the podcast. Yeah, I, yeah, I was I'm <laughs> more. I'm actually, yeah, Glee is low, I'm even lower on the totem pole. But no, I somehow. do. I do genuinely appreciate. I do appreciate it. the I'm sorry, right I don't, yeah, to, I I don't just, want to mock. Yeah, it was a funny initial <laughs> response to reading that. It's like, yeah, no fucking like, shit. Yeah, of yeah. course I am. If you fucking, if you took out a flip phone and you took a video of a cockroach doing a flip, that's better than Glee. <laughs> Yeah, right, yeah. exactly, yeah. Oh, cool, I, yeah, that's a cool fucking flip. <laughs> yeah, at least you're, like, neat. You know? <laughs> yeah, you know, neat, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's it's pretty not, neat. We also, I, I've just remembered the, the community bit, not because of the Christmas special we watched, but, like, the one in season two where it's, like, sing-a-ling-a-ling-ding-dong, sing-a-ling-a-ling-ding-dong. <laughs> oh, yeah. Sing, 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 <laughs> sing. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, they yeah. didn't bother bringing up lyrics. Yeah, they just don't, yeah. yeah. God, what a great show. That is a good show. Watch that. that was Don't a, fucking... Yeah, fuck, yeah, fuck, fuck this, this show. show. Speaking of this show, we gotta do ads. We gotta do ads now. We gotta get paid for this? Mm-hmm. I just realized, though, that, that 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 was one chapter. There are only three chapters, so I could have split that up into three. I don't give a shit. Fuck it. Let's, right. Yeah, fuck it. Yeah. So I only got three <laughs> weeks of this. This will be a short... Yeah, yeah, sweet. Awesome. Finally. Wait. So that's the first act? Yeah. That was shitty as fuck. Then I'm sorry. Like it was well written, or, or it's it's dead, or, or, it's, it's, dead. or it's dead in the water. Because you you enticed us with the the just the you just the title was enough to make us laugh. So you shouldn't uh, have written anything well, else. And then that's a troll. Yeah, that then, is a troll. Yeah, that makes All right. sense. So that's yeah, we'll see. That'll be okay. interesting. Okay, yeah. cool, sweet. Unless like the chapter two is just like the super long it's thing just, uh, explaining every event that happened on 9-11 <laughs> <laughs> and how Ron and Hermione were involved. I think if I don't, if I, okay. Does Ron die? So I'll give you a hint of a, a tidbit for next week to keep you, keep you coming yeah, back. Yeah, keep him hooked, yeah. Um, I think at the end of chapter two, or, or at some part of chapter two, Hermione turns to Harry and goes, wait, where's Ron? Like in New York? Like they're watching the news, and then Hermione turns to Harry and goes, "I think that's where Ron is." I'm a detective. <laughs> I, I, I don't <laughs> remember. Like, that's the th- what everyone was doing on 9/11. Yeah, was like, that's fair, oh, yeah. fuck, where is my loved so one? So 9/11 has to happen next chapter. Then okay, yeah, it has to. It, it has to happen soon. We've already. We're not even. We haven't even passed the threshold. Which I guess the threshold is 9/11. Well, the threshold was, I guess, getting on the plane. On the plane to the New York. Okay. Yeah. This is wild. Yeah. This is a wild fucking. All right. Yeah, I don't want to think about this anymore. Ads. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Welcome to the ad break. Welcome. Hey, are you enjoying this podcast so far? I know I am. Then you better like, comment, subscribe, hit the gosh darn bell, raise five stars on Apple and Spotify podcasts. Yeah. And check us out on our monetizable platforms. First place. <laughs> I don't know. That was a weird way to say it. <laughs> uh, go to straightforcoffee.com and buy our coffee line. We have two different flavors. One for me, one for Sarah. Sarah's Chaos Blend is a dark roast chocolate cream flavored Colombian bean. And I have a yeah. light to medium roast Sorry. morning blend. I don't know if you wanted me to say. No, you're good. You're fine. Okay. Uh, and I, yeah, I have a morning blend. It is, uh, it is a Brazilian bean with a caramel flavoring and mm. it is light to medium roast. Nice. And it's delicious. Buy it. It is uh, 16, no, $18 for one. 16 for one bag. 16 for one, 28 for two. I always forget that. Yeah. Every time. But go to straightforcoffee.com to buy it. If you want to buy us coffee, go to buy us a co- buy me a coffee.com forward slash ABWSTR. True. And you will read what you have to say on the podcast as long as it's not bad. As long as it's not bad. Not bad. Carly, she, her, bought a coffee. Thank you. Oh my gosh. Thank you. 
Hey, Josh and Sarah, I just wanted to wish you all a happy holiday season. And it's a heart emoticon. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Happy holidays as well. Happy belated holidays. It is very... Yes. I'm wearing we're very Christmas late. hat, though, yeah. so that it's kind of... Happy it's Happy New Year, at least. Happy yeah, New happy Year. New Year. B. Donnellan bought five coffees. I hope I said that correct. Sorry. Yeah. Thank you for the five coffees. Thank you so much. Howdy, howdy. Just wanted to give you guys a little extra. Tis the season and all that. Holiday season and always means I'm busy painting my life away, so I've been listening to your older episodes to keep nice. me entertained while I do work. That does mean that you're responsible for a bunch of mistakes because I keep trying to paint through the laughter. Aww. I really love listening to you guys and your interactions. You bring me so much joy and a lot of other people as well. Aww. I hope you have a happy and a relatively stress-free holiday season. Mm, thank and you. And it's also a hard emoticon. Thank you very much. It's been nice. We've yeah. just have been watching Dimension 20. Yeah, we're watching The Unsleeping City. We're almost done with it, too. I know. We're I'm almost so there. Gonna finish that shit finish probably that tomorrow shit. into the probably new year. Into the Oh, yeah. Dude, because it's the new year. It's, it's and, the new year. Yeah, the end. They do a big thing on new year's eve yeah, yeah. so that makes sense wow That'd that'd be be, nice. that would be nice yeah yeah <laughs> hell yeah fucking yeah but thank you very much for those coffees thank you yeah mars derm about three coffees thank you and there's a uh there's no message but there's a cute dog picture so thank you very oh my much gosh, for that thank can i see the dog yeah i got you i haven't seen him yet it's uh it's on the their profile picture oh that is a cute dog cute dog cute doggo thank you cat bought a coffee thank you thank you Hey, besties. I've been watching the podcast for quite a while, but this is my first coffee as I am poor. Lol. That's Perfectly okay. fine. I that get it. Yeah. Money's fine. tight everywhere. I get yeah, it. For yeah, for sure. A lot of wealth redistribution needs to happen so I can get more coffees. <laughs> yes, exactly. I need the I need Tesla to start paying some taxes so you guys get money to give to we me. We need universal basic income so yes. you can spend but it on, on us. our coffee. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah no. But no, I understand. You're good. Don't worry. Yeah. I recently went back to college to finish my undergraduate degree, and I'm hoping to go to law school afterwards to advocate for the queer minority communities in yes, my home state bitch. of Alabama. Fucking oh, good luck. Yes, Hell yeah. Bitch. You Do fucking it. Fucking awesome. I live about an hour from campus. My schedule this fall was funky, so I spent 13 hours on campus every Tuesday. Your podcast kept me sane with such a terrible schedule, and I finished the semesters with all A's, oh, and I yeah. gave a speech at, a, at an MLA conference in November. Oh. Fuck yeah, dog. MLA is in the way teachers in high school f- made you format your essays a little. Hell, I get cool. that. Cool. You guys have encouraged me as a 25-year-old starting back as a sophomore, and Sarah, I finally cut my abusive mom off after mistakenly giving her a second chance. Nice. Lesson learned. That's Sorry okay. for the long message. I hope that everyone has a lovely, lovely end of the year, and remember that it's never too late to start over. Love from a alternative lesbian in the deep south, and Fuck it's a yeah. smiley face emoticon. Thank you so much. Congrats, Fucking congrats, too. dude. Hell yeah, you're doing so good. Fucking killing it. Yeah. God bless. I'm happy that this podcast is a like way for people to like be able to focus on what like they need to do and like give them entertainment. You know. Yeah. Especially if you're doing like important fucking work, like if you're oh, going to law school, yeah, My fucking God. good fucking job, and I the wish you all the best. The people need the content, you know. Yeah, they need the content. That's all I want to be. I want to make content that is just fine, <laughs> just fine, yeah, just fine enough that it gets people through the day, it gets through the day, yeah. and you actually do important things. Because <laughs> yeah. we're not, <laughs> we're not doing that. We're not, yeah. But you can do, you, you can do, do that. You do the important stuff. You do that, please. Yeah, please, please. <laughs> Danny Fenton bought four coffees. Thank you. Thank you, you so thank much. You for the, you, I, they did the Taylor Swift song. I oh, remember. yes. Yeah. Yes, I, re- I remember reading this. Hello again. I love you guys so much. I can't thank you enough for always making your podcast such a fun, safe, and welcoming space for your listeners. Absolutely. Truly. Last week when I wrote in about the Taylor Swift song, I immediately regretted listening, letting my sexual interest in a pop star billionaire win. No, and even okay. hearing my words read out loud made me cringe because sometimes with the way I type or speak, I'm just like, damn. Now that's <laughs> what I call autism. <laughs> I this love is great. That, this is great. That's yeah. great. But y'all are generally so nice and rad, and honestly, the way you treat your listeners is one of the main reasons I've been around since late 2021. Oh. So many podcasters are ambivalent or downright mean toward their listeners when they write in, and it super bums me out. You're right. But I can tell y'all are genuinely so grateful and enthusiastic about every message you receive, and you may meet people with kind and excitable energy. No. Oh. Even when people step out of line, y'all do a great job at establishing boundaries in a respectful way. I appreciate it so much. You guys are so fuck. You you're so fucking dope. Thank you. Love you, free Palestine, free Palestine. Hell yeah, free Palestine. Also, P.S., yes, I totally agree with your takes on Taylor Swift, the yeah. capitalist machines, and I've been a part of the hashtag Swifties for Palestine push for Taylor to sign the artist for ceasefire letter yeah. and pull her movie from Israeli theaters. Yeah. I'm mad at her every single day from a, for an endless list of capitalism things, and that's the sad reality of enjoying mass-produced media in the year 2023. Honestly, Rip. so true. Yeah, no, That's I how I it. feel about Beyonce right now. Like, yeah. I, I'm not a big Taylor Swift person. But I will say, there's some Taylor Swift songs that I'm like, I was just listening, I was gardening yesterday, yeah. and I was listening to, um, and everyone's going to clown on me, but Betty from Folklore, 
it's like a lot of people were like betty's the worst song on folklore oh because folklore is all about like there's a bunch of different like characters mm. and so um i think one of them is james and he's it's basically like a very dramatic reading of like a bunch of teenagers Mm. who are like betraying each other for whatever interesting and um i don't know too much about folklore i haven't listened to the whole thing but i betty for some reason it's about james the kid being like i am in love with betty and i f- i cheated on her basically or i oh. betrayed her and now i'm showing up at you know her birthday party or whatever to like beg for forgiveness and it is so emotional and so intense. And it's also such a beat where like, and I'm sorry to go off on yeah, this, no, it's like, yeah. <laughs> but like, it's such a beat where like, you realize he's fucking 17 and that's it. He's just like a kid and Jesus. he fucked up and all of this emotional turmoil that's going on in, from Betty's perspective or Inez or whatever. It's just, it makes me cry every time I listen to it. Mm. Jesus, man. Yeah, Damn. I don't know why. It just gets to me. But I, so I totally, I'm not like a big Taylor Swift fan, but she has also pulled this big reaction out of me. Yeah, no, I think she's a good artist. Yeah, yeah, I think, yeah. absolutely. And so I totally feel you. I'm yeah. very disappointed by everyone that isn't, yeah, speaking out about it. <laughs> about Palestine, even though they absolutely could and could, like Selena Gomez too. Oh, yeah, 100%. She yeah, should she's be on the, that, She's yeah. like the number one Instagrammer right now. And yeah, she's like, doing, I don't fucking think I, it no, would no, matter. Nothing, yeah, nothing like, matters when I do fucking it. Yeah, 11 fucking, million followers. That's so crazy. Yeah, you could, you could influence a couple people. Yeah. You're a fucking influencer. Do it. You do your job for good. That's wild. Yeah. Uh, last last sentence. Okay, bye. I love you. <laughs> <Part of my laughs> okay, con. I love you too. Bye. Yeah. That's, yeah. <laughs> But don't feel bad. I totally feel you. Yeah, don't feel bad at all. You're don't good. feel bad at all. Andy, she, they bought two coffees. Thank you. Thank you, Andy. Hey, hey, my birthday was yesterday. I wanted to share some of the monetary love I got with the spot. Monetary in uh, parentheses, by the way. Nice. Uh, uh, y'all make my week, uh, uh, was it? Y'all make my leaf every, uh, y'all make my week every week, and I'm grateful to you both. Keep doing what you do. Also, after those episodes about your apartment issues, I just want to let you tell you and listeners that if you're a renter in the state, in the states, it's time to join a local tenants union. So true. Let's build tower and power together in 2024. Heart emoji. Happy holidays. Fucking, that's good. That's yeah. a good. That's a good vibe. Yeah. Fucking renters union is a good idea. Yeah. Fuck yeah. Tenant union. Yeah. How do you do that? I have no clue. I'm gonna have to look into that. Yeah, we should. Tell us in the comments down below how to join a tenant union, please. Yeah. Do that. I can't. I can't be fucked to do work. I'll Google it. Yeah, you can Google. <laughs> yeah, fuck you it. know, whatever. What's Google? I won't do it right <laughs> now, so I seem like I know what I'm talking about. Yeah, exactly. That's fair. Yeah, but yeah, God, but yeah, thank you for that. Fucking appreciate that. Thank you so that. much. Yeah, uh, little chunk. She her bought three coffees. Thank you. That's my rap name, little chunk. Little chunk. What's up, dudes? I wanted to share my. Oh, uh, one of my ah ah. What's up, dudes? I wanted my first coffee to be fun and serious, but serious things just happened. Oh. I was listening to your older podcast when one story felt like you guys were speaking directly to me. Mm. Episode number 103, two listeners, two stories, Lamau, good one, Josh. <laughs> Thank you. Nice. It was about a person my age terminating their four to five week pregnancy at the same time of year as me and struggling with the same feelings that I'm having now. Right. I just needed you both to know that what you said really helped change the way I think about myself and the situation as a whole. Hmm. If you don't remember it, I really suggest listening to it and giving yourself pats on the back. That was some good ass advice. Hashtag solved it. P.S. Thank you for giving me a giggle on my way to my shitty job. Nice. I don't remember Thanks. what I said. I, I'm not going to listen to it either because um, I'm going to cringe at whatever I say. Yeah, anything I say back in 2021 I, was... Uh, was uh, I assume it was golden, whatever it was. Guys, I got to tell you guys, from the perspective of me as a podcaster, I, forget I can barely everything, everything I say, I say yeah. immediately after. And then I edit it and I'm like... God damn, I said I that said shit. I said that. Oh, I'm stupid. Fuck. Dumb. Ah, uh, post it. Uh, I yes, don't, uh, uh, we, post this is my it. job, I guess. Fuck. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. So, but I mean, thank you very much. I'm glad that Thanks the advice so much. Uh, spoke out to you. I'm glad, honestly. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I was listening to your older podcast, and uh, you guys said that age gaps are awesome, actually. And I'm kind of like confused, <laughs> terrified of that message because then I'm going to be like, how are they? Are you still up? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> are they like, still fuck, they're up? all, yeah. Oh, fuck. God, but no, no fucking, uh, thank you very much. I'm happy. Shit. Yeah. No, yeah, I feel you. Yeah. Yeah. I also just realized that, uh, I said earlier in this podcast that I want to try to be kinder, and then I read a 9 11 fan fiction. <laughs> so if that isn't the dichotomy of me. Yeah. It's, you know, yeah. 
I want to be nice and I just can't. You can't I do can't. it. Physically impossible. I can't do it. I genuinely, my yeah, intentions are. Yeah, we're about to go into the fucking Reddit segment. Yeah, yeah. and I'm going to shit on kindest. a lot of people. Yeah, we, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I just, yeah, Sarah, yeah, yeah. In my personal life, I want to be nice. But not on the internet. Fuck you guys. <laughs> Fuck my fucking dick. Me my name's nice. Sarah Heron. Me being nice on the internet is me being not on the internet. Yeah. That's what it is. <laughs> Refraining. Restraint. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. Thank you very much for those coffees. We really appreciate Thank you. all of you guys. We love all of you. Uh, check out our Patreon. It's one, three, five, and ten dollars a month. <laughs> yeah. Uh, one and three, you can get a week long free subscription just to see if you want it. True. And you can also get all those at 10% off if you get a yearly subscription. There's mm -hmm. uh, Sarah's solo podcast for the time being until it goes live to everybody, but those get, episodes won't go out to everybody. Yeah. We get gaming episodes early. You get the fireside chat. I'm going to, in the new year, really work hard to do that yeah. every week because I've been, I've been failing. And also, uh, we've just finished Unhinged, which is our reading yes. of uh, the book by. Fucking what's her uh, name? Vera Valentine. Vera Valentine. It's yeah. very good. It's about a woman who fucks a door. Thumbs up. And, and yeah, um, I think we're gonna bring something back in the new year eventually. Yeah, Matt Damon. Yeah, I, now that the strike's been over for a little bit, and, and it seems the, like it's, it's gonna the, be like the thing went through, didn't it? I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we'll double check, but if I'm not mistaken, I'm we pretty should be sure good. I haven't heard anything about it. Yeah. So, but yeah, we're gonna try and bring that yeah. back so that we get more content for you guys. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I think that's everything. Yep. Uh, go check out all the Palestine links down in the description down below. Mm -hmm. uh, free Palestine. Back to the show. Yeah. All right. All right. Fucking first Reddit reading. Let's go. Of the year, dude. I was going to do the regular like, uh, you know, my husband wants to leave uh, me with the kids kind of shit. Yeah. Um, fuck are that. You trying to, are you trying to do like a new, are you trying to like bring in new vibes to this year? Uh, no. Oh, <laughs> no. okay. I just was like, fuck that shit. That's the regular shit. So you want to spice it up is I what I'm hearing. Spice you want to spice up. it up in the new year? Great, because I'm doing... You guys know me. Yeah. Why would I change what's working so fucking well for us? Yeah, I know you will. That's why mine are going to get increasingly wacky. And yours are going to stay whatever. <laughs> stay in hell. Yeah. Okay, cool. All right, but yeah, let's fucking go, dude. Let's fucking go, dude. Am I the asshole for insisting my sister buy my son a new PlayStation? Oh, uh, okay. My 10-year-old son got a PlayStation for Christmas. My four-year-old nephew stuck a piece of ham in the disc part. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> what? 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 This, Why? This little kid is a gay Oz gremlin. Yeah. <laughs> so my four-year-old nephew stuck a piece of ham in the disc port and tried to turn it on. He also dropped a controller on the hard floor, damaging it very slightly. The PlayStation is okay, but I'd rather my sister buy my son a new one and take this one. Wait, what? So the, <laughs> the PlayStation was a gift for... OP's 10 year old son. Oh, okay. Yeah. But so the sister let, like, just let the, their four year old just ruined the gift before that they could give it to the I son. I want to dunk it in a bathtub real quick. <laughs> and then the sister's like, here you go. Yeah. And uh, now OP is like, what the fuck? Yeah. That's why. Okay. All right. Now he has to play with a hammed up <laughs> PlayStation. I mean, I guess it still works. <coughs> But like yeah. that's still wild that like that happened. Yeah, yeah, it's kind of crazy. So the PlayStation is okay, but I'd rather my sister buy my son a new one and take this one. My sister said I was being ridiculous and that this one is still fine. I told my sister unless she buys it, I'm not having them over again. Ooh. So yeah, that's it. That's the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't even know. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> What do you think, bitch? Uh, yes, yes or no, motherfucker. <laughs> that's interesting that that's catching me up on the sense that there's like no information. It's just like a one-time thing. Yeah. When I'm so used to like these intricate fucking <laughs> stories. Yeah. yeah. Like the, you've you've realized uh, the only way to trip me up is to go around the system and be like ham PlayStation. <laughs> let's ham. go. Put a ham in a piece of PlayStation. I, I mean, I guess if the PlayStation, PlayStation still works, who gives a shit? So I'm mean, a little yeah, bit like, like but okay. also it is disrespecting your property, I guess. Of like, or like, you know, you got this gift for your like your your son. Kinda, I feel like it's a little disrespectful. It's very disrespectful. Like, I'll agree with I mean, that. I don't know. Maybe it's just like I've been realizing I've been raised with like 
weird manners lately. Like, yeah. I feel like that's just not polite. No, it's not polite at all. No, <laughs> to give a gift that's like fucked up, you know? Yeah, and like even if it still works, it's like I mean, okay, you still got messed up, and also like I, I part of me is also kind of like, okay, hold on, you he thought the... he was getting a new PlayStation, instead he got one that's got a piece of ham in it. <laughs> That's crazy. You're gonna okay. I wonder. Yeah, that's wild. That like you know, that's pretty insane. Yeah. Okay. So the, the top comment is all these you're the asshole votes are killing me. So apparently people on Reddit think she's an asshole for wanting a nice the PlayStation new. for her son. I yeah. Okay. Uh, not the asshole. Sony won't honor the warranty if something goes wrong in two weeks and they open it up and see ham juice leaked every somewhere in there. I guess, yeah, there's yeah. ham juice. Yeah, that, okay, yeah, you're right. Because it is it is liquidy a little bit. Yeah, that's, that that's is fair. Your sister should have been supervising her child. When my kid was that age, I watched him like a hawk because four-year-olds do four-year-old things and I knew it was my responsibility to replace anything he damaged. All of that being said, you shouldn't be telling your sister the nephew can't come back until the PS5 is replaced. You should be telling her the nephew can't come back until she will keep an eye on him enough to ensure... He isn't damaging things in your home. The kid was unattended long enough to get some ham, take it to the console, get the console open, insert the ham, push some buttons, then wing a controller. That's not an accidental spill. That's your sister ignoring her kid that then voided the warranty on a $500 console. I think that's a mature that way. That is fair. To, that's a mature way of doing it. it. I will say the one thing that's kind of throwing me off is the our PlayStation 5 controllers just like breaking if you drop them on a hard floor because i you said slightly broken okay slightly okay that might be possible I'm like okay that does seem more in the wrong possibility that being said i have put my playstation 4 controllers through a lot through of the shit. ringer yeah and they, yeah. they're fine it but might, i wonder yeah. if the playstation 5 is like more delicate or something honestly maybe if it's a newer console i kind of feel like they the newer shit that they make is more, more fragile. fragile and then they can sell more when you break yeah. it yeah i mean that's fair and i think that is a little that's shitty on the part of playstation yeah so you might be thinking listener viewer joshua here the reason that Sarah chose this story was because it's funny to think of a four-year-old <laughs> fucking up a PlayStation, right? <laughs> With a piece of ham. That's funny, right? No, my my thinking is, what the fuck was that story? What, what What's the twist here? <laughs> right. There I'm wondering what the twist is, because okay. you can't just leave <laughs> me hanging on a fucking... So there's a comment underneath the top comment that I want to read. <laughs> That is the real reason I wanted to read this whole story to you all. To you all. I wanted to bring this to you all. <laughs> it's like punked, but for Reddit stories where it's like, I don't give a fuck what this <laughs> this, this original post was. The story. This story's fucking lame. However, okay, this me, comment goes hard. You gotta let me read this all the way through. You have to let fucking, me read this all the way through. That's impossible for me. <laughs> it's gonna take like 10 seconds. I okay, alright, okay. Okay. Damn. <laughs> Sony needs to sponsor this comment because dude knows their PS5. I don't care if you agree or not. Y'all need to upvote this mofo for them just summarizing the user manual in one paragraph. Three laughing, crying emojis. Even calling the final solution is right. The final solution? Wait, oh, what? <laughs> no, I mean like the solution to the situation. Even calling the final solution is right. OP is being an ass for blocking his nephew. This is all on the mom and the solution tells her what she needs to do without giving her room to play victim or escape responsibility. Props player, parentheses, literally, exclamation point, and then three clapping emojis. So that's what <laughs> I wanted to actually read. <laughs> Damn, <laughs> this man knows his PS5. <laughs> he just said that the warranty wouldn't be would be voided because of the ham to juice. The whole this motherfucker knows the, like, the whole <laughs> manual. Are we so flow Antonioing Reddit comments now? Holy shit! Did we do this? This is literally. Did we? Do did this? we no, we didn't fucking do this. People are reacting in text format to Reddit comments. Well, I that's why it can't be. That's why it can't be us because they're reacting to Reddit comments. I don't fucking. They don't ever react to Reddit comments. We just did. We <laughs> just are. Shush. shush. Right <laughs> now. <laughs> shush. 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 Shut the fuck up. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Okay. So fucking. Um. I did. Okay. This no. Man I, knows no. We didn't. No. His okay. User no. User manual. 
Because he said to put it a no, piece okay. of ham. You want to know, know why it's fucking not us? Because I would never fucking say that. What? No, of course not. I wouldn't say that. Yeah. But I mean, you know, someone out there that's like, oh, I want to not work anymore. I want to make a podcast. I'll make a Reddit podcast. They're just, you know, they want to. <laughs> They're getting there. Is this the like prepping the of it? Like, have the have found the Reddit. <laughs> they found Reddit and they're infiltrating Reddit. The fucking Facebook reaction content people are in Reddit comments now. I wonder, okay. It's like zombies breaching containment. (laughs) I don't, uh, did we do this? What do you mean? I don't don't think we did. I don't think we did this. No, I don't think we caused that. I think we did. No, I don't think so. I think we caused this for sure. No, not at all. Not, I respect our audience to not do this. (laughs) I, I mean. You know how we say the TikTok audience is not our audience? You're okay, you're not wrong about that. <laughs> but that's different. Yeah. That's a different shut up. That's a different thing. <laughs> oh my god. Someone said uh on TikTok, and I think it's really funny. Um also wait, we let's, let's actually respond. Yeah, let's Reddit respond. Post. Okay, so real quick okay, we yeah, yeah. more before we self-aggrandize for a second. No, fucking, How does uh, the kid feel? That's what I think. Yeah, because, like, I mean... You know, the kid was disappointed that he didn't get a brand new thing. I think it depends. If the sister is like, no, fuck that, I'm just never coming over, I think it could be turned into, like, a... Like, a, hey, you know... <laughs> I don't know, I'm not a parent, so it's hard, but, This is like, really... Yeah, this is also... This is also relatively <laughs> low stakes, but also, like, yeah, I do think... I, I can tell you what I would do, which is... My sister is like, I'm not buying a new one. That's your one. You get that. And I was like, okay, fine. So then I go to my son and I'm like, you know, sometimes life hands you lemons. <laughs> so I think I would do, I would be like, So you like, try to hey, find the lesson in here? You try yeah, to. I try to really full house it and try to just get to the lesson of like, hey, listen, sometimes I, you don't get new things. You get used things. Yeah. And I, sometimes used means that your four year old cousin. Put, Stuck a, put a piece of ham in your PlayStation 5. Does it, if it stops working, I will buy you a new PlayStation 5. I guess that's fair. Yeah, but that's, that is kind and of like. And then sue your sister for $500. Yeah, because, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. I, yeah, I feel like, um, yeah, I will say not the asshole. I am changed around. I was like, uh, it's a little, but also like, yeah, no, you could actually fuck up an expensive piece of yeah. tech. With a piece of ham. With just a piece of ham, yeah. Like, yeah, that actually For makes sure. a lot more sense. I think, I mean, because the, the only other thing I think of is, like, is getting a new PlayStation 5 for my son... Impossible. Is it, well, no, or, is it uh, teaching him that he only deserves new nice things? Yeah, and I feel like that is kind of a bad lesson, especially, like, if, if you want to be, like, a consumerist, yeah, I just buy new things. But then also I think I'm kind of overthinking it because part of me is, like, I mean, that's sometimes that's the only thing that people remember about Christmas is the year I got an Xbox or the year yeah. I got a game. I remember the one I got a PlayStation Three. You know, Fucking, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And and that was only because we had a trip that went through. Like yeah, we did not have that. any money at that point. Yeah, it was yeah. a hurricane. You guys had to not go, right? Or a snowstorm. A snowstorm yeah, storm, a snowstorm something. in New York. We were supposed to go to New York. And uh, you stayed there. Instead, they bought you a PS Three with the money that they would have had. Yeah, for the trip for the refund. Yeah, yeah. So. Um, but yeah, I think, you know, sometimes that's the kid's best memory and it's like, well, it's Christmas, you know, fuck it. Yeah. You don't want to ruin Christmas, I guess. Right. Yeah, like, that's the... going to be the holiday you celebrate. Does the kid not even know that he was going to get a new one? Would he yeah. be happy with a used one? How is, yeah, I guess there really isn't enough information, honestly. Yeah. I think that, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I don't know. I guess, yeah, probably not. I, I I'm going to say not the asshole. I think, yeah, I think, yeah, I I would be upset at the sister, too, and also at the, yeah. yeah. I I mean, yeah, I think, I mean, I don't know what it's like to have a four-year-old if it's difficult to watch over them. No, yeah, but also... Kind of, I feel like, at least you should make sure that the PS5 isn't being played with... My thing is, why is the kid even playing with the PS5? Yeah, it's a little, I feel like even, that's pretty young to have, like, a full-blown game console. Well, I mean, like, so the kid... Played with the PS5 before you wrapped it up and brought it over to the house? Or was it, yes? Yeah, or was to be... it like they were both playing together and then the kid put a piece of ham yeah, in Yeah, that's not what's clear to me, I think. Because, yeah. yeah, I don't know exactly how. Because you should be watching your kid if you're at somebody else's house, right? Yes, 100%. And just, like, let your four-year-old run around. But also, yeah, you don't want to have, like, a police state in your house if it's inside your own house, because then the kid's going to think. But then why is the PS5 out and about? 
Yeah, that's true. And not put up with the gift, you know, mm. somewhere where the where the four year old can't find it. Put ham in it, yeah. Or the saying somewhere where the four year old can't find it is that like our parents like, ha, ah, four year olds get into everything. You know what I mean? No, yeah. So I don't know. So I don't know. Yeah. Damn, solved it. Solved it. What was the TikTok comment that you wanted to bring up? Hmm? You wanted to bring up a TikTok comment before we just went back to try and figure out the solution to this. Oh, it was about um. It was about the one where the the guy was like, "Am I the asshole for being honest?" And it's about him not washing his hands after eating nachos with oh, his date. Oh yeah. And we were like, "Damn, sensory <laughs> sensory overload king," you know. <laughs> and uh, we were making we weren't making fun of him, but we were saying like, "This guy feels very like neurodivergent because he's very like I have to be honest. I have to be honest. Yeah, no, yeah, I, think that's I can't fair. lie about this situation and blah blah blah." But also, I really don't like the sensory feeling of water on my hands. And so I was just kind of making that point, because if we had just dunked on that guy, a lot of neurodivergent people in our audience would be like, What the fuck? Yeah, it know, seems like this guy I, could he be... He seems neurodivergent. Yeah. It is still shitty to not wash your hands, but like... It's, you shouldn't go after someone for like, being... Yeah. Yeah. I get what you mean. So someone stole that. It was on a stolen one. Yay. And so the people were like, why are they on his side? <laughs> because we called him because, because we pointed out that he might be neurodivergent. Wow! All of a sudden, how, we're how on dare his us side. Be honest. How dare us point out possibilities? <laughs> and I don't know if it's we're on his side. Like, how dare they be on his side? The man who didn't wash his hands because that's the worst crime imaginable. Yeah, that's the worst it one. Is Death bad. penalty is bad. I will you say you should wash your hands, especially after you know, or have some sort of way to clean off your hands after you go to the bathroom, especially if you're sharing food. Yes. You should clean your hands. I'm not saying don't clean your hands. I'm just saying some of the stories we read are I left my wife for three weeks in Hawaii. Let's have a few wacky ones. You know, Let's sometimes wacky ones. it's a smaller, but it it is it it is bad. And so to be on his side it's is pretty so wild. funny. Yeah. And I don't know if it's that because of the neurodivergent thing or because he's a man. And <laughs> Side with a fucking man for a we second. Hate men. <laughs> yeah, wait, this is left field. <laughs> God. Oh. <laughs> fucking that's funny as shit. Oh man. All right. I didn't pick any stories. Okay. It's over. Goodbye. So thank you all for joining us. No, okay, I got some. Don't worry. Jesus. I was joking. Jesus. Okay. Fucking crap. Uh, you know, this one's <laughs> Do I do I start the, do I start with this one is the real question cuz I know which one the last one is I'm doing I have a really short one that's the last one I was going to do the ham one short but I really liked it I was That's fair now I these are these are all like my babies you know it's like which one yeah. do I give the spotlight to Yeah exactly you which know? one's the best yeah. which one's my favorite baby I I I think I'm going to start with this one mm -hmm. and Sarah, <laughs> when you write a story, oh yeah, okay. When you write a story, do you think it's important to, like, let's say, like, let's say it's like you want to drink some water, like you are right now? Damn, would okay. you call that? Can't a, do anything you, on the show. Would you call? What are you drinking out of? A water bottle. Okay, and there's water in it, right? You would say there's water in it. I would say there's water in my okay. water bottle. Cool. I just want to know. Are you saying like if I put if I drank all this and I put milk in it, would I call it a milk bottle? Or would you say there's milk in the bottle? There's milk in my water bottle. That's fine. That's okay. That that's cool. I just want to know. That's what I all would right? say. I just want to set that. I want to set the scene here because I'm pretty pedantic though. But that's it. But yeah. okay. All right. So, am I the asshole for refusing to replace my flatmate's shoes and skirt she ruined while doing a chore? What she is, ruined it. What is the water bottle in this scenario? No. I, 27 male, live with a flatmate, 26 female, who is also my friend. She was leaving to go see some friends and was dressed up and had some fancy clothes on. Okay. As she was leaving, she asked me if there's any rubbish to take out in my room as she was going to take out the rubbish and place it in the building communal bins on the way out. Okay. I was actually going to do this myself, but since she offered, I told her there's a bag of rubbish in my room and everything is already in the bag. She's done this for me before and knows that the bag can be somewhat heavy. She didn't support the bag at the bottom and it broke and some of the bottles inside the bag fell out and their caps burst. 
This made a really bad stench, and her skirt and shoes were drenched in it. Oh my god. She blamed me for it and said I owe her new shoes and a skirt, and she showed me what they were on the website, and while the skirt isn't too bad, the heels are ridiculously expensive. I refused and said she should have been a bit more careful. You're the one that fucking filled your your trash bag in your room with filled water bottles, or just regular glass bottles, I assume. She called me an asshole and said I shouldn't be having such bottles in the bin, even though she knew about that from before, and even though she's since cleaned the shoes and they look alright, she's knew acting I was more a piece cold of towards shit, me. You bitch. Sarah, what was the liquid? Was it piss? It was piss. But it, that's not mentioned in any, in any sentence. Oh, you think you're fucking sneaky, don't you, you little piss in a pi- bottle pisser? You oh, you think you think, you think that's sneaky? I refuse to. Okay, OP has offered the following explanation for why they think they might be the asshole. Okay, <laughs> I refuse to buy my flatmate new clothes after she got a bad smelling liquid on them. Oh my god! <laughs> when she was taking out a rubbish bag from my room, the gymnastics. <laughs> this might make me an asshole since it happened when she was helping me with a chore, even though she wasn't being careful. People are going to say this is fake, and they're right, because <laughs> who the fuck would not bring that up yeah, when you're this, explaining the fact it? That it's piss. <laughs> the fact that it's fucking piss. Also, it's glass bottles, glass, glass shards, shards and, and piss all yeah, over you? Yeah, I would be pissed off, too. I'd be pissed on. Isn't that <laughs> the way? Hey, yo, fuck. Oh, oh my God. Okay. And that's our show, everybody. Oh, Good night. Thank you, Cleveland. Okay. <laughs> If we were doing a live show and that was the story, I would just go into the audience to start high fiving everyone. I was just like, "We're done." That is, a th- you know, <laughs> yeah. we were talking earlier about jokes from The Office that were actually kind of funny. Yeah, that's a funny joke from uh, Thirty Rock where she's like high fiving a million angels. <laughs> yeah, God. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. So, <laughs> who's the asshole in that situation? So? I, geez, I don't know. Well, have you considered the fact that she was helping out and she was the one that spilled it all over herself, even so, though I pissed in the water bottles? <laughs> keeping a big ass trash bag in your room, A, it's filled that with piss. will break, filled with bottles, filled with piss, your own You can't piss. even walk to the bathroom <laughs> to piss. And you're, wait, hold on, real quick. I, I'm oh going to do God. a little bit of age shaming and, you know, it's fine, guys. 27. Yeah, it's too old. That's, I don't. I don't know why every guy, Mm -hmm. not every guy, some guys, me, (laughs) fucking have a phase like in their teen years. And this is the important thing, the teen years of like, I'm too busy playing Grand Theft Auto. I'm going to piss in this water bottle. I was, I grew up with brothers. I don't remember that, but I do think it maybe was like cleaned up. When I was in the room, like I wasn't allowed. Or- I will say, yeah, I never like, yeah, just kept it around in a bag. Yeah, you don't really, yeah. There's, a clean- I'm positive I- that my brothers did that though. I maybe not when we were all living together as a family, but maybe when they went to college and had their own rooms and stuff. Uh, yeah, you're like, and then they'd clean it up for like Thanksgiving and Christmas and stuff. Yeah, but yeah, I do. I think. That is one of those things where it's like, it's a but dude like, thing. Having that... Like, you kind of expect it. When you're 20, At least like, I do, because I grew up with dudes. No, but, yeah. But, like, yeah. the idea that, like, you don't grow out of it at some point, and you just That's keep crazy. doing it into your almost yeah. 30s. Dude, actually, you just, you just fucking unlocked uh, a thing that I've been thinking about lately that I think is so crazy. Oh, I was in school, yeah, and they were like, we're going to have, like, a mental health seminar or like talk i was in high school and so we were all sitting around and we were a bunch of people were friends so they were like joking around blah 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 waiting for the thing and this lady comes in and she this i remember her she was like rail thin red hair and she looked not like crazy but like kind of hippy dippy kind of situation she slams her hands on the fucking the front desks and everyone is like what the fuck yeah like what, what what's happened? up with this yeah. white lady what is she doing and um she slams her hands down and she starts talking about mental health and how important it is and she goes i she starts it off by being like there was a period of time in my life where i never got out of bed and we were like yeah, okay 
ma'am. We no one told us what was going on. Yeah, because there's a period of time in my life where I never got out of bed, and I was surrounded by jars filled with my own piss. And she just like tells that like really powerfully to everyone. We're like, oh my god. And she goes, yeah. And I had no idea what the fuck was going on in my life. It was like a kind of like come to Jesus moment, but none of us knew what the fuck was going on. Yeah, because it's like, why are you pissing in jars, ma'am? It was like, what? I will say, like, if you're like, yeah, depressed and like, maybe that's what's going on. But yeah, like, that's. And so now I look back on that. I'm like, that was just like a lady with depression. That yeah. wasn't her job. It, she wasn't a speaker. <laughs> She was like the friend of someone who worked at the school who had depression, who came in and told a bunch of teenagers that she had pissed in a bunch of jars at one point in her life. <laughs> That's really... It's just such a wild scenario. Yeah. <laughs> it's just like you know, a, I, re okay. I remember this too. This is... Okay, That's this crazy. is bringing up... This is a new memory unlocked okay. as well. Oh my god. Uh, fucking... I, I read a little bit of the Tina Fey memoir, Bossy Pants. Oh yeah. She has a chapter in that book and I now I'm wondering... How widespread is it to piss in objects? Yeah, because I'm like, I want to say it's a dude thing because of the penis, right? But, the, but the, it could no, yeah, like if it's a, if it's yeah, fucking okay. So who knows? I when guess. she when she was apparently working or writing for one show, apparently it was common that dudes would piss in water bottles at their desks so they wouldn't waste time walking to the bathroom. Jesus Christ, And man. Yeah, and this is like, these are also adults as well. Like, this is like when she's at, like, 30 Rock. Like, not even, like, doing the show, but, like, literally 30 Rockefeller Center. <laughs> is that, like, an old thing? Like, are kids know. gonna watch this and be like, what the fuck are you I talking don't know. about? I don't fucking know. I don't know either, because, I mean, you say it, and I'm like, yeah, I've heard a lot about pissing in jars and Gatorade bottles, specifically. Because I think she said that she also would start pissing in jars to fit in with the guys. How weird is that? Is that weird or not weird? I feel like it's okay. If it's not, maybe okay. I'm too internet pilled and I've just read a lot of stories about people yeah. pissing in jars, man. I just, I don't know, man. That's so crazy. That's weird. How, how deep, how uh, deep does this piss, piss conspiracy, conspiracy go? go? <laughs> Charlie at the board, but it's just <laughs> jars it's and piss. piss. Yeah. Instead of Pepe Sil yeah. uh, Sylvia. Piss say Sylvia. Yeah. yeah. This one I fully believe is fake. I will say this. I fully believe this is fake because I don't know how anyone could be this evil. But honestly, I've heard people say that before and people are like, no, this happened to me in real yeah, life also. No, that's fair. Yeah. So I'm saying it, but I also want to put in that I maybe it's fake. I don't yeah. know. Okay. Am I the asshole for telling my wife to stop bothering me while I'm reading the newspaper? <laughs> Bitches be yapping, you know what I'm saying? Bitches do be yapping. <laughs> <laughs> Bitches do be yapping. For Christmas this year, my dad gave me a yearly subscription to my local newspaper. This is an award-winning publication, and it often <laughs> features really interesting stories that I hadn't read because they were behind a paywall. Play, Playboy. New York Times. <laughs> um, I was very pleased to have received the gift. The thing is, I work full time and need to start my day early, so I don't really have the time to read the paper deeply during the work week. It's on Saturdays and Sundays that I can dedicate as much time as I want to it. Well, earlier this morning, my wife and I were sitting in our living room, and she was in the mood to talk over our morning coffee. That fucking bitch. That fucker. Normally, this is fine, though she does tend to ramble on and on about stuff I don't always care about, but today it was getting pretty annoying. Furthermore, she seemed oblivious that my one or two word answers to her questions meant that I was trying to read and didn't really want to talk in that moment. So instead of fucking saying that shit, <laughs> I just got mad. <laughs> yeah. Finally, during one of her interruptions, I turned to her and said, can't you see that I'm trying to read the paper? What 50s era <laughs> what house this is doesn't this? This can't be. Suburban hellscape fucking, I go are to the fucking, fucking coal Dick mine. Van Dyke? What the yeah, fuck? Yeah. <laughs> like, what are you doing? She became offended and sort of got a surprised look on her face, but that quickly turned to anger. She tried to guilt trip me and tell me that we never catch up anymore. Fucking <laughs> bitch. Man, my wife saying that. God, <laughs> but, love my life. Fucking Jesus. nerd. But I reminded her that I am home every night after work, even though some days I work late, get caught in traffic. 
I hope you I hope you get run over in traffic. <laughs> yeah. At one time I worked a job that required extensive travel where I would be gone for weeks at a time. So I don't think she has any room to complain about my current work situation. Oh, because it's better now. So you should, then yeah, you should be appreciated. She, she you should appreciate it, you fucking bitch. Yeah. Nonetheless, <laughs> she wanted to make this difficult by refusing to let me read. Wow. Re- refusing. refusing. At this point, my wife is still upset with me and I don't know what to do. I'm considering locking myself in an empty room for a few hours because this seems to be the only way she won't disturb me. But even then, I could see how she would knock on the door every 10 to 15 minutes. I just need her to understand that what she's doing is essentially making my Christmas gift essentially worthless. But she doesn't seem to have any respect for my father's money at all. (laughs) Wow, Jesus. Daddy's money must be respected. (laughs) He's a banker. (laughs) I wish she works at Wall Street. (laughs) I wish she would apologize, but she clearly believes that I'm the one in the wrong. Am I the asshole? Yeah, if you're gonna be a dick about it, yeah, Yeah, just communicate that you want to read. Hey, can I read? Can I just read for a little bit? And then have time to communicate with the the person you married. Yeah, she wants to, dude. Having a uh, emotional connection with your partner, <laughs> fuck that. I want to read the New York Times. I it can't be New York Times. It literally can't. It's like I feel it can't like be. I feel like the that's, Washington Post. That seems more reasonable. <laughs> I wonder. I wonder what it is because, like, um, yeah, fucking. Uh, I really ah, I, it doesn't matter what it is because mm. the real issue here is fucking. Yeah. You don't want to be with your wife. My favorite thing is like, idea, like my also, wife is trying to connect with me and this guy's like, this is an award winning publication. <laughs> Greg Turkington, but for newspapers. For newspapers. Yeah, yeah, that's stupid. Jesus Christ. That's wild though that you just like, I, I wonder you know, here's the thing though, I totally believe it could be real. I Some know. boomer yeah. ass like like a retired, oh, well, not retired because you know, fucking he's, got he's a working. Dad. Yeah. His dad's still alive, so. But, like, you know, like, maybe even, like, 50s, 60s, like, early Gen Xer, I could totally yeah. believe. I just want to read the paper. Like my, like my papa. Like my papa, who, who runs McDonald's. <laughs> Franchise. Daddy's <laughs> the money. Down the street. Uh, like, God, like, the fucking, um, that's so wild. The, that's so funny that like she doesn't, doesn't respect, respect my, my daddy's, daddy's money mom. at all my, that's such a weird that's, I've never that was heard what of that made me feel like it was fake was like who the fuck says so that who gives a shit about their parents money if someone gives a shit about their parents money they're like I don't know there's someone trying to be an influencer or something right now yeah like yeah like so yeah who the fuck says daddy's money anymore <laughs> yeah i feel like that's a weird nepo like uh, uh, but no i also could it. so believe it like a hundred percent like who genuinely says you don't have any respect for my father's money i don't know <sighs> that's not but i kind of i wonder i don't want to believe that it's real i don't want to believe it's there. real either but also like if you told me oh yeah i know a rich motherfucker some snooty rich kid. Yeah, I don't really. It feels like it feels fake in that way. That's like a like a cartoon villain almost. Like, like I mean, uh, I don't know. We don't really run in like rich people circles. Oh fuck no! <laughs> Are you kidding me? No, that's insane. The richest people I see is when we go to Publix. <laughs> that's only once a year. Yeah, right. <laughs> now, um, but yeah. So I don't know if that's like people are saying that like you need to respect my father's money. Yeah, I don't. I don't know. I guess I'm hung up on it. I don't. That's why I don't think it's real. Yeah, but, but who knows? Maybe. Who knows? Yeah, but like I want. Yeah, who can truthfully tell? Also, like father's money, only like forty bucks probably for a year long subscription. Yeah, I mean it depends on what it is. I guess. Yeah, if it is like New York Times, I want to bet it's like you know maybe three digits, to- like max, right? But well, like, yeah, that's like any subscription. Yeah, like my fucking Mint Mobile, I could pay for a year and it's two hundred bucks. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's two hundred bucks. I mean, it's nothing to sneeze at, but no, it's not like at all. But yeah, fucking. You know, shit, man. I don't know. In the grand scheme of like all the other subscriptions, it's not a million too. dollars. Yeah, it's not. Yeah, and I'm like, give you diamonds, like fuck. Yeah, an emerald mine. <laughs> mm, it's not something that's more that's worth more than connecting with your wife. 
Yeah, exactly. And really, this is one of those things where it's like, you hate her, obviously. You hate her and you love the money more as well, yeah. And like, yeah. the idea that also that like, because you have a job that allows you to not commute, she should be grateful for. Yeah. Like, she should be fucking thankful about that. She should be thankful for me, my father's money, the and every, my, my presence. And she shouldn't, I yeah, she's only, she's an object yeah. That I yeah, and she and shouldn't I do speak. not want to. I, I I hate that she tries to talk to me about like things. Yeah, she should. She's only there to. Women are only seen, and not heard. You know what exactly. I mean? Exactly. Yeah. Jesus. Awful. Yeah. Awful. But I totally believe people still think that. Yeah. Even if the post is fake, I think there are some truth nuggets. I mean, I don't know. I genuinely think it's fake. But but fair enough. Fuck it. Am I the asshole for abusing? The unaccompanied minor program when traveling. Okay. <laughs> Need a sanity check. <laughs> the wife and I are in an absolute all-out argument about, about it, this. I don't want to get my into my job too much, but I'm a very successful pilot for a major airline. Okay. One of the best perks of my job is that we can fly standby on almost any airline or flight. So as long as there's a seat, I can get on for free. Oh. Cool. I met my wife while working, and while this isn't my first marriage, it's my first one where I have made children. Okay. okay. <laughs> Whoa. I made children. I made I children. Made yeah, I mean, yeah, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Just weird. I've never weird heard phrasing. it. Yeah. I, that I, made, I made this, but it's your kid. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I guess it's not like him saying I had children. Some people get pedantic about that. No, it's like, yeah, you but... didn't have the child. Your wife did. I guess he did make them, I guess. Like, like, I you gave know. half. I guess you did, yeah. I don't know. I just don't want to think about cum all the time, guys. Yeah. <laughs> just say you Cummies. had children. I don't need it. I don't need you to <laughs> think about making children. If children are still minors, they are able to travel under the protection of someone at, someone at the airport, get escorted to the flight, and then be seated and watched by a flight attendant working the flight. It's all very safe and regulated, and my wife should know this because she used to work as a flight attendant. She no longer works as her income was neg negligible compared to the cost of daycare, and her son has some special needs that require more attention. Okay. It was best for her to stay home with him. Okay. My son, John, is now 13 and the light of my life. He is one of the most extroverted people I know. He's never met a stranger. Traveling as an unaccompanied minor would be an exciting adventure for him. The issue is, when we travel together standby, we are not allowed to fly in first class with him. It isn't allowed until he is 18. One option would be to put him in economy while we fly in first, but I think this would almost be more confusing for him, and to be realistic, it could cause pro some problems as he may try to continuously come up to see us. My god. Okay. We leave in a few days for vacation, and the chances of getting first class are very good. My wife thinks we should all sit together in economy since John won't be allowed in first. We discussed one of us sitting in first only, but I think John will also be wanting to go up and see whichever Take parent is up there. Take care of your own kid. That's you said you made him. Yeah, take some ownership. Take some ownership of your <laughs> fucking child. Yeah. People that make art take more ownership of their creations than you do about yeah. About a living human being that you made. Yeah. <laughs> I can't even imagine this. I've never been on a plane. Yeah, and, and like then you go on it, and then you're alone. Yeah. Oh God. Yeah. Jesus. And like, I know people are like, I kid? did that when I was a kid. Like, some people do that, but like, I, it's different. Like, yeah. when, especially if you are neurodivergent and you're not. Well, the title is also abusing the unaccompanied minor system as well. Like, you know what you're doing is probably wrong, or it sounds like someone said that he is abusing it, and that's yeah. what he's, you know, he's trying to challenge. But like, okay, so. I don't know. I wouldn't put a fucking that's that's crazy. I think, especially if he's a kid that needs around the clock care. Yeah, and you're just like I'm just gonna let someone else. I'm just gonna him. fucking put him in the wherever. I gotta fly first, Sarah. Like he's a piece of luggage. He's a human being. Yeah. No. Yeah. Jesus Christ. Okay. We discussed one of us sitting in first only, but I think John will also be wanting to go up and see whichever parent is up there, and he can be very difficult to control when he wants his way. He doesn't like to hear no and will start throwing a very loud, very noticeable tantrum when he doesn't get his way. My proposal is to put John on a flight that leaves about 45 minutes before the flight we would take with first class seats. We would be there at the gate to load him up and hand him off. 
He arrives just before us and would be escorted by flight attendants and gate agents to meet us. This would give my wife and I a much needed break and would be exciting for John. If you knew him, you'd know he'd have a great time. He loves meeting new people and could talk, possibly talk forever if he didn't need to breathe. Send him to, mil- send him, send him to military school. Yeah, don't, yeah, you don't have to look at him ever again, actually. You can take you a want pretty a good break? break. You want a big break. Send him off. Yeah. Just fucking do that. I'm not, I'm not actually saying do that. I'm saying... That's yeah, the jokingly, same fucking yeah, thing. that's the logic you don't here. Yeah, actually, want to be around I'm a your kid, child. Actually, yeah. I mean, and I don't know what it's like to be a parent to these kids, but also, I mean, I know what it's like to be neurodivergent, and I can't imagine being thirteen. Hey, you're not flying with us. You're going on a different flight. And I mean, I've done that when I was a teen. I went on flights by myself, but like, I mean, I'm not. I, I'm not neurodivergent to the point where I need around the clock care. You know what I mean? No, yeah, exactly. Jesus Christ. Uh, he loves meeting new people and could possibly talk to for other if he didn't need to breathe. Whoever he sit, sits next to will get to hear about how much he is enjoying this adventure, etc. My wife thinks this is too complicated and, quote, not right. Yeah. We are at a standstill, but I think this is a solution where everyone is happy and we don't need to blow it out of proportion. <clears throat> TLDR. Nice summary. I don't want to be around my son. Am I the asshole for sending my son on a different flight than me as an unaccompanied minor that arrives at the same time, allowing my wife and I to fly in first class? Yeah, you don't need first class. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, I mean, I don't know. I it wouldn't be fun, but like, wait till he's eighteen. I don't know. Yeah. Why do you? Yeah. Why? Then you That's can't take the fucking wild, trip. I don't know. Dude, shit. how spoiled of a person are I you that you first can't class. fly economy? <laughs> that is kind of crazy. Yeah. yeah, that is pretty wild. Listen, I really... Listen, economy sucks. We all know that. It's fun. But it's also yeah, like, what? Actually, you know, I don't feel like I'm punching down. This man is saying he wants first class so he doesn't have to parent his child. Or be around his... Not even parenting. Supervise... This is very specifically a pilot that gets free flights and can fly anywhere. As long as there's a seat, he can... And he's feeling like... And he needs first class. He needs first class. He's a, he, he won't go first class or not first class. And the reason why the wife probably is not down is because she used to be a flight attendant and probably had to do these things that thinks, oh my God, I don't want to put have- all this work... On another person. That's not right. You know, I don't want to put my fucking child's needs also on some wa- other unwilling adult. And also on a different flight. Like, it's it's just a wild. It is, co- it is complicated where yeah. it's like, all right, you're going to go to this other fucking place and you're going to. Yeah, it doesn't make any. It would be different if he didn't need around the clock care. Yeah. If, if he, he was still neurodivergent, I would still be like, that's kind of fucking shitty. But it wouldn't be this bad. Like, you know what I mean? I just that's yeah. so wild. This is yeah. I I feel like you're saying I'm going to put the support that my son needs on a random individual. Uh, leave it up to chance. Yeah, that that individual is going to be as understanding and a good person and as accommodating as my wife, without knowing that they need to do this. Yeah, and then you're. <laughs> I have the full capabilities to stop this, and take responsibility for my own son. Also, my wife does all the care. Yeah, I so don't like, even do that. I don't do that at all. I still work as I, the pilot. Man, some people should not be parents straight up. Honestly, yeah, that is very That pisses me off a lot. I feel like yeah, if you go through with this plan, the amount of abandonment issues. Oh yeah, you have no that, idea like, what could happen. You could have a meltdown, he could have and that's debilitating as well. Yeah. That's not right. I don't know, man. It's fucking... Damn. I, That's fucked up. That's yeah, a fucked up shit that yeah. this guy is like, it's fine. It's totally good. I have to good. fly He's first class. He's so nice. Everything about it is really good. I know it's in a fucking environment that he has no idea what's going on. In an enclosed metal tube, 50,000 feet in the air. His ears are gonna pop. Yeah, oh my god. When I like, think about like taking babies on a plane, I know sometimes you can't stop taking babies on a plane. Oh no, yeah. And that's what like I you know people complaining about babies crying. It's like, okay, yeah, 
but their yeah, ears are popping. Crying, they don't they know what's annoying, going on. They don't on. know what's going on. Give a little bit of credit to the baby. And it's hard being a mom and having a crying baby on a plane. Yeah. Yeah, sometimes parents let their kids run around, whatever, and it fucking sucks ass, but yeah. like everyone has to fucking deal with it. You know what I mean? It sucks. It, it does sucks. Suck, it's yeah. a bad situation, but not everything that is bad needs to be taken away so you can be comfortable. Yeah. Sometimes you have to do things. Yeah, exactly. You can't just like make enough money so that you can never deal with things. You yeah, will still there's some have things to you're still going to have to deal with, with. Yeah, you still have to wake up in the morning and take a shit, you know. There's Elon only Musk so much. Elon Musk gets up and is still Elon Musk and he has to deal with being Elon, Elon Musk. Elon Musk. He can't make enough money to not be Elon he Musk. He will always can be and always will be yes. fucking uh, Elon Musk. Yeah. Steve Jobs, everyone, they still have to deal with Well, Steve Jobs doesn't wake up anymore, but Oh, is he dead? And yeah. he wakes up in hell and he has oh, to deal yeah, with that's that. Right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> who am I thinking about? Steve Wozniak? No. Is he dead too? I don't fucking know. <laughs> Shit. Uh huh. Microsoft. Bill Gates. Bill Gates. That's who you're thinking of. <laughs> Completely separate person. Wow. That's good though. At least you don't. Yeah, you don't. You, Just you don't old need to know white guys. I think they're all the same. It's they're fine. They're the same. But yeah, fucking. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I feel like I don't know. It's very. See, this is why we need more trains. Because that everyone. That's why you chose this one? No, I don't even remember why I chose okay. this one. If I'm being completely honest, yeah. I was just like, this Jesus pretty fucking hardcore, Christ. Yeah. yeah. I wonder, you know, I will say the smarmy. Everything will be fine. Everything will be fine. That always interests me, yeah. I think. In the and I think in the the Reddit canon of I'm trying to make myself look good. Yeah. And the idea that like my neurodivergent son, possibly neurodivergent son. I mean, it's said around l- around the clock care. It's yeah. kind of I'm assuming. And maybe that's something that I'm doing that's fucked up that I'm assuming. But like I let me see just real quick. Fucking uh, he said special needs and needs around the clock care. More attention. It was best for her to stay at home with him. Which usually to that, it means that they either, they can pay for a daycare, but if they send him to daycare or something like that, that it's going to be expensive because he has special needs. Yeah, so, yeah. Okay, so that might be what it was then, yeah. But then also being willfully obtuse about that and not saying what is going on. Is also like, yeah, you're very much like. Because I was 13 and I took a fucking plane by myself to go visit my dad, but like. I was a fully functioning. I was fully cognitively at least, developed. Yeah, like, and I had already been feeding myself for five years at that point. You know, it didn't fucking matter. It was fine. I could, I yeah, could do whatever. An airport, I didn't yeah. need anyone. I had been on a plane before. A yeah. So that was good. I had been on a plane with supervision before. And that's the thing. If the, there's no talk of like, is this the first time on a plane? Is it like you know? No. And that's another thing too, where it's like, are you really just gonna put? I'd be worried for, you know, a uh, neurotypical 13-year-old getting on a plane for the first time. I'd be like, do you know where and to go? And also by yourself, know. yeah. Yeah, yeah, by yourself, yeah. Jesus. That's what I mean. Yeah, no, but fucking, God, that's just wild. Yeah. Dude, I'm going to go to MCO. <laughs> right. I just go to a new airport now. For me, at 26, I'm like, oh, fuck. <laughs> I don't <laughs> like, know where oh, anything is. Fuck. Get, fuck. What if God. I get there? I get confused. <laughs> Do think I will that. say I definitely felt that I think maybe a little bit when we were at New Orleans. Yeah, that the New airport. Orleans yeah, because that was the first time I was ever at that airport. I was like, and that was a new airport too. We went yeah. to the new one in New Orleans. Yeah, so like, but it was pretty straightforward. It was at least straightforward. Yeah, yeah. It's not, MCO would be a nightmare for most MCO people. MCO is a nightmare. Yeah, solved it though. Solved it. Don't fucking neglect your goddamn kids. Yeah, take ownership of your own children that yeah. you made. Yes, I'm gonna reward myself for reading that story with a cookie. That we got for free because someone got our Uber Eats order wrong. Yeah. And so we just got a bunch of free groceries. Someone just dropped off their groceries and said that it was our Uber Eats order. When we were supposed to get firehouse subs. <laughs> oh, okay. So this one is about a TikTok trend that's going on. Ooh. That I don't know if you've heard about it. It's like a, it's poetry or something. It's the one where it's toothless dancing because I know that trend right now. That's <laughs> not my favorite one. Dancing. Why not? I know, I wish. Come on, that's the best one. So have Everyone you, can go home. Have you heard of the pomegranate thing? Um, I honestly haven't seen I, the original, but I know that 
the the context around it. Pomegranate does sound familiar. So they're saying it's a poem, I think, about like how like, you know, basically like you can open a pom- pomegranate delicately or you can open it like a like by holding both hands and turning it. Oh, shit. Which is okay. what a lot of people do. But I mean I don't do that. I just cut off the top and then I cut it into the segments because it it can just fall off with the segments. Yeah, because they're like little. It's like a it was like a like an orange slice. Oh, but they okay. Just, that makes sense. Know, if you just cut off the top and then you do that, it's fine and then it's yeah. easy to take the seeds out. But some dudes will just like and and it's not all dudes. It's people. People generally. So okay. So I'm assuming that there's a poem that's about a metaphor or something. That's it's a metaphor. metaphor for like men being, um, I guess, overly callous. Mm. when they don't have to be i don't know what the poem is i don't know if it's good or not whatever but that's what this is about that's what this fucking reddit thing is am i the asshole for telling my friend's new boyfriend why she broke up with her ex and causing an argument Ooh, okay i 20 female and my friend lucy 23 female have been drifting apart recently as she's become obsessed with tiktok poetry and letting it dictate her life and relationships (laughs) That damn TikTok fucking... <laughs> God, gosh, dang TikTok. The worst part was when she broke up with her boyfriend, Josh, 21 male. Oh my gosh, it's you! Huh. After he didn't open a pomegranate in a delicate way. Motherfucker, it's a pomegranate. <laughs> That's in here. All caps. God damn it, the worst person you know is me. I'm, I'm joking, <laughs> fucking... She came to me crying about it because Josh had called her deranged, and I told her I agree. Okay, well, that's a little harsh. I don't know. Uh, is it hard? I mean, I feel like... I mean, I don't know what the conversation between her and Josh was. If it's, I'm breaking up with you now because you, you ripped open a and pomegranate. And that was the only reason? I'd be and like... And then he was like, you're deranged. I, I wouldn't... Yeah. And then you'd say, no, you're pomegranate. <laughs> <laughs> Who's on first? Ah, yeah, got hey, him. No, okay. but fucking... Okay. She came to be crying about it because Josh had called her deranged, and I told her I agree. We didn't talk like we used to for a few months or so, until she told me she'd met someone on a dating app and wanted me to come have a few drinks with them on their first date. I said, sure. That seems weird. Why are you inviting someone yeah, else on your first date? don't bring people to your date. There was a story I wasn't going to do. Is that like do. a new thing? Is that... Apparently... Come there meet was, all my friends? There was another story where a guy was like, I'm going to bring all my friends to my first date with this lady. And she was freaked out by it because a bunch yeah, of dudes showed up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, actually, yeah. yeah I so would be I feel freaked like, yeah, out. it's kind of weird just having multiple people. I don't know. It's fucking, I don't know. I don't know if this is a trend or something, but. I, I, I didn't even think about that. I was thinking it's just disrespectful. I think it's disrespectful too, especially if you just want to get to know that person. If I stroll up to a date, regardless of the gender, and they had brought a bunch of their friends, I would think like they're going to make fun of me. And this is a fake date. Yeah, this is actually a, a bit. Yeah. yeah. Unless this is like literally a thruple, in which case I was like, there, oh, there should be more people. That's not what I signed up looking for. for it. Yeah. So, but okay. I, I guess know. this is what ha- this is what's happening. Um, this guy, Max 20s, seemed so nice. At one point, I asked what they were doing after this, and he said, if all goes well, they'd, they'd go back to her place. He then mentioned something about how she'd brought food to make a fruit and cheese plate and that she'd need his artist hands to cut the pomegranate. That's kind of funny. Wait, hold on. You do a pomegranate test with every person you're trying to date? That's what I'm saying. That's kind of funny. I think that's it's more... It's pretty funny. I mean, it's a 20s thing to do. But yeah. It's, this is now the time to do it. Yeah, exactly. To do Be these a little fucking things. crazy. Yeah. I'm not really on her side. Like... D- Overall, I think it's a little weird to judge an entire person based off of how they do one thing. Yeah, it's pretty close minded. I think there is, yeah, I think it's a little close minded. However, for the age, I'm like, for the yeah. age, it's like, yeah, I, I'm not, I would expect, yeah, 23 year old to do this. This is when you do Seinfeld shit. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Jerry, 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 how do you open Jerry, a pomegranate? He opens a pomegranate by breaking it with his bare by hands. snapping its neck. <laughs> by snapping its neck. How can you snap the neck? There's no (laughs) neck. (laughs) I said, oh, just so you know, the pomegranate is a test. If you want this to work, you'll be as gentle with the fruit as possible. She broke up with her ex over this test. He looked at me like I had two heads and asked if I was serious. I said yes. He said he knew she liked poetry and all, but, uh, but, and all that, but didn't know she was that intense about it. When she got back, everything went well until it was time for them to leave. Lucy called me a few hours later asking me what I said to Max. Apparently, he was cutting the fruit. He accidentally squished a grape and said, Oops, hope you don't break up with me, haha. And it caused an argument where he told Lucy I had warned him about the test. 
We got into an argument and I said, Lucy, if you want to base your relationships on shitty TikTok poetry, go ahead. But if but you will be hard pressed to find someone who fits all your weird expectations. She hung up and texted me some long paragraph about her past relationships and how this poetry is giving her boundaries, etc. And that I'm a bad friend for making fun of her. I've never made fun of her. Just pointed out that real life isn't poetry. Am I the asshole? So lots of people are saying not the asshole. I just got that she said that behind her back, and I was like, I would be, I would understand if Lucy's like, this is some sneaky shit. Yeah, but I would get that. But also, like, it is ridiculous. I don't know how do I. Yeah, I don't know. Huh. And I think also the the reason that I chose this mm. is not the pomegranate shit, but um, giving her boundaries. Right at the end, this pomegranate poetry is giving this 23 year old woman boundaries. Like, that's the part that I want to really hone into. You set your own boundaries. You know what I mean? Mm. Reading poetry and saying, that has given me a boundary now. I will take on this boundary, and this is a boundary that I must make because it's something I saw online on the internet is crazy. I, <sighs> and I don't mean to to say like the individual is crazy but like that's why we need people to like talk about what boundaries are like public mental health i will shit. say yeah there is kind of a weird if she thinks that this is actually genuinely helping her instead it's hurting her friendship relationships her boyfriend her relationship with her boyfriend her new relationships as well you know yeah huh i don't I, hmm. like a boundary needs to be a personal thing that you personally believe in does she actually believe in it or is she just like seeing this on tiktok and being like that's what i need to do and i'm not saying that you can't see that and be like no that is a boundary for me hmm. you know but also like the i the concept of a boundary has been diminished so much people don't know what boundaries are like at all <laughs> See, Any here's more? my okay, here's my thing. Here's okay. Yeah, go so ahead. I don't want to say not the asshole. I actually kind of am leaning a little bit you're the asshole. Because she talked behind her back? Well, no, not even that. Okay, because I, I have I you know, my bullshit meter's on. You know, it always is. Okay. And every story's written to make you look like the good guy. Mm -hmm. Let's be honest here. In everyone post, has a bias, yeah. Everyone has a bias. That post mentioned talking about previous boyfriends, and I'm curious. What didn't she didn't she say? So at the in the end? beginning, she had a boyfriend. She broke up with him because he he fucked up the pomegranate. No, okay. So I'm talking about in the when they had the argument where she brought up other boyfriends, past relationships, past relationships. I want to know what those relationships were like, because if they were like even remotely like this is my assumption is now going towards this person. This is a big assumption I'm making, and I'm putting it on them. Who the op or the person that the, the OP person that the op is talking to? Okay, the pomegranate lady. <laughs> yeah, pomegranate lady, right? Pomegranate lady. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I. Th what are the odds that like there's like an abusive boyfriend in there somewhere yeah, that's I like mean, yeah. physically violent? You know. Yeah. No, and that's why I'm saying I don't want to blame the individual. I want to no, be yeah. like this lady is crazy. <laughs> blah 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 blah. I want to make a broader point about how young women are not really taught boundaries so oh, when okay therapy speak is spread wide like is widespread on social media websites this. they latch onto it and they start doing this shit and then it's like that's what i think is a boundary but in reality a boundary is something that you set for yourself yeah that is like if you do that i'm gonna do this okay that makes more sense okay now i understand what you're saying Sorry. know what i mean okay that makes sense to me it's it's almost like a no asshole here, except she is a little bit. She did the asshole thing of like judging someone based on a TikTok thing. Yeah, but I get it. I'm not saying that I don't get it. I no, do get yeah. it because I've been a young woman, disillusioned woman who's gone through therapy, not really knowing how relationships are supposed to work. Hmm. And it's very hard when the internet is like, if he's not giving you flowers, you need to get out of there. Mm, or yeah. if he's not doing this then you need to get out of here or and then blah, if you blah, blah, blah. Full, yeah and you yeah and i think those are a little silly i'm not gonna lie yeah it's like okay yes if you want a boyfriend to give you flowers that's the thing it should investigate something within yourself to yeah. be like you should you should know yourself what you want but it, yeah. it's, you're, if you're disenfranchised from other people and you're disenfranchised from what you want you're not gonna fully know that so yeah. if you do latch onto things from tiktok yes yeah, exactly what I'm that's saying. That's okay. Is now I this get it. isolating you because you think you need to have this boundary because other people have this boundary? Or 
is this something that you do want and you investigated it within yourself yeah. you have self actualized and said actually i want a gentleman yeah and i do not i am not currently dating a gentleman and suddenly all of a sudden all of these issues that i have in our relationship hmm. i talked to him about it he didn't agree he said that's not who i am and i said well i need somebody else that's fine that's fine yeah it's fine as hell yeah but and that's normal shit to go through yeah but to be like mm, you cracked the pomegranate that way i'm outie that's a little wild i will say that's a little yeah i think that can be because I feel like, and that my argument to that is like, okay, if a guy works construction, he has to hammer a nail 500 times a day. Or fucking, like, how was he taught to cut a fucking pomegranate? I was taught to cut a pomegranate down the middle. That's not right. Yeah, I feel like that's, yeah. <laughs> no one fucking knows how to cut a goddamn pomegranate. Yeah, and why, is there, is there here's the okay, question now, is there a right way to do anything, you know, that's exactly. that, this small, like. A part of it is, okay, are we expecting perfection? Are we, are, are you, are you Gordon Ramsay? <laughs> <laughs> yeah like, yeah like what's the uh okay fascinating i didn't know you could twist a, a pomegranate open i didn't know that's how you do it i think a lot but of people also, think a, that's a how hard, it is it's a hard shell right it is not completely hard it's like if you leave it out if it's not frozen oh, it'll okay. soften a little bit it is harder than the inside i'm just realizing i've never touched a pomegranate in my life right now uh, you've had pomegranate seeds because i've opened it for you but okay. i googled it yeah, I, I wasn't and touching it. Bon Appetit was you like, went, cut you, off the top. <laughs> I was you, like, oh, I, okay. you go in the kitchen, I see a big ray of light, <laughs> and it's like, I got pomegranate seeds, bitch. That's that's what I figure happened. <laughs> I don't know, I wasn't paying attention, I was playing Sims, I don't fucking <laughs> Yeah, I did radiant damage <laughs> yeah, yeah, you fucking, to the pomegranate. Yeah. Um, um, interesting. Yeah, that's the thing, it's, uh, you have to have like a healthy dose of reality as well. Yes, I agree. I don't think there's that big of an asshole here, I think going behind the back is a little weird. Yeah, that, that is also, a little that sneaky. Also You're moving to, a little sneaky, aren't that you? That was a little shitty of like, and then the boyfriend was going to be a dick. Like, oh, I crushed a grape. I bet you're fucking sensitive about that, too, well, you I fucking mean, idiot. you know, I think yeah, he just like, took it as like a funny joke or whatever. But if she actually cares about it. That's then, not a joke to her. Yeah. Right. Then, yeah. The, the butt, she's the butt of that joke then. The issue I have is with the language. It gives her boundaries. Mm. Yeah. Okay. That's fair. You don't, you're not like, it shouldn't be, the language shouldn't be like you grow up and boundaries have been given to you yeah like by uh, experience that's not no you set your own boundaries you set yourself your boundary. yeah yeah okay i get that because that's wild if we just walked around and took everyone's advice around <laughs> on the internet and applied that I'd to our life in the woods <laughs> yeah i would be fucking dead dude. yeah i'd be yeah there's no i can't do anything yeah <laughs> yeah jesus that's wild man jesus christ Anyway, let's give some yeah. more advice. <laughs> let's, give... let's do it. Uh, I think I have fun ones. Oh, this is only the third one? Oh my god. I know. Fuck me. Jesus, can we go home? Can we not do another four and a half hour can fucking podcast? Go home. We uh, are home. Sarah, how do you feel about cops? I hate them. I cab. All cops. Every cop. Mall cop. Paul Blart, yeah, Paul yeah, Blart, yeah, Mall okay, cop. good. He's in ACAP, SVU, so wanted, ACAP. So Sarah has a bias going into this one, guys. I do, I do, saying. and it's All I right. hate cop. Yeah, wow, fucking crazy. Okay, are you ready? Yes. Am I the asshole for getting fed up with the blatant favoritism that my parents are showing to my sister? Okay. <laughs> this could be fake, but I don't care. Okay. I don't give a shit. Sweet, do it. <laughs> I, 27 male, am a state police officer, hoping to transition to the DEA soon for a career of kicking down doors. Yeah, this is fucking fake, dude. <laughs> well, you think people think like this? I will say, am I the asshole didn't take it down? So. I know, these ones, like, no one, they're not being taken down, so I don't yeah. know. My older sister, Anna, 34 female, is literally just a student. Actually, this is fake because who the fuck would want to be a cop? <laughs> <laughs> this guy. No. Yeah, this they guy. don't exist. She is a professional electrical engineer, and she's been in school since last year for her PhD. Her employer is paying her her full salary for it, so, she, so she's not living the student poverty life or anything. But she's doing a lot of work. It's hard work to get a PhD. That's what we've said before. It doesn't necessarily mean you're smart. It means... You're in a privileged position and you work very hard. Yeah. That's what it is. This past summer, Anna and her husband, 33 male, went out for a run together when her husband suffered from a medical emergency. My sister had to provide CPR to him and she called 911. My sister had to provide CPR for him and she called 911. 
By the way, just as a note, I've heard the recording of her 911 call, and she was panicking and wimping out the entire time. My sister's actions did save her husband's life, and thankfully, her husband is now recovering very well. What the fuck? He suffered no long-term consequences aside from temporary leg paralysis, which he is going to physiotherapy for. But other than that, no consequence. So, uh, this guy... I mean, okay, actually, genuinely, Joshua? Genuinely, Joshua? Yeah. I do believe this, because when I was doing customer service for... um. The toll road company in here in Florida. Yeah. I had a phone call with a police officer who was telling me that his son's car uh is still on his e pass and it shouldn't be because he was looking at the DMV files at his job and it said that the car was registered to his son and not to him, so it shouldn't oh. be on his e pass, whatever. And I was like, well, it says in our system, blah, 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 blah. And he got so belligerent with me that he's like, I'm a police officer. I'm looking at it right now. That's not what it says. And I'm like, and I'm a customer service person. And I'm looking at my screen right now, too. And it says a different fucking thing, bitch. Yeah, so (laughs) calm your fucking, fucking God. So I'm positive that cops will go through and be like, what's my, whatever, what's my sister's 911 call audio? Wait, like you're telling me cops will freaks. abuse their position of power? Yes, 100%. <laughs> for little shit, too. I was like, I couldn't believe that you're looking at the DMV files for your own son, you yeah, freak. Yeah, that's crazy. So. Why would I lie about that, too? Like, yeah, I give a crap. I don't give two shits, yeah. Oh, fuck, yeah, sorry. Break, break down the whole... Fuck <laughs> this! Hey, Cap! I hate cops! Okay, yeah. go ahead. Okay. My parents are hailing Anna as a hero. Mm -hmm. They've held a celebration for her and her husband when her husband was well enough to leave the hospital. And my father even gifted my sister $500 to spend however she likes. Parentheses, she plays the bass guitar so she immediately went and bought some vintage distortion pedal. Oh. And I am, all caps, am, proud of my sister, no doubt. She saved a life that day. Yes. But but her heroism <laughs> is literally but her her heroism is literally the only thing my parents talked up about up until around October when they seem to have moved on from the excitement. Basically, my thoughts are that sis was awarded five hundred dollars for something that I do on a daily basis, and like I said, her employer pays her her full salary just for her to study, so she's not poor or anything. And she can't even do that. She's taking the semester off because the memories of her husband's emergency make her cry too much. Oh, damn. That's the end? That's the end of the post. So, okay. so There's what, also a OP has offered the following explanation. Oh, uh, what, what could it possibly be the explanation? I have had it with my parents' favoritism towards my older sister. And my jealousy may make me the asshole. So, okay. I mean, this is my bias. I do have a genuine breakdown of this situation. Yeah. Uh, but it'll come after my bias response. Yeah. Maybe they resent you because you You're are a, a failure fucking... because you chose to be a cop. Yeah. Also, you don't save lives every day. In you what universe? Them. Yeah. In what universe? I think the peak position of your job is you will kill somebody and yeah. take a life, actually. And then you're going to get, and then you're going to get paid. Un- you're going to get paid to leave. For three weeks. <laughs> but you're not poor or anything, so you actually don't deserve it. So, like, yeah. okay, so, okay, so, okay. <laughs> yeah, okay, yeah. <laughs> There's a lot to unpack with this one. So, okay, so your sister is an engineer getting her PhD, and her job... Is paying for is it. Is paying for it. So she has a job. She's getting paid for her job. And then she's going to study. So and she's, she's going to... So she's got two things. Two things going on. And then she did a third job, which was uh, your job. Uh, saving saving her husband's life. Which isn't and your you're job. upset that she got five hundred dollars, and her parents congratulating her for saving her husband, but be- their <laughs> son-in-law's life because she was wimping out on a nine one one call where she was scared for her husband's life. <laughs> what a pussy! What a, what a piece! Of, yeah. Just crying and shit. <laughs> She's crying and shit. Oh, I might lose my husband. It's yeah. like the, 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 the <laughs> like the always sunny where it's like, oh, oh someone's husband dying. Oh, yeah. oh. You and your fucking buzz cut 
cop fucking t- toe head piece of shit. You know they like, do IQ tests for cops, and if you score too high, they get they they get the fuck out of here. Out of here! They're actually, like, you know what? You're too Who smart. Would have thought in a stressful situation where you might lose the person you love, you might wimp out a little bit, quote unquote, wimp out. What? Who what are you th- a jock in the eighties? Who would have thought a cop would be unempathetic? <laughs> Who, Who would have thunk it? Who would have thunk it? No, it's totally fake. <laughs> no, it's actually totally. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, solved it. I guess I we guess just dunked it. on cops the yeah, whole time. Yeah, we just got to dunk on a cop. I feel like uh, it's very interesting. The um, uh, fucking she's working really hard. Why are you so uh, the okay? I Over will say five hundred dollars. Five hundred dollars. Like I know that's not, that is a, lot, a lot of money. money. It's not, I'm not gonna say it isn't. I I mean. But I will say five hundred dollars compared to like the cost of the priceless cost of saving someone's life. Yeah, like you know. It is a little and also, silly. If, I think. if your husband's going to physiotherapy, yeah, you're probably spending actually, yeah, five grand. That's uh, actually not five, grand, five digits at least, probably. Yeah, they have a bunch of medical shit to deal with now. Probably. Yeah, Jesus Christ, well, she's not poor or anything. So I mean, don't so fucking... she, it doesn't matter, dude. Medical shit fucking fucks with people like a lot. It doesn't matter yeah. what fucking what. <laughs> it sucks to have to pay outlandishly high medical costs but who cares she was a little wimp on the phone one time, one time I went and I and listened to the 911 call god if only there was a word for like when you go through something like very bad and yeah, you start and you crying cry all the time still, and you're taking a semester off Like anyway time to kill an unarmed black man for the fifth time this week feeling pretty okay. good about that okay you know what not even that not even let's take that shit away cause that yeah. is a, you're genuinely right that is a bias we do have yeah, okay, let's cops. take away let's take away our cop bias real quick. Why are you obsessed with your sister with finding like, out what your sister did and why you like you know, why are you obsessed with figuring out if she was actually a quote unquote hero TM? Yeah, what what so I was in a situation I don't mean to bring this up like to brag or anything. I actually it's something that is traumatic hmm. and but it has been resolved in my life, but I in high school I had a friend who texted me about a suicide attempt and um i was like i tried to text their mom about it mm. and um <laughs> they intercepted the phone call and was like nice try and i was like this person is a villain <laughs> this yeah person, they that's... really want to unalive themselves <laughs> real right bad. now yeah and i basically like got them to tell their mom and whatever and then this person basically believed that i had saved their life by getting them to um because they had taken a bunch of pills and they, oh yeah so then like as like their a- last text had texted me so i was like uh, i was a teen so i didn't know what to do i was like i'm gonna call 911 to your house yeah if you don't tell your mom right now like that's what's gonna happen yeah and it was a really unfortunate situation because of the baker act here in florida they got baker acted they got sent to lakeside which is a really terrible mental health facility and they mm. described it as being like a prison and i genuinely felt like i had put them in that position because of what i did mm. and then i met up with them years later and they were like you no i say that you saved my life i don't know i didn't even know you felt guilty about that mm. like yeah no, but i apologize to them yeah, I, guess, I guess the alternative is be yeah. dead yeah yeah that, but also it's you know i sort of have realized that orlando just has a shitty fucking mental health yeah shit and they've since lakeside has since rebranded into something else but um but yeah and so like i don't know I was pissing and crying and shitting the whole fucking time. Yeah, I was. Yeah, it would very much hurt me, like it's emotionally. It's it was traumatic. a traumatic yeah. situation to think that someone you're gonna lose someone, and that's how I know this guy isn't a fucking hero. Because if you think heroism is, I'm Superman and yeah, I'm going to get to be in fucking there, like, like and save a life. Yeah, like that's not how it is. It's oh my god, this person is going to die, and now I have, I have to, to figure out how to stop this from happening. I have to do something in the most like high intensity mm-hmm. like, it takes a toll on you there's a good comment that was like you never know how your body's gonna react like flight f- fight flight hide you know all that shit yeah yeah and like it's very because it, it's it's yeah it's it's a very high intensity like thing and i i mean it is very weird like the the it, like snooping around like i'm gonna find your fucking 911 call i'm gonna like fucking it, it's very yeah it's like it's what's, so crazy yeah man. Yeah. It's fucking insane, man. Yeah. That's wild. Hmm. 
I don't know. That's I know that you're not a good person now. Like yeah. because you think heroism is before we even get to the cop thing. Else. Yeah, heroism is when you yeah. uh, are a big strong man and <laughs> and you are confident and you call nine one one and you get on the phone and you are say my husband is dying and then you sit Here and do is nothing. Here's my address and you sit and do nothing. And I've I've captioned telephone calls, nine one one telephone calls before. Everyone is pissing and shitting and crying. Oh yeah. Every single person. The, the three numbers you never want to type, and then you have to type them. Yeah. To the like, point where, like, true crime people, and I don't know, I think this is obsessive, but they yeah. will go over 911 calls, and what's weird is when people are normal. Yeah. When they're like, yeah, my husband's over there, he's bleeding out. I didn't have anything to do with it, I had nothing. Uh, <laughs> uh, Say this again. Uh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, and I will say uh, there was one point I don't remember what it was, but like we were talking about maybe having to call nine one one for something. I think it was this year, what the but fuck? it was a casual yeah. conversation. It might have been, was it my balls? <laughs> was it? Oh yes, it was your balls. Yeah, because like we were that, talking, we wouldn't have called nine one one. We would have just gone to urgent care. I think. Yeah, or something like that. But I, even the idea of like going to urgent care, yeah, in a controlled environment, yeah. I I worry Very all the time wild. about having to go to the emergency room or something. Yeah, there, I think it might have been something like that too, yeah. where it was like, oh fuck, I don't know if I can. Yeah, <laughs> I just think I can't afford the ambulance. You know what I mean? No, I get it. Very yeah. American pilled. <laughs> Very yeah. American pilled. I don't God. know. I, you're a freak. And of course, why would you type all that out and think that you're a good guy? Because you're a cop. Because you're a cop. You're a cop. You don't you know think, shit. Yeah, you gotta keep that thin blue line, brother. And that's that is why I think it is real. <laughs> it actually, they be very fucking real. verbally fought with me over the phone about <laughs> fucking tolls. Stupid shit. God solved it. So this one I actually am not sure about. Okay. Am I the asshole for my reaction to my cousin not bringing a turkey to Christmas dinner? How fucking dare they not bring a turkey? Okay. I love turkey. <laughs> I love turkey. Hello, Reddit. Long time lurker, first time poster. I, 30 female, got into an argument with my cousin, 22 female, uncle, 72 male, and aunt, 67 female, recently over something my cousin did, parentheses, or didn't do. Oh. So to give some information, my cousin is kind of unreliable, spoiled, and seen as the rainbow child in our family. A rainbow child is a child uh, that you have successfully after having miscarriages. Oh. I'm technically a rainbow child. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Damn. Um, uh, her parents did have her when they were old and had given up on having kids. They tried in their late 20s and early 30s, but had three miscarriages. Oh, uh, that's why. Okay. That's why the parents are old. Okay. Yeah. She could do no wrong in their eyes. They were pretty well off as well. She could do something that... She could do something that would land her in jail for 30 years to life, and they would still come up with an excuse to defend her. So the people that are in jail don't deserve love? <laughs> that is a good point! Wait, <laughs> oh, hold shit. on. Wait a minute. They're people too, you know. They, yeah, like... I guess... I if guess, you make one mistake... Okay, if it's a, like a mistake that I happens and it's still 30... Sorry, I mean, so listen, right, I'm sorry that, you know, Dude, maybe... I've been so abused, I just think, yeah, you do bad things, like, there's you don't exceptions to the rule. <laughs> oh there's, ex there's exceptions to the rule, obviously, but if, oh, as long as you're shit. not, like, Ted fucking Bundy, yeah, I think, yeah. yeah. Sorry, sorry. No, you just blew my fucking mind with that one sentence. Um, <laughs> she blew her college front fund on parties, clothes, jewelry, etc., and all her parents did was just give her more money, which she blew in a month, and told her whatever she thinks is best, she does. So, mm. Jenna, parentheses fake name, around a year ago got into making realistic cakes, and I must say, despite my one-sided beef with her, she is really good at it, and even on par with professionals. She was on the show. <laughs> is it cake? <laughs> is it cake? She could make a living out of it if she settled down. Christmas was coming up, and they asked, they tasked everyone with making... Well, ah, fuck me. Christmas was coming up, and they tasked everyone with something to do... Slash make from home. Oh, did was it asked for a turkey and then she made a turkey cake? Oh, I mean, okay, all right, okay. I'm, I'm gonna have a. I'm, I'm, I know what my take's gonna be on this. Okay. okay, Christmas was coming up and they tasked everyone with something to do slash make from home and just bring the food to the host's house and just heat it up to make everything easier. Jenna was tasked with bringing the turkey. You don't have to heat up a cake <laughs> that's made out of tur turkey cake. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Easier to eat. A cake that's made out of turkey? <laughs> turkey no. that's made out of cake, sorry. Oh, okay. I, I, clearly knowing she was going to mess it up, asked if they're sure about that. Don't they want to give it to someone more reliable and give Jenna a smaller task or just nothing at all? They all dismissed me and said, calm down. She'll come through. She won't screw it up because she knows how important it is. So fast forward to Christmas Day. Everyone was arriving to the house, but Jenna was a bit late. We FaceTimed her and she said she was in her car on her way and the turkey is very hot. So there would be no need to heat it up. Liar. Liar. (laughs) When Jenna arrived, she placed the turkey down on the table and called everyone around to show them something. She had a knife in her hand and was hovering over the turkey. She put the knife through to reveal it was a realistic cake. <laughs> it was very realistic, to be honest. <laughs> so, haters still complimenting, dude. Yeah, Fucking, no, yeah, That's how you know you got him. All of her family clapped and said how talented she was. I asked her, so where's the real turkey? She responded with, oh, I didn't have time to buy or bake it since my time was spent on the cake. (sighs) That's a little shitty. I'm not going to lie. It's a little shitty. I lost it and said, how could you forget one of the major dishes that we need? You screwed up your college fund just like how you screwed up dinner. All right. You don't need to bring that up. Yeah, dog. Yeah, dog. (laughs) Yeah. It's a it's a lot. Yeah. She began (laughs) crying and her parents called me an asshole. What a bitch for crying. God, (laughs) having emotions. Christmas. Half of the family is siding with my uncle and aunts and saying I didn't have to shout at her while the others are saying I'm in the right. So Reddit, am I the asshole? All right. I don't know what the, what, like, like, the okay. Correct th- okay, the correct thing to do in this situation, if you want to bake a realistic turkey cake, is you still bring a real still turkey. Bring, bring. I think that's fair. I think that's a fair critique. So, okay. However, when I say Christmas is ruined when you get a big fucking cake. Yeah, I mean. I mean, listen, I, uh, th- this, I feel Did like everyone it, else bring their stuff too? I want to. I yes. like. Okay, so if everyone else brought their stuff, there's still at least like regular food. Yeah. Well, okay. I feel like the way that people are going to respond to this one is whether or not they like turkey. That's fair. Because I'm like, I could deal without the turkey. I, I would also turkey. be okay with dealing without the turkey. <laughs> also, I think it is a little silly. I think it's very silly. But also, it's fucking Christmas time. You this know, whole holiday is silly. The whole holiday is silly. Look at this fucking beanie the Sarah's wearing. It's a silly, fun little beanie. It's fun. It's fun. All right? It's, it's a good know. time. It's about being with family, right? It's not yeah, about that's the, the important food. thing. And also, but I if don't you know prioritize this... food over family, I guess. But I mean, some people do do that. I think it's fair. Do you think it's fair to prioritize food over family? Yeah, if you have a shitty family, I guess. Uh, yeah, you're right. I guess I do that, technically. Yeah, I just blew your mind with that. Two, two responses. Oh, <laughs> fuck. No, it's just like... um. Like, I think it is kind of shitty to say that you're bringing one thing and then you bring like another a, thing yeah. and not bring the first thing. I think that is kind of shitty. I think it's for you too, yeah. But this the guy has a, weird, has a weird resentment the towards The reaction this of person. like, yeah, like you, you fucked this up like you fucked up your whole college fund. I just, maybe I'm weird. Like, maybe I'm the weird one because I don't really see other people and get that jealous and then get mad about it to the point yeah. where I will tell it to their face and, and yell scream. it in front of everyone at Christmas dinner. Yeah. Yeah. That's a little silly. That's wild. And I will say, does that happen to other people? I don't know. Cause I, I don't, don't know. Either, I'm not yeah. really like other people have things. How many times do you have Mikey day or whatever his name is come over to your house for Christmas to be like, all right, is it a turkey or is it a cake? cake? Um, but no, like even like not really having like, uh, I mean, I will say this year, like on Christmas, sometimes I'll be like, man, I don't have family, you mm. know, to hang around and have a big holiday with, but I didn't feel jealous. Of like people that do have that, yeah. I don't feel jealous of people that do that. I've it's been a couple of years, so I've had time to emotionally develop Process that. And yeah, and I think definitely there were times when I did feel jealous, but it was mostly grief mm. that I don't for the have what that. you don't have. Yeah, that makes Not sense. That I wish I had that, and I hate that you have that because you don't deserve it for whatever reason. I make up in my head. Yeah, you know, I've never, I don't really feel that mm. genuinely. That's fair. Interesting. So hmm. I don't know. Maybe I'm just not a person that is like that. I just think whatever I get, I get. Whatever I don't get, I don't get. Mm. And I, genuinely, though, I think that disenfranchises me from people because I'll just be like, I don't need to play basketball and win at basketball. Yeah. And people around are like, Why don't you want to play basketball? That's what makes the game. That's why you want to win. <laughs> no, I'm like, I don't care. Yeah, I don't I don't give a shit. Shit. yeah, interesting. Yeah, fascinating. I don't know. I think. um 
I don't even want to say everyone's shitty here. I feel like you're the, you're the asshole, like very strong because of how you reacted. People are saying everybody's shitty here, or you're the asshole, or um. Oh, and also, I want to know the not the assholes. Actually, I'm very curious. I don't, I don't know. I don't know if people because I wonder if there are. Because I actually wouldn't go so far and be like you didn't do anything wrong. Yeah, not the asshole. So true, bestie. So the second one is not the asshole. Really? But did you have any meat to eat or did you end up with a plate of veggies and two desserts? Keep away from her for a while. She would make anyone angry with those issues. And I will say there are some issues and I think this is just a parenting thing where it's like I know that you're the rainbow child and like it's a I think the just kind of letting her do whatever she wants is a little eh. Like, I, but also like okay. I don't fucking know. I'm not a goddamn parent. Yeah, you're not her parent. Yeah. So mm Mhm. If yeah. they're all happy, they're happy. Exactly, yeah. As long as she's not also, like, physically hurting you. Is she not going to go to college? Like, she, maybe she doesn't have to go to college and she can do the cake thing forever, you know? And also, like, uh, the idea that, like, um, you have to go to college, too, I guess. Like, you have to use your college fund to go to college. That's what these always betray. It's like the person that's like, I can't believe that, you're, that my cousin is not just living at home and playing Pokemon and not doing going to work. It's like, so you think that everyone has to go to work and move out of their parents' house and blah, blah, blah. And you think that that is the way to determine successfulness, like being successful, because that's the only thing that you've been successful at, isn't it? Mm. I Jesus. did all this work and I didn't get any blah, 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 because it's the normal thing to do. And they yeah. have a good relationship <laughs> with their parents and... Mm. And they don't have to do any of that crap. It's like you're getting mad at the wrong person. Yeah, I get what you mean. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Huh. You want a nice relationship. You want parents that give you money and that you can blow it on things. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, do whatever you want. Yeah. That's wild. That's what, like, you are being, you're judging someone else for some shit that you don't know anything about. Yeah. Just cause. For funsies. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus. And I know this as a person who is a judge, who used to be a judgy person yeah. all the time. Yeah, that was what it was. Yeah, it yeah, was I wanted that. So uh, yeah, I'm upset that I can't have it. Yeah, yeah, interesting. Would I ever tell them? No, no. Well, yeah, <laughs> that's I'm, fucking crazy. That's wild as shit. Yeah. Okay, not the asshole. Did you have any meat or just a plate of veggies and two desserts? Then Opie says, just starch, veggies, and dessert. My family aren't big meat consumers. They're more into poultry. So we had, so we had the turkey and some shrimp. Not a lot of shrimp. My husband is Jewish and out of respect for him, I don't eat anything not kosher and was counting on the turkey. Mm, okay. That does add a little bit that more does of add shitty a little bit more. to, yeah, I think, yeah. But also put that in the fucking post, please. Uh, yeah, okay. So, okay. A little bit of everyone's shitty here then. I think that's fair. Yeah, I think so too, honestly. Yeah. Definitely um, not not the asshole though. I feel like that's kind of, uh, <laughs> that's a little like, because you're still being a dick about it, you know? Whoa, 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 whoa. There's more information. Oh, great. Why didn't you Holy put it in the shit. first? You're an asshole for not putting it in the goddamn post. <laughs> yeah. Everybody's shitty here. It sounds like you let out a lot of frustration, but she's also a jerk for not bringing the turkey when she was expected to. She's old enough that you can just tell her she sucks and you're done with her. Stop engaging and ignore her at events. Let her be selfish and self-centered and you just keep doing what you were doing. Also, don't fix her mistakes and when people try to complain to you, direct them back to her. Also, did you host and make all the other food? If so, you need to stop that and let other family members take it over or just do it for your immediate family and everyone else can figure it out. Hmm. I don't know where I, they I, said that. I don't remember that this either. This is what but, I mean but by people in but comments your own stuff into are it, just yeah. making shit up and putting it in the yeah. Um And then Opie says, I was frustrated with her. Yes, maybe I shouldn't have brought up, uh, have brought up her and her parents' money, but she has done things to me my siblings, and my children, which are completely unacceptable, and her parents usually dismiss it as her okay. being a child. She shared my nudes when she was 17. What? She dropped my second child. She cut my sister's hair in her sleep. She told some very disturbing lies about my brother, and all her parents ever do is brush it off as her being young and wild. I didn't host, and after this, I don't plan on doing so for a while. Why was none of that in the post? You should have this. You need to explain the behaviors more. Oh, my God. Yeah. Now I'm like, OK, yeah, not the asshole. That's what Great. somebody said. Odd that you included a bunch of petty shit in the OP and then added the much worse stuff when you get called out for being petty about stuff that's none of your business. Yeah, yeah that's kind of how I feel right now. Okay. Those are terrible things Jesus. that happened and they I'm explain sorry that your happened anger. To you. yeah. Can you fucking be upfront about what you're angry about? Yeah, though? be a little bit more Jesus. Yeah. Oh, my God. 
Yeah, that's a, those are valid things. Those are valid things to be upset about. Yeah. Wow. We're Jesus. dealing with like basic emotion identifying shit here. Yeah, like no. Uh, you're God. angry at her because she has money. But yeah, no, no you're, you're angry, angry at her because she dropped your kid and shared your nudes and is a fucking menace. Yeah. That, yes. Yeah. Yes. That's the you real issue here. You gotta put that in the post, man. Yeah. You gotta explain Jesus these behaviors. Christ. Yeah. Dude, if I hadn't seen that and we were just like, what a piece of shit. And oh, then God, people we went and found fucking, it. Yeah. Jesus Christ. Jesus. Well, thank God I fucking asked about that. Jesus. Is that, Be there's... kind to your Reddit readers. Put all the information in the post, please. Yeah, please. For us. I was going to say that, uh, so the way that they got the dish, they planned the dishes was everyone wrote down what they wanted to eat. And then they cut it all up and put it in a, in a, in a hat. Mm. And then they picked it. So she picked the turkey. And then they said, no, it's fine. She's just going to make the turkey. Oh, okay. So it wasn't like she said, I'm going to make the turkey. But it she was, had a yeah, month in a... advance to oh, figure so out. Oh, so you could have still fucking bought a turkey. Jesus yeah, so she's, good. she's a piece of shit. Yeah. And your anger is misplaced. That's yeah, it. That's, that's my fair. opinion. All right. Solved it somehow. Oh, fucking. My God. The, no, one last solved. That was fucking. There you go. Solved it. Yeah. Okay. All right, we just came back from break real quick, but I had Sarah, so much piss in me. Piss, piss. <laughs> but yeah, I think that story was fake. Spent more time in the comments while I was pissing, and uh, it just seemed pretty fake. Yeah, that's fair. Just want to say that. <sighs> yeah, that's fair. I'm not gonna make that TikTok anyway. I'm only making three of these TikToks, so there was so much more information in all of the comments. It was just like kept adding on shit. That's oh. like okay. Wow. Doesn't make any sense. Mm. I had a cookie during the break. <laughs> I'm innocent. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a silly little story. Yeah, it's just a little story, yeah. That's it. Am I the asshole for, quote, letting my ego and emotions get the better of me during an interview? Mm. Maybe. I'm 22 male, a recent grad currently looking for a job. NGL, it's been tough as shit. So in the meantime, I've been working in the trades for my uncle part-time. Okay. My mom offered to ask around at her work if there were any op positions open for me, and they offered me an interview for the same role as her. It's a basic data entry job with some customer service related stuff. Okay. So hell on earth. Hell on earth, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Not the asshole. Fuck that job. Yeah, I mean, probably. My mom offered to ask... Oh, sorry. I prepped her for the interview probably more than I should have because it was where my mom was employed. Therefore, I wanted to make a really good impression. Makes sense. It was with her manager and a team lead. My mom had some really nice things to say about her manager, saying she was really nice and how amazing it is to work with her, but not so much the team lead, who she said is a bit of a douchebag. Okay. It was through Zoom, and I joined the call about 30 minutes early. That's very yeah, early. Yeah, it's a little early, yeah. Okay. I hmm. guess if you... Sh I mean, 30 minutes, though. 15. Yeah, 15, I think, is reasonable. 30 minutes 30 like, is a little bit what overkill, What am yeah. I going to do with you? Yeah. Yeah. If you got yeah, if you're going to a place in person, thirty minutes early, but I don't even know then. Yeah, I'm like okay, I'm just gonna sit here for thirty minutes. Yeah, uh, a run of Seinfeld. Yeah, right. God, Jesus. To start, both of them joined thirty minutes after the time they said the interview would start. Would start. <laughs> okay, that's fucked. For which they did apologize for. I mean, yeah, but thirty that's minutes. That's still fucked. That is still fucked. Jesus. Okay. No pleasantries or small talk at all. They just asked me the first question related to the role off the bat. And 30 seconds into speaking, my mom's manager looks at her phone and starts clicking away on it. Only the team lead was paying attention to me now, and it threw me off. But I kept talking. By the third question, I asked if everything was okay, and she looked up for a split second, and the team lead told me not to focus on that and focus on the task at hand. For the third question, I wasn't even finished speaking before he cut me off. Oh my god. Then he asked me to pretend like we were simulating a call where he would be the client and I would be the employee. Okay. I knew as soon as we started conversing that he was making this into some pathetic joke for himself when he pretended to be some absolute dumbass decrepit old man who didn't know how computer wor computers worked at all, asking me questions that were basically trying to set me up to fail, even though the people they are dealing with are competent corporate workers using the company's web application. That, uh, I bet you they get people that are like, I don't know how to open my email, because that happens at every job. Yeah. So it sounds like you were doing an IT position. These are IT people. They're being rude like IT people sometimes are. Yes, I know. I, I don't want to be rude to IT people. You are the backbone. 
of everything. Now, yeah, yes. In the office. Don't take me off of YouTube. But, but you get a lot of shit and, you know, you go through your shit and then you're like, I don't want to fucking talk to these people. It makes sense. I'm just usually on the other side and I have to deal with an IT person who's like, what's your name? <laughs> I get it. I'm not judging. I get it. I'm you. not blaming you. Yeah. I just know to expect rudeness sometimes when I call IT. Yeah. You know what I that's mean? That's fair. That's fair. I can understand that. So they were being normal shit. Yeah. Maybe it's not IT. Maybe it's not some. It's something else. Yeah. But if your job is to help people through a web you're application, you're gonna get old people sometimes, and you're gonna have to be nice. You're gonna have to tell them where the X button is. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I mean, you could probably not be nice if you are really good at your job for a long time. Yeah, that's but fair. When you start out, yeah, maybe not do that. I said word for word. You know what, guys? Obviously, I caught you at a bad time. You can't even give me the time to look away from your phone, and you obviously know that I would never deal with a client like this. I'm just going to hang up. This was by far the most pathetic interview I've ever been in, and I hope next time you guys don't want to take an interview from a referral, you should just say so. I don't think I've ever gotten that angry before during an interview. I record all my interviews just for myself to learn from and review. When my mom asked me how it went, I showed her, and I thought she'd take my side, but she got angry saying that this is her place of work and I shouldn't have spoken to her boss that way. Regardless of how bad the interview was, I need to, quote, let go of my egos and emotions and suck it up. WTF, I swear, like, I, I feel like this my, that my response was warranted. But then again, she is right. She has to work there. Maybe I did fuck up her relationship with her boss. Am I the asshole? Um, I, th I mean, I think, okay. Kind of everybody should hear a little bit. I agree. I think everyone's yeah. pretty shitty here. I think this is a bad interview. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. No, I, there is nothing saying yeah. that this was a fine interview. I think maybe I, I've been in interviews like this, especially with customer service where. Yeah. Like, you know, the first one is like, oh my God, I interviewed for this customer service place up in Tallahassee to try and stay at FSU. Oh yeah. And um, I got the. I got the job, but it was, so the first interview was like a big group interview where everyone went around and said like what they were thankful for, <laughs> like stupid shit yeah, like that. Thanksgiving guys, <laughs> come like, on. You know, what do you think customer service is? Go. <laughs> Being nice on the phone. Good job. What do you think customer service is? Helping customers Helping on the phone. Helping customers on the phone. Good job. What do you think? And then, like, Phone. I was 17th, and I had to come up with the 17th definition of customer service. Yeah, it's like, what am I going to fucking say that hasn't been said already? I don't even remember what bullshit I said, but it, it, just being, being a part of a team. Interviews for jobs like that, especially if it's entry level. I don't know. What did it say it was entry level? I think it was entry level, yeah. Okay. Um, It's more about camaraderie than actually yeah. having skills. I will say too the um the thing that kind of caught me off guard, yeah, is the um soft skills. You need to have soft skills. Oh, for sure, hundred percent. Yeah, and that's gonna be if you are, if you get upset at someone not paying attention to you that much that you have to yell and call them out. That's the thing too that I'm kind of like, listen, fucked up that the interview was three minutes late. I'm not gonna disagree it with is. that. It is. They were bad. They were However, rude. Yeah, that was they were rude. very that's rude. Very rude. Yeah. I will say the looking at your phone tip ta tip and tapping away. You don't know what's on there. Yeah. Emergency kids might be, you know, whatever. I had a when I worked at a different job, they had a group chat for a bunch of families that all had their kids sent to a middle school because the middle school had a school shooting at it one time. Oh, Jesus. And so the way that they communicated with each other was by email and by texting, like, hey, there's a thing going on at the school. What's going on? Blah, blah, blah. So yeah. that all the parents could be like communicated with so they knew what to do and they'd yeah. be able to go home early. And, and so who knows? <laughs> my thing is with that. So I, at my last job, when I did the first interview, uh, what basically happened was the guy, uh, I just did like a, it was like a basic ass interview in like this conference like room. Uh, basically, the guy was like, listen, I'm going to you just I'm going to ask you a question. I'm going to write down what you say and I'm going to and yeah. I want I'm not going to be looking at you oh. while you're recording. He at least let me know That's about nice. this. Yeah. yeah, I think 
If that, he didn't, I think it would still be rude. It would still be rude, but at least I understand. I guess I, I think now I like, okay, I kind of understand maybe yeah. why that's happening. Yeah. So like when I was answering the questions, he wasn't looking at me at all. He was just writing it down. No, yeah, I've had and many. And giving me a number score, <laughs> which was funny. <laughs> that's hilarious. Yeah, and I was like, all right, I'm getting more than a three. It seems like a five point system. I'm doing pretty good. That's good. And then I, I was, uh, <laughs> it was really interesting because I would stop speaking. And then he would just keep writing, like, that's, slowly. That's I've what, had a yeah. lot of those, yeah. That's, like, usually what they do to, like, weed out, like, in the first rounds, where that's, like, a job is a, quote-unquote, recruiter or something, where they, it's not actually the recruiting as a job, it's, like, a fake name for a fake position that they yeah. made up because no one wants to also, do it. Also, this wasn't a recruiter, this was going to be my manager. Like, or Oh, one of, really? Uh, he was one of the managers. I think he was the guy that was, like, I guess he might have been hiring manager, but he worked with like everybody else. multiple interviews that you had to go no, through? No, just one. <laughs> just one oh, I had to okay, do. so it was just, like, a regular? Just some guy, yeah, it was him, yeah. Oh, okay. What job was it for? The convention center, my last oh, job, yeah. Oh, okay, so it was like, we just need you to be able-bodied. Pretty, pretty much. much, yeah, and like, you yeah. know, okay. not be an asshole, mean. yeah. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Um, fucking, yeah, some jobs are like that, where they're just like, I don't know, can you do the skills or not? And I actually would appreciate that more than, what's going on? What's happening? How's your day? It's yeah. fine. Give me job. Give me job, please, give yeah. Give me job, please. Please give me job. I will say fucked up, there's no pleasantries. I don't know. But also, like... Teach their own, I guess. Yeah. Because who knows? I don't know. <laughs> It's also like yeah i don't know it's very it's weird like uh i will say it's i feel like the f almost fucking up your mom's job is kind of fucked is definitely fucked up yeah where it's like man your son's a piece of shit <laughs> yeah i mean i hope to god she could be like yeah he gets a little hot-headed sometimes and they can move on but then also now she has to go she has to be in that awkward position of apologizing for a bad referral yeah <laughs> yeah that's also her own son wow jesus i mean i don't know if the, any of that genuinely affects yeah i hope it doesn't it, it would be bullshit to like fire her i think it, I, I think it would be fucked up or at least to sour the relationship with the team lead you know yeah it's like what the fuck you know i i think je usually people understand that random crazy shit happens in the workplace and they're yeah. like okay this was just weird <laughs> this was just a weird situation and definitely we're not gonna hire this guy yeah exactly yeah. you know if you can't even handle <laughs> someone looking at their phone yeah or even like uh the... people are gonna be way ruder to you on the phones for sure even if it's internal oh for sure 100 percent. yeah yeah oh god yes oh my god and then that's that's also way more important if it's internal doing customer service because you're going to talk to them again. Yeah. Oh, God. You can't just have one of those, oh, fucking this shit doesn't work. What the fuck? Blah, blah, blah. You're and a then fucking you go, idiot. Well, you fuck up. You blah, blah, blah. And then hang, hang up. up. He Five still seconds needs... later, call, hello. I need oh, a fuck you. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah. yeah that's just, nothing is getting nothing's done. Nothing's getting done. Yeah. yeah. Listen. I will say it shouldn't be on if it is an IT position, which I suspect it is, because I've interviewed for some things like that. Yeah. It shouldn't be on I they're like putting customer service shit on IT people. I don't yeah, think it sucks. That does, yeah. Jesus. But yeah, it's it's fucked up. I don't know. I I yeah, everybody's shitty here, I think. Yeah, I agree with that. Solved it. I feel like in real life, yeah, you should expect pleasantries and you should expect people to not be rude. But it, that all goes out the fucking window in an interview. And also a Zoom interview. Yeah. Uh, yep. Yeah, I want... Uh, you, I think you're muted. Uh, oh, sorry. Yeah, oh, I, yeah, I know it's going out. Yeah, you're frozen, so... Am I muted? No, I can, I can hear it. Okay. Um, can you hear me? <laughs> <laughs> Just doing the make some noise. Yeah, bit. that's... Yeah, that's... Yeah, yeah. we well, can't do it. Fucking yeah. whatever. Fucking... All right. Damn. Bring out that last story. We got 40 more minutes on the camera. Despite... Want Donning to do a shorter podcast? It's we the still new did. Year, it's okay. four hours and twenty goddamn minutes of recording. I'm gonna fucking lose it tomorrow. Uh, I can't wait for this to not work on Android phones. <laughs> okay. Oh, you you'll get to experience what it's like to have an Android yeah, phone. Yeah, I got a new phone. It's not new. It's a re it's, refurbished, it's new to yeah. me. It's refurbished. Yeah, I'm not. Don't buy new things because of what's going on in Congo. Yeah, I only buy refurbished or used. So. From here on out, yeah, yeah, same here. When I get my new phone, I'll yeah, it won't be new. It'll be refurbished as well. Yeah. yeah. All right. Am I the asshole for jokingly saying "fuck you" to my husband? What's the joke? That's the key here. You said jokingly. 
This okay. is a funnier character than we have before. Sorry, continue. I have a potty mouth. <laughs> Whoa. I'm saying it. Token <laughs> and ale. Sorry. Okay, no. I have a potty mouth. I control it around my two-year-old son. But when I'm alone with my husband, I don't filter myself. He doesn't like it. He never curses, so he always acts shocked when I swear. This is not a compatible situation. <laughs> no, and you got a two-year-old. I.e., I'm so fucking tired right now. I'm not talking about swearing at him. I'm talking about dropping F-bombs in general. Uh, listen, I'm a crude motherfucker. I know that. Me too, yeah. But I I'm not gonna... I could not, had you on the first date, been like, can you not curse as much? Yeah. I'd be like, I'm Ubering home. I, no, and I've fair. done that for other shit. I think that's fair, yeah. yeah. I'm not going to judge the husband for not wanting to curse. No, that's valid. I think, yeah, that's a valid way of reasoning. There's reasons for people not to curse. I get it. Like, I know I, I uh, we were in a situation where we were meeting friends for, like, lunch. Oh, and yeah. I started cursing, and I just completely realized that I'm cursing around in public around there the family. Few, there, I will say there are some times where I'm like, Sarah, <laughs> we are outside. Because I just don't. I just don't. I don't I think that's, fucking yeah, think about I, it. I think in the comfort of your own home, you should be allowed to curse, obviously. But like, fucking... And I know I'm the asshole in this no, situation. I, get it, yeah, I, I get know it, that yeah. I am. I just am generally like not aware of my No, surrender. you're good. You're good. But okay. So, all right. This is an interesting dichotomy here. Yeah, already. I know, right? Uh, tonight, I asked my husband what time he's coming to bed. He likes to stay up late and play video games on Friday nights and the weekend. With the boys. Whereas I don't have that option because I have to get up with our son at 7 or uh, 8 a.m. Okay. Before you ask, no, he has never woken up to take care of our son in the morning. Uh, not once. Ah. Uh, I'm a stay-at-home mom and he feels it's my job to do that. Ah. Uh, I haven't slept longer than my two-and-a-half-year-old in two-and-a-half years. <laughs> Jesus. Where's the lady with the list on TikTok about well, how reasons to not get pregnant? Yeah, gee, yeah, fuck. Yeah. So I asked him what time he's coming to bed, and he said, I don't know, 3 a.m., 4 a.m., 5 a.m. That's a, a little, okay, hold on, 5 a.m. is a little, <laughs> even for me, I'm like, come on. And without stopping to think about it, I said, oh, fuck you. That's not a joke. Or, oh, fuck you. Or, ah, fuck you. Yeah, who knows what the... Who knows? Yeah. This is text, and I'm reading it. I assume it's, ah, fuck you. Because <laughs> that's what she says. Yeah, it's supposed to be a joke, but it does not feel like a joke right now. <laughs> I meant it as a joke. I knew he was kidding about staying up that late. The latest he stays up is maybe 2.30 a.m. I meant it like, oh, you think you're so funny. Ha ha, fuck you. You're hilarious. <laughs> it doesn't really... <laughs> that does not <laughs> hit. Really hit. Fuck you in a good way. <laughs> <laughs> No, that's not even I. Oh, God, this is not good for a writer because I know you fucking little freak. You little. <laughs> All right. All right. OK. Do you know what I mean? I get what you mean. But even when you write it out, it doesn't seem no, it like does it. not come off well. No, but not also at all. maybe this is American because, you know, the, the Brits are always like, oh, fuck me. Yeah, right. You know yeah, I mean? That's fair. I don't oh, know. Who fuck knows? off or something like that. But it, it's it's all about camaraderie. You know what I mean? Yeah, I know. Like, if a friend was complaining to me about getting too many gifts for their kids, I'd jokingly be like, ah, oh, fuck you, I wish I had your problems. You know? Sorry if that's the first example that popped into my head. That's an, uh, I feel annoyed now. I just feel like that's a... You know, like, uh, the problem here isn't the cursing. It's... You both hate each other. Yeah, you both hate each other. Yeah. Uh, okay. Right. But I am more on this woman's side because this man sounds like a piece of shit. He does, yeah, he does, yeah. I, it, I'm leaning up here, the but okay, yeah, yeah, sorry, but yeah. My husband took it very seriously. He did not find it funny, just like I didn't find it funny when he joked that he would stay up until 5 a.m., but I digress, and he won't let it go. I tried to explain it's something I might say to a friend or family member in certain contexts and says, I'm just rude. Is he right? Am I the asshole? You guys have deeper problems than the cursing, because the way that the post is framed is like... I curse all the time. He doesn't. So he's mad. <laughs> okay. So here's what. So this is what more information in the comment. Okay. So someone was like, did he know that you say fucked before you? Did he know that you cursed before you were married? Like, why did he marry you? Like, why that, are you that, guys that together? Also, yeah. That I want to, I would have asked that question too. Yeah. So apparently OP is saying, OP is saying that they've cursed their whole life. They have always said fuck, <gasps> but that their husband is claiming that he never heard her say fuck one time while they were dating. And then it was a problem after marriage. 
So uh, now little, I'm a little bit not the asshole. That's a little not the asshole. Yeah, that's a little sus. Seems weird. Yeah. Especially if you say it all the time, like you say you do. If you say it all the time, and yeah, that's really fucking weird. Selective memory, I guess. He thinks his wife should not be saying fuck and should be taking care of the baby. Yeah, and he doesn't have to do that so he can play video games. All right, okay. Sus. Not the asshole. They're currently... Currently I, not the asshole. I will say a little bit the asshole for the passive aggressiveness. But that was a little. I don't want to blame a victim. You know exactly. what I mean? Exactly. No, I get it. Interesting, because yeah. like um, interesting. I, I just I just find it fascinating how this is framed. Then because it's like mm. the the uh, because yeah, it's not an issue about cursing. No, it's, it's an issue, an issue about, about he doesn't respect you. Yeah, and also it's an issue about parenting and also reacting. I guess because like the. And not being compatible. Yeah, this is not a compatible relationship at all. But I fully believe, like, there are just men that will go through with a relationship they're not compatible with. And then they with. get married, and then they're and like, and they're like, actually, I actually fucking hate, hate my fucking wife. Bullshit, ball and chain, fucking, fucking, fucking bullshit. I just want to play video games until five. I totally believe that too. Yeah. Yeah. Damn, that's wild. Yeah. I really don't have much to say on that. I guess because it feels sort of so cut and dry. Of like, it's a fully believable one, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Yeah. Huh. Weird. I don't know. I'd also, I real quick. I don't want to like shit on anyone that doesn't like cursing or doesn't no, curse in no, their life. I don't. I don't want to. I do. I think there's a. I'm a not tendency. compatible with you. I'm not compatible but, with them either. Yeah. Yeah. That's because I'm crazy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. You know. And I don't want to ever like blame someone. I think words are important. You know. Yeah. I think that whatever decision you decide to make personally in your life, on like, oh, I curse like a sailor, or I don't want to curse because I feel like that's it can lead to rude things. Fair. I think that's a fair. There's fair reasons like to and can- to not. Read to rude things is funny. Huh? I feel like it can lead to rude things is funny. That's the thing. Like, cursing doesn't make you a good or bad person. You no. can still be a, a piece of shit, but like, I never swear. I never swear. I never say the F word. Honestly, I haven't met that many people that are like that. I've met like a couple and they're really just religious. Yeah, and I think that's, you know, religious reasonings are fair. I will say it's definitely, as from the Americanized view where it's like, we care more mm-hmm. about swearing and sex than we do about like especially in media like i don't know i, I mean no I, I mean like you can't like it's okay oh, it's okay to show like people get fucking killed like you know to show like but you can't show a nipple you can't show a nipple you can't say the fuck word more than once yeah and if you say it twice oh god oh god, god help you yeah yeah no we're very very i think it's a complicated issue of cursing Protestant. specifically <laughs> <laughs> yeah very. yeah i think it's fine to not to not want to curse i think that's okay i think it's weird to demand other people not curse that's a little yeah that's it's controlling i will say that it is but i do have a bias so yeah don't fucking tell me what to do bitch i'm sarah i'm like i don't know if you don't like it get out that's fair yeah it's not for you i get it i've quit podcasts because they told me i couldn't curse man yeah that shit sucks dude i was on a college radio we weren't supposed to curse and that always sucked it sucks yeah i don't want to censor myself you know what i mean Pirate radio, baby. All right. Yeah. Bob story of the night. Simple. All right. I've simple. kept it simple, guys. Don't worry. Let's go. Okay. I thought that said 11 minutes. I thought I only had 11 minutes to do this. That's but crazy. All right. <sighs> From Legal Advice UK. Let's go, baby. Successfully quashed a proposed road traffic order in 2020 against the installation of an electric charging point outside my house. Okay. I now own an electric car. <laughs> But the council refuses to install one because of a prior quashing order action by me. Is that the entire title? That's the entire title. Hell yeah. Just putting the text in the title, baby. Yeah, and that, I'm done. Guys, what do you think of Woo. that? No, there is text. There is okay. here. Back in 2020, I successfully quashed a proposed road traffic order that would have allowed the installation of an electric charging point. I argued that the local authority didn't meet the requirement of providing sufficient notice in the local gazette and that the reduction in double yellow lines would cause a risk to pedestrians and that the consultation process was procedurally unfair. Okay. Nerd. Okay. Nerd. <laughs> Fucking nerd. nerd. But you're on legal advice. It's yeah. different than it's, Am yeah, I the Asshole. I know, we can't yeah. just judge this guy as yeah, if he's as like nerd. Yeah, as a random guy. talking in the bar about this. Yeah. Yeah. Fast forward to today. Oh, wait. Hold on. And the consultation process was procedurally unfair. Fast forward to today, and I am now an owner of an electric car. However... Things are different now, huh? I've hit a roadblock as the council is now refusing to install the charging point due to the quashing order I had initiated. They are refusing to put my road on the waiting list. 
despite demand from the local residents. I'd like there to be an electric charging point. My house isn't suitable for off-street electric charging. Can I get the council to install one? No. Because you think yeah, about it. you made too good of a point. This is I like the story for a couple reasons. It really highlights the a NIMBYs. Lot of, NIMBYs are so fun. I, I don't think I ever get fun. enough of a chance to, to talk about NIMBYs. Yeah, you do hate NIMBYs a lot. Yeah, especially when like it's really funny. Should, like, we, should we say what NIMBYs are? Uh, not in my backyards is what they're called. Yeah. They are, they're, they're my basically... My dang neighbor putting up a dang... <laughs> Uh, bought a bought a barn and put it up in his backyard. So, like the main yeah. the main thing, like especially like it's used whenever know. whenever there's like a proposition of like, all right, for example, we want to put electric charging points on the street, right? And then not in my backyard, people who don't want that because it's show like up they show up and they, they try protest. to find any reason. Yeah. They don't even give a shit yeah. about whatever the thing is. They just don't want it. And I feel like my example is not good. I was just trying to think of shit you put in your backyard. That's not even what this is about. No, it's, it's literally like, it's about like oh, an apartment building that would be affordable housing, but it would lower the uh, land value, the land value of your own house. So yeah. all the homeowners who don't give a shit about homeless people or poor people have affordable housing show up and say no i don't want a big ass apartment building next to me because it'll lower my property values yeah and we'll and find like a way that happens yeah because yeah. it's, it's very capitalist like and also like if there's things like all right we want to have a homeless shelter put up over here right people like you know whatever apartment building next to it will show be like, up and be like no um actually there's no way and they'll try to do like legal tactics of like yeah. well actually you didn't you didn't put enough notice right so yeah. you can't do this yeah toss it yeah yeah i and will it, say i'm not into this as much as you are because you are also into like transportation stuff so it's kind of like a it's a side thing for you yeah for being like like you know i assume that when you were looking into like what strodes are yeah you find about nimbies because a lot of nimbies they're yeah. really against like oh putting a new bus line or right. a bus rapid transit or a new train line somehow like, it always th- is something that would benefit the community isn't yeah, it yeah it's yeah. always about the community but no it's never like oh we want to even put up a new playground but that's what i mean is they're against that they're, they're against, against that god forbid sh- yeah they're against stuff that would go in quote unquote in their backyards but it's always something that would uh, actually help the community yeah but they never show up when it's like a highway or something you know what i mean exactly those are like actual activists come out to like get rid of highways and yeah, shit because yeah because highways are destroying america i remember that guy that you showed me i forgot his name but he sh- you showed me a video of him in a, a city city builder oh, uh, do not eat yeah do not eat yeah where he was like yeah we're gonna change a highway we're gonna put a highway here and what that's going to do is displace everyone <laughs> thousands, and thousands of, people. of people and that guy's really good i like yeah, that guy. do not eat's great if you want to learn more about like infrastructure and city skylines yeah yeah uh fucking but yeah i find it interesting because then this happens where oh something that could help me Right. Ooh, oh, oops. Now years I from can now. use it. And of course, it's an electric vehicle. And yeah. Let's all guess the name brand. Oh, what is it? What is? What do you think it is? I don't know. Something. <laughs> I don't it is, know the, that it is the one you're thinking I of because the username has it in really? there. Really? Yes. Oh my god! It's his whole personality. It's his whole personality now. His yeah. whole personality used to be not in my backyard, and now, now it's, it's electric Tesla's. vehicle. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's a Tesla. That yeah. Blow up when you uh, when you fucking ex- when you <laughs> flick it with your wrist. <laughs> yeah. Just. Yeah, don't uh don't hit Teslas. Don't try not to hit Teslas. Or they will, they will maybe potentially on allegedly. Impact. Yeah. <laughs> sure, allegedly. allegedly when Elon the, uh, Musk watches this podcast and decides to sue us. Yeah, there is yeah. a potential that the, you know, some Teslas do explode. Yeah. Uh but no, fucking uh yeah. It's so been said. It's been said that Teslas will explode, explode on impact. Yeah. Yeah. Allegedly. Allegedly. Uh but no, fucking um Yeah. Yeah, I feel like it's always interesting that like the the non forward like headedness or mindness of like looking to the future of like maybe someday I might want yeah. an electric charging port. Also, so funny the idea that you give a fuck about pedestrians. No, you don't. No, you don't. You don't give a shit about pedestrians. No, you just made that shit you up. You want a car. You want to drive real fast in your electric car. Honestly, probably he did a good thing. <laughs> I mean, it's electric charging port. Yeah, you know what I mean. I know it's fucked up. To that's one of the main reasons I haven't gotten a electric car but like it's difficult to fucking 
A, they're expensive. But they're expensive and B, well, right now the situation in Congo, anything I, with unless a battery, you get like a refurbished, you know, yeah, like. Well, yeah, but then also, what I have to drive to the charging port—that's crazy. Yeah, especially in an apartment complex that doesn't have electric charging available. Yeah, which sucks because I do think electric cars are better than yeah. gas cars. They're not as good as mass transit. I'm just saying. Right. Maybe yeah. we should not. Maybe you know. Yeah, I'm not anti-electric. Yeah, vehicle. no, I know you're not. Yeah, but no. like, I mean, for the audience, yeah. you know. Uh, but yeah, I think it's just like, I mean, if it genuinely does, will cause a problem for pedestrians. You actually probably did a good thing. If it actually does, yeah. yeah. But part of me is like, you did not give a fuck about yeah. that. You just didn't want it in you're your. You didn't want it on your it street. Might. It might. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know, and I feel like that I is like the idea of up saying that too, and just being like. Well, there's nothing we can do to make pedestrians safer in that situation. We can't give them clear right. access, you know? Yeah. That's how I know you're not actually thinking about pedestrians. Is like, you're just like, you're, no. Uh, the car's going to be a little bit closer to the sidewalk. Let's not move the sidewalk away or <laughs> make a, like, a protected line of area. Yeah. It's kind of like the people that are like, we can't have good bike infrastructure because right. why? what are we going to do? Separate it from the road? <laughs> Right. No. Yeah. There's ways to go around it. It's really, I don't know. I think it's important, I guess. Maybe that's, that's why it's it's a real quick, easy one of come up and fuck around, find out, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And also, like, maybe it's a good way to get people into transportation. Yeah, if you are and, interested in that, it is actually more interesting than just talking about car. Yeah, there's a lot. Yeah, cars, yeah. cars fucking suck. I they think we can all suck. agree with yeah. that. Uh, I'll recommend Do Not Eat. Uh, not great. just bikes is great. Yeah, of course. I, I actually once inter- I interviewed to be an editor, but he didn't pick me. Fair enough. Yeah, fair but enough. I'm fucking, I'm fucking famous now. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> but fucking, oh my god. Yeah. But no, fucking. Um, no, I will say it's very much like uh, there's a lot of good structural city nerds. A good one, I think. Yeah, I haven't yeah. heard of that one. Urban development's very interesting and important, and I think yeah. it goes overlooked sometimes. So no, absolutely, it is very. I definitely would never have even looked into it had you not showed me. Do, do there's not a eat. lot of cool shit about it. Like, yeah, and it's also if you make it entertaining and funny. Yeah, do not eat. Yeah. Very funny. Oh yeah. <laughs> That's some of my favorite shit. Uh, do not eat's video on the hi- the Tesla Loop, the boring company, yes, is the yeah. funniest fucking thing. <laughs> <laughs> when he has the Minecraft music playing over his MS Paint, fucking like <laughs> like explanation. So all right, we have the sit, we have the tunnel, we yeah. also have foundation. <laughs> <and we> have- <laughs> yeah, he's a he's a very educated guy, and he, but he also talks like he's in a fucking Arby's bathroom. Almost like Joe Para, yeah, just like like and then slow. This is a, but, but, very yeah. dry, very sarcastic man. Yeah, um, but you know, in terms of slowness, yeah, like Joe Para. Yeah, Joe for sure. Not so sarcastic, but no, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. a sarcastic Sir Joe Para is kind yeah. of who loves uh, city design. If you really like dry humor and you want to get into urban planning, <laughs> do not eat is a good place <laughs> to start. Really and then there's a lot of other so to go off of back nuanced. and forth. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's our show. That's Fucking it, Sarah. What yeah. do you want to? freaking plug you can follow me on blue sky if you're on there i guess uh that's what here in dot blue sky dot net dot party dot ninja yeah it's a whatever the website is <laughs> whatever the fucking web it'll be is. in the description i'll make sure it's there um and that's what here on instagram tiktok tumblr that's where i mostly am now um yeah and that's it I'm Joshua Chinland on Twitter, a guy named JC on Twitch. I'm probably going to get back to streaming this week since uh, we're uh, finally back from like vacationing, you know? Truth. Not even vacationing, just not working. <laughs> yeah, just uh, chilling. Yeah, uh, but a podcast will save this on Instagram, APWSTR on TikTok, a podcast saves relationships on all podcasting platforms, mm-hmm. uh, APWSTR Productions on YouTube. I don't know if I said that. I'm saying it just again. Sure. Like, comment, subscribe if you're watching on YouTube, and if you're listening on Apple or Spotify, rate us five freaking stars Where is five dang stars and man. if you're on another podcast and they have also rating whatever the highest star is the highest fucking amount. put it up there baby Please, yeah uh check out the links to palestine down in the description to educate yourself do not forget to check out our yep. patreon buy me a coffee at those websites forward slash abwstr check out our coffee line with straight river coffee all the links are down in the description yep and you hope you enjoy the rest of your day yeah bye 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 outro first outro of the year damn it's gotta be a good one it's gotta be a good one it can't be bad
It can't be bad. It that can't would be, be bad. awful if it was really bad. Oh, it would suck. It would, oh, suck. No. It would suck so bad if it was just oh, us no, complaining Josh about Sella, the outro. You can't just have an outro. You can't just be have bad. an outro. That would be so crazy. That would be so crazy. It's so crazy and bad. Crazy and bad if you had no outro. Bad except if for you say no that this outro. is the outro. Oh, too meta for my taste. Too meta for my taste. <laughs> Not in my meta podcast. All right, we're done. <laughs> Nymphs. <laughs>